Well, how do the charms does I, Captain of the Steves? Now myself, Professor Cynical, and Rice Starship Emporium done a collaboration where we played No Man's Sky, like it's light, no fire. We called it Light No Sky. Yeah, it was a pretty decent little exercise, multiplayer enabled. However, those people that couldn't take part completely, and those people were Switch players. And they also thought, well, not everybody liked the idea of PvP, so what about if I made a video on how you could do something similar, but solo? Still enjoy all the sort of going on quests and traversing the world on flying mounts, but on your own. So that's what this video is going to be about, people. How you can get established, find yourself a planet, and then run quests on a day-to-day -day basis and have a bit of fun. So let's jump on over into game, shall we? And let's see if we can put something together, people. So this is the first time I've tried to put together a video like this, so kind of bear with me, because it's still an experiment, and you might have your own idea and your own take on how to do it better. And that's perfectly fine. This is... No by set in stone. There we go. Boom. So I'm over on the old title screen. I'm going to be hitting up a new save and I'm going to be hitting up creative save. The reason why I'm hitting up a creative save, it gives you all the base parts. It gives you all the portal glyphs right from the word go. It shows you a heck of a lot of grind and messing about with the tutorial. So I'm going to hit up creative mode. I'll see you okay, in the game. Okay, Well, I'm inside of game and it's just put me on some random planet by a base computer like it normally does. Lovely jubbly. And I've got my own little radiant pillar ship. Now, the first things to do with the ship. Okay, so here we go. Let's go into the ship. The first thing I really want to do with this is I want to put in some scanners. I want to be putting in this one, which is the conflict scanner. And I want to be putting in the economy scanner. There we go. Two scanners install them and coated inside the ship. And for the actual warp drive itself, so I'll go to warp. I want to put in the idiom drive. Chikapow. And you know what? I'm just going to put in the other warp drives just to give it a little bit more of a boost. Just so hopefully it can get a little bit further in its warp jumps for when we're looking for a suitable planet. So we go. Let's, uh, let's just stick in all of these drives for now. And what I might do is just move that one off of there, put that there, put that on there, just to give it a little bit more of a boost on warp drive. Oh, the warp drive range hasn't overly changed, to be honest, though, people, has it? Is there anything else I can put in there? Yeah, we can put in that one. There we go. That's the warp, the emergency warp thingy. But that's that's all I've got there, really. I'm going to stick those in. It's not giving me much more of a warp range. But anyways, OK, and then inside of my actual exosuit, the sort of things that I want to install here is I just want the hazmat gauntlets. So let's put that in. There you go. That'll let me pick hazardous plants and all that sort of shenanigans. The multi-tool, I'm going to leave that for now because I might claim a multi-tool up at the old Nexus and I'll be tooling that up. So that's something that I need to do next is get the Nexus to appear because I want all the base sort of parts for customization reasons. If I'm going to make a base that looks like something out of light, no fire, then I kind of need those customizations. So to get that started, I need to do a warp jump and I need to instigate the first step of the Artemis quest line. So here we go, it doesn't really matter where you jump to, you can follow the actual line if you really want to, might as well. And as soon as you come out of warp in the letterbox view, you should get a communique and it should be from Artemis telling you to go to their crashed ship. OK, well, I've arrived, Kated. It is nice seeing these new space stations. I'm not going to lie, it still hasn't worn Finn just yet. Not really. But anyway, just just sort of pulse a little bit and you should get some sort of communique come in any second. Ow! That's an insurance claim. There we go. Chicka boom. 16, 16, 16. There we go. In comes this um, transmission. Identify yourself. It should point you to a planet. And it should take you to a crashed ship with a washing machine full of death. It's like this um, washing machine with a big red bulbous bubble in it. You'll see it in a minute, people. You'll see why I call it the washing machine of death. It's a bit freaking weird. Anyway, let's, um, let's go over this way. Imagine a whole laundrette full of those things. Anyway, we're on our way. Okay, let's, well, let's head on down to the old planet then. Let's go to this location. Now, you've probably spotted what I've spotted, which says approximate location. It's not the location. Now, sometimes when you're lucky, as you're flying down to the planet, you will see something spawn in in way of a structure that usually can be quite telling as to where you should be going. 
but I'm not seeing too much. Oh, I'm seeing quite a lot of structures actually tell a lie. All right, well, I'm just going to land on this one because it's got a landing pad. Not that it only matters. I'm in creative mode, but I'm going to have to now get myself to that uh, location. And you do that by using the sweep scanner, which should already be installed. So here we go. Let's land. Jump on out and get rid of that letterbox view. And there's a sweep scanner there. I've got to go 400 U's that way. It's not too far, but it is in an early save because you can't do the mill. Okay, space. well, I've arrived, Decated, at the washing machine of death. There you go, look. You see the red sort of mass come out of it in a moment. I think this is the one that does that. It might not be, actually. It might not be the one full of death. This one might just be the one full of broken toffee. I got, yeah, yeah, so the one full of broken toffee. All right, okay, fine. Okay, well, you interact with this anyway. Extract records. Lovely jobs. Sweet. Done, deadly, and done. That's all you need to do here, people. Uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, well, let's um, let's go get my ship then, because it's in creative mode, and just can call in my ship. Zoom. Arrive to me, my pretty. I guess. And then you take to the sky, and you should get another communique. And that communique should this time be from Nada, and they should call in the spatial anomaly. Let's see if that takes place, shall we? Thundering into the stars, I fly. I guess, with my radiant pillar. There we go. Should get the little Daft Punk looking guy there. Yes, there he is. Head up through the menus. So the troop. Here comes the old freaking Nexus. I call it the Nexus because there's a lot of things in this game called Anomaly, including you as the player model. You're actually marked and designated as Anomaly. There's also spatial anomalies that you can come across. There's all sorts of other anomalies. So I call this thing the Nexus. I know it's the Mission Cube. I get people get telling me off. It's not the spatial anomaly, Captain Steve. Oh, no, it's not the Nexus. It's the spatial anomaly. Yeah, I know. But there's so many things in this game called Anomaly that um, I call it the Nexus. So there you are. You call it what you want to call it. I call it something wrong, I know, but I don't care. Anyway, let's head on over here. And now we need to get all of our cosmetics from good old Johnny Five. Now, luckily, we've got all the base parts because we started in, in creative mode. The only thing we don't got is everything this guy's got. So here we go. Let's go speed to him. I'm going to claim my expedition rewards first. Now, there's a couple in here that are going to help me a little bit, like I've got the flying airworms. That's lovely. I'm going to get that. But I'm also going to get this app, this spectre. Um, or the staff, mainly because it looks like something straight out of Light No Fire. The only thing that I'm going to do to it, though, is I'm going to dismantle the OP tech, which is all of this sort of stuff. I'm going to get rid of all of that. I mean, you can you play this however you want. You know, I'm not dictating to you how you should do this this thing. You know, this is just a made-up game mode, and I want the bolt caster just as a weapon that's just going to help me out a little bit, but that is not overly, you know, impressive, is it? So I go for the bolt caster, chicka boom, chicka pow. And you know what? I'm just going to give it the little mini addition thing. There we go. That's it. So I've got my bolt caster in, and I've got my advanced mining laser. That's it. That's pretty much it. And oh, I've got the terrain manipulator, and the, yeah, the analysis visor. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Lovely jubbly. That's pretty much all I'm having inside of this multi tool. Heck yes. Lovely jobs. Okay, all right, now we've got that done, which is pretty darn freaking epic and lovely. I need to go and claim everything from the Quicksilver Merchants store. So let's go through the rest of these. And I'm just going to claim all the cosmetic things. I mean, yeah, sod it, I'll take that, take that. But yeah, I want all the bits of bases. I don't really need that guy. You can't ride it even though it flies. It just flies around you. I'm going to claim all the cosmetics for base building. And I'll be right back with you people. In a moment, after I've gone through all of these. Oh no, whoops, I nearly claimed the Utopia Speeder. That threw me out the menu. You can see it's okay, that's all the expedition stuff. Now I need to go in here and claim all the Quicksilver stuff. Yeah, these are all available to me because I've already purchased them in um, previous saves. So yeah, the same story again, but this time you've actually got to go through the menu. It's even more tedium. Okay. And then you've got to put up with the voice of Exo going, collectible received, while you've got Johnny Five in the background then mumbling some language that you have no idea what he's saying. It's fun on the eardrums. I would I would suggest turning your sound down. Okay, well, in my case, taking off my headset. Okay, now something that I've gone and done is I've gone and collected a load of eggs by mistake and these fireworks. I'm going to get rid of the fireworks, don't really need them. Right, now the only really... The only creature that I want is a flying one. That's not a flying creature. That one is, the hungering worm. And these ones I don't believe are. So I'm going to get rid of those. And that's the only one I want. So there we are. I'm going to hatch that anyway. 
Got my first creature, I think. I think that hatched the creature anyway. Did it hatch him? Yeah, I think it did. So he should be somewhere flying around me but now, right now. And then I'm going to head on over to the appearance modifier. Now, this is where something important takes place. Hold on. I, I reconvene after these stop popping up. Because that's okay, jumps. I think it's finished. I, I thought it finished a minute ago. Then it popped up with another one, like freaking popcorn in a microwave. Anyway, so let's go into the old appearance modifier. Now, this is where I said about something important. Because if you do want to use this save in the future, when it comes to joining myself, Ricey or Cynical, what we're hoping to do to sort of make it so it's easier to tell what faction you're in is I myself will be playing as Vikeen. Yeah, Vikeen, Steve. Yeah, it kind of works, doesn't it? And Cynical will be going as Gek, uh, with his, his skullduggery and his glitchy type ways. I think he lines quite nicely to the Gek. And then you've got Corvax for Ricey. You know, he is sort of like more analytical than the two of us. So yeah, I kind of got Vikeen as the default. Anyway, so I'm going to go as Viking. Lovely jubbly. That's nearly my logo colours already. I haven't got much to do with them. But the really important thing is ch ch choosing a banner and choosing a title. It's the title that's important. So because I'm going as Viking, what I want is a title that says Viking in the title. Okay? So I'm looking for one that says Viking in the actual title. There's one right there. Now you can see here, it only unlocks when I get to rank 3 of Viking. So I'm going to choose that anyway. Lovely jubbly, Viking at arms. So when you scan me, when you see my, my marker on a planet, you can see I'm Viking from miles away. So you know to start making your decision to come and get me. Now there are other ones in here for Gek and stuff like that. Like you've got Toil Gek and you've got Hairling, well you've got Toil Gek, you've got Work Gek. And they're ranks 1 and 2, which are nice and easy. Now when it comes to the Corvax, it's a little bit difficult to tell them apart, but if you go for the ones that say Entity somewhere inside of there, then we know that you're a Corvax Entity. There's not a title that I can find inside of my roster of titles that I've managed to get across all my saves that has Corvax in the title. I mean, I haven't gone through every single Pidget, because that would just be freaking sad, because there's billions of titles in there. But a lot of them you don't unlock till later in the game. I'm looking for the ones that are easy to unlock. So, the ones that have Entity in, like technician entity you get at rank two so you're probably thinking well how am i going to get those unlocked quickly i will show you because with the next step of finding the monolith you can get your ranks unlocked at a trading post extremely quickly so i'm going to pretend that i haven't got all the way up to rank seven with my core with my uh, viking which is the hardest one to get to really consider oh it's, it's actually at rank three but i'm going to take it all the way up to rank seven just to show you how quickly it is you know how quick it is to get your ranks up anyways i'm now going to make my corvax look oh not my corvax my viking look how i want my viking to look and i'm also going to do my um, banner as well um, yeah, yeah, I, I sort this out. Anyway, I'll go sort that out. I'll read. Okay, jumps. Well, there you go. There's my Viking in red, white, and black. Lovely and jubbly, all my logo-y type colours. And I've chose the title Viking at Arms, which is a rank-free title. Okay, so let's head on out of here. Now, if you're wondering, if you go into your old um, discoveries, or well, actually catalogue, and go into here and go under Viking, you can see here at the moment I'm, I'm not even ranked at all. So we need to get that ranking up to at least level 3 before I would have unlocked that title, technically. So I'm going to show you how to get that rank all the way up, like I mentioned. And it's, it's by using the actual um, trading posts. Now, something else to mention, people, is inside of the Twitch rewards, if you took part in Twitch rewards, you might also have a, thing, a few things inside the Twitch rewards that you might want to look at. So if, you, if you're not allowed to use the staff because you're not a leader, you can always use something in here. You might have a flying pet in here. I don't know. I mean, there you go. Look, I've got a beetle already that I can claim. So I'm going to claim that beetle. But don't you worry. I'll show you how you can get some flying pets of your own. I'm also going to take that one because it's another flyer. So I can get those. And I was looking to see if I've got a multi-tool in here, which I don't believe I do. Okay, cool. So I've got three flying pets already. I've got a beetle, I've got a butterfly, which is enough for me. But I'll show you how you can get yourself some other flying pets if you're not as lucky as I and have that to hand. Okay, right now, pretty much at this stage, you've got everything almost that you need to come and join myself, Cynical or Ricey. Okay, so let's um, fly on out. I'm just going to jump in my ship out of my ship to create a save because I've done quite a lot in here and I don't fancy doing it all again if my game crashes. 
and let's fly out. Sadly, that's still a thing you've got to worry about, especially while you've got multiplayer on and you're fapping about with claiming. Okay, things. right now, people, you want to be able to find yourself a monolith and a trading post. Now, to find a monolith, I need to go to the station and get some cartography maps. I'm just going to fly on over to the station and grab a couple of cartography maps. I'll see you in the station. I do love this triumphant music the first time you fly into a station. And look at this station with the orange and purple hues. The stations have so much more gravitas to them now. And especially when you fly into one for the first time and all the lights come in, the music hits up. It, it's, it is quite wondrous. I, new players, new players, you've been spoilt by all this, you know? This is freaking beautiful. Anyway, let's go on over to the old cartography maps guy. Now, all I'm going to do is buy five of the alien charts. Okay, so we go, exchange for specific charts. And I just want five of these alien charts. There we go, check them out. Now... There's only five types of alien structure. So if I pop all five of these, alien artifact detected, not what we want. We want a monolith. There we go. On the second one, I got a monolith. Lovely jubbly. You might have to go for all five of yours. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, before we go to the monolith, we need to go to a trading post. And at the trading post, we need to get something that we can surrender to the monolith to give us a location to a portal. Okay, so let's go and find ourselves a trading post. So off this menu, we're using our economy scanner we installed right at the start. Locate trading post, trading post detected. Let's just hope it's near the monolith, just for shortness of video's sake. I'll see you at the trading post. Okay, now if you've checked the appearance modifier, you've already got a Viking title or a Gek title or a, an entity title, one that either says Gek in the title, Viking or entity in the title for Corvax, then technically you don't have to do too much at this step. You only have to do the first part, not the second, that I'm going to show you. But what you're doing is you're waiting for traders to land, like this one over here. And we're still in creative mode, so we can buy whatever we like from these traders. Now, what you're after is the first two purple trinkets that they have on offer. So here we go. Let's go into here. Offer to trade. And you just want to buy the full stack of each of those. Okay? Cool, yeah. Brilliant. Bought those. We need to offer up one of those to the monolith. If you have already got your title sorted, you don't need to do this step. Okay, You can just go and fly over to the monolith, which I'll be back at doing in a second. But to raise, raise your actual rank now with your entity in question. I mean, at the moment, I'm at a Corvax system. So if I wanted to raise my Viking, I'd have to jump to a Viking system. But I'm just going to do it here at the Corvax system to show you how quick it is to get yourself up in, in ranking. So here we go. Off a Corvax. There you are. Done. And you just keep doing that. Just keep gifting them. And you should see above my head here, my rank should go up in a bit. There you go. Standing with Corvax times one. And you just need to do that until you've got like to rank seven or whatever. Or rank three even. Depending on where your rank is. Okay, there you go. It's gone up by two. So if I was to go into my old discoveries now. and go into here. I am now... Total of six standing, and it's going to go up again in another two. So I just need to keep handing stuff into these guys until I get to the relevant rank to unlock those titles that I want. So you might be here a little while doing this, just interact. You can interact with the same guy over and over and over and over again. And because you're in creative mode, because you've got these things, they're not going to go down in number either. I only got four and five off of the two. It's not going to take away from me. It's fine. Just keep handing it in over and over again and increase your ranking until it gets to max if you really want to with that race. So like I said, if you are wanting to be Gek from the Galactic map, you'd have to jump to a Gek system and then find your trading post. If you want, there you go. Look, we've gone up there. Lovely. Sweet. And yeah, or, or a callback system, depending on which rank race you want to be. Oh, fuck sake. I just want to get in my ship. OK, cool. Let's get in my ship. And let's fly on over to the monolith. Sweet. Where's the monolith? Ancient plaque. We don't want that. There's the monolith. One hour away. If I fly up through the atmosphere. And then go back down again. Should be able to get there a lot quicker. Boom. That's okay, so I'm at the monolith. Now, there is an important step here too. Um, for the actual puzzle, well, you have to pass the puzzle. You have to get it right. Or else it disables the monolith. So you might want to jump out of your ship, make sure it's definitely created an auto save, jump in it, jump back out a couple of times just to get a proper save done. But here we go. 
I've done these so many times, I'm usually pretty good at it, to be fair. Oh, it's the Metal Spiders one. I'm just going to wait. I think that's just a wait. You just wait on this one. That's fine. Boom. Pollution Nation fades. Boom. There we go. I get rewarded. And now you can interact with it a second time. If you can't interact with it a second time and you've got those two purple trinkets, something's gone wrong, you've probably failed the quest, reload your save, try again, choose a different option. There we go. Locate a portal. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay. Now I just need to go find a portal. There it is over there. Chicka boom. Okay, jump. So now I've actually located a portal. At this point, technically, I could just create a save. Wait until, you know, myself and uh, Professor Cynical and also Rice's Starship Emporium starts up another Light No Sky community event and then jump over to the planetary code once I've got it and go and join these guys. Right now is where I'm perfectly aligned to do that as a Viking to join Captain Steve's brew crew. You know, if you want to be over on Rices, you would have been as a Corvax, you would have got yourself a Corvax title by going through the galactic map, going to a Corvax system, getting the Corvax system unlocked at the trading post and getting your title allocated there. And you may have to go back up to an appearance modifier to put your title on. But anyways, now that we're here though, I'll be going on and showing you how to do a solo sort of play, okay people? So I've just jumped out of my ship which has created a save. I want to activate the portal. There we go, I'm still in creative mode so I can go through all of this. Activate all of that. Lovely jubbly. And then I just need portal codes. Now if you haven't already got beetles and you haven't already got a butterfly or any flying fauna, you might want to go to a planet and grab a beetle and grab a butterfly. So I'm going to give portal codes to get both a butterfly and also a beetle right now, people. And the way I'm going to do that is by jumping over onto Reddit and getting okay, a Okay, so I'm on Reddit and I'm on the coordinate exchange. Now, if you like Facebook, there is also another group called the Interstellar Index, which is equally as awesome. But anyway, inside of this search bar at the top, of reddit all i want to do is click in there and i just want to then go for a beetle first beetle boom and you can find loads of beetles it's like there's one right here you just need to make sure that it's definitely in euclid so if you click on this i mean this was just two months ago and there's a beetle code right there let's see if we can make this picture a bit bigger it's in the euclid galaxy and there's your portal code so you can put in the portal code to go and get yourself this lovely winged beastie Heck yes, and it looks quite large in size, so it might be able to go over oceans, it might not. I really don't know. Okay, so that's the Euclid galaxy, and there's your beetle. Now, if I wanted a butterfly, it's just a case of doing the same thing. Butterfly, chicka pow. And let's see if we can find, look, just 26 days ago, let's hope that that one is inside of Euclid. Normally, you have to you click it and it will tell you whether it's Euclid or whatever. Yeah, look, there you go, fauna inside of Euclid. And the portal code on this one, it's not on that screenshot by the looks of things. There it is right there. Let me make that a bit bigger for you on screen. And that's where you can get yourself a butterfly. So it's a case of putting in those two codes, people inside the view of us. Now, is finding your own light no sky planet. Now you can go and find these inside of game manually. Or perhaps you want to do it inside of um, good old Reddit as well. So instead of searching for creatures, you can actually search for paradise. If I can spell the word paradise. Paradise. Is it a C or is it an S? I can never remember. I think it's an S. There you go. Boom. And there you go. You can find yourself a load of Earth-like planets. The only thing is, with going over to finds on the internet, is there's usually a lot of bases on there. So it depends on what sort of sort um, experience you want. If you want a complete solo jaunt with no other player bases in, you might not want to use this method. You might want to find your own planet at this stage. You know, I've given you how to get yourself to a portal. Shall I show you how I go about finding really awesome lush planets? Now, I've already got my flying creatures, so I'm good. But for you guys, you might want to visit those planets, tame those creatures, get their eggs, and th there you go. Okay, anyway, let's jump back over into game quickly. Uh, so let's go back into game. Chica pow! Back into game. So if I just come out of here for a quick, quick brief moment, you're probably wondering how you go about taming a creature. So to tame a creature, you need to have creature pellets. Now you should already have them. So there you go, there's some there. And I'm just going to make 10 of them, for example. 
Then you need to find a creature. So if you scan, you're going to see red dots. Okay. Let's just pretend that this is one of the flying beetles or, or, or whatever. And you just need to put your cursor on them and offer a pellet. Now, it could be quite hard if they're flying. But after you interact with them a second time, and you just go to adopt as companion. Oh, my God. I've just got the freakiest little creature you one could imagine. I quite like him, though. <laughs> he looks quite fitting for a Viking pet, doesn't he? You're coming with me on adventures. How do you like them apples? Oh, he's so cute. Holy fudge. Look at him go. Oh, I'm going to call him Stubbs. Oh, little Stubbs. Okay, right, we've got little Stubbs. Now, anyway, that's how you can actually, uh, you know, tame a creature or whatever. So, now you could hit up a paradise planet using the portal. Not a problem. Um, you know, you, you can, you, whatever. But I'm just going to put a base computer here anyway. Because it's by a portal. So if I do want to come back and join Rice's Starship Emporium or Captain Steve or Professor Cynical when they start their event, I can just come straight back to this portal, jump into it, hit up their code, jump on in and join them. OK, right. Now, people, this is the prep work all done for Light No Sky. I've got my um, flying creatures. Well, I haven't yet. I haven't hatched them. Let's hatch them quickly. Chicka pow. Got this little guy. Gently pet. Give it a treat. Lovely jubbly. We've got that one. Sweet. And I'm going to hatch the other one as well. Now, the beauty of me hatching these now is hopefully by the time there is a community event, these will be ready to lay eggs. And then I can give other ones of these to some of my friends or whoever I meet up with, you know. There we go. Let's ride him. Let's just see how fast he is. It's not the fastest when it comes to flying creatures. Miyogi's birds are a lot faster. But that is faster than the butterfly. And it's faster than my Wormy Mum Worm Worm, and he's pretty cool colours. Pretty nice. Okay, so I'm going to jump in my ship. Out of my ship. And the next episode in this series, people, is how to find your perfect light no fire, light no sky planet manually, rather than using a portal code. Because anyone can find one using a portal code, using the method I just showed you by using either Reddit or Facebook, the Coordinate Exchange, or the Interstellar Index. Your choice. But the next episode is going to be finding the planet, putting down our base, our proper base in light no sky type way. And uh, yeah, that's going to be the next episode. So if you like this, tune in for the next one. Salute to Mondo. See you soon. Cheery bye. Well, how do there, chums? Does I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I'm back inside of No Man's Sky and I'm going to be building my little outcrop, my little farm inside of our no... Well, what is it? Light No Sky or something like that that we're doing? I can't remember the actual name of the dang thing. But anyway, we're doing that. So anyhow, I'll jump over into game and we're going to be building the base. Cool. So... Yeah, there's my there's my base computer just down here. So I've got quite a lot of base parts, but what I need to do is get myself a load of carbon. So let's uh, let's get some carbon, shall we? Now we're not really supposed to upgrade our multi tool all that much. The only thing that I think we can have in the multi tool is the terrain manipulator, because if you want to build a stone sort of thing, I think you need dirt to do that, don't you? But all I've got is a mining laser, and that is about it. I'm going to stick that on there just to boost it a bit, to do a little bit more damage if we do ever enter into PvP. But that's that's all I'm doing. Luckily, I got a boosted slot in my lineup. Right, oh, so. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's get a load of carbon, because I'm going to start building a sort of wooden structure, I think, people. Got well, some ferrite dust there, and let's just get some more carbon. Lovely, lovely, lovely carbon. Chicka boom. You know what? Let's let's do some analysis visor on it. Yeah, I think I think we can scan stuff because we, we've got to actually um, catalog things anyway. It's like in Light No Fire. Apparently, you know, it's all about finding the highest mountain or the largest wave of ocean or the deepest ocean. Well, the only way you can do that on on No Man's Sky anyway is to scan stuff. So I'm, I'm going to scan a few things as I'm doing this. But the basic thing right now. As we're supposed to be. Oh dear, what was that noise? I had a weird noise. I don't know what that's all about. There we go. And pop that one as well. Cool. But anyway, I need to grab a load of carbon. And I'm also getting a little bit of ferrite dust. I don't know whether we can... Let's just have a look. Stone. 
And what did you... It is silicate powder. It's silicate powder that you use for stone. Now, my first structure, I'm going to be building it a little bit out of wood and a little bit out of stone. So I want a bit of both. So I suppose I'm going to have to get a load of silicate powder by using my terrain manipulator. So what I'm just going to do is dig a little hole. I'm just going to go down here. Then I'm just going to dig around in a circle. Get a load of silicate powder. Might as well. Might as well make the beam nice and big. Might not. I? There we go. Lovely, lovely. Loads and loads of silicate powder, please. Okay. Ah, I'm stuck. Right. Okay. And then what you can do is rather than you can go to restore. And there we go. Store all that back. Make it nice and big. And I think I've restoricated all of that now. And it doesn't use silicate powder to do that. What just zapped me? I'm going to nick that because I need, I need some more oxygen to do up my uh, life support when needed. But now I can pr pretty much redig that same hole again, really. Ah! I'm in the water! I'm in the drink, people! Don't want to do that. Oh, right, I just found the deepest ocean, apparently. <laughs> yeah, right, here we go. Let's make that nice and big again. And I'll just restore all this in a bit. No! Right, well, I think I've got enough silicate powder now. Let's get out of this hole. Now, my jetpack isn't all that great right now, people, so let's just get out of here. And yeah, switch mode, create, flatten, restore. There we are. Go on then, fill back up. Lovely, lovely. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, I don't want to increase the complexity of my base with terrain manipulation, you know what I mean? So there we go. Hopefully that's about good. Hopefully we've made that about good. Right now. Oh, I just saw a really cool creature over there. Look at that. It's like a strider. It's got a very strange head end though, hasn't it? Now, we might all end up with the same blinking creature thinking about it though, people. Because that is probably one of the gnarliest creatures on this planet. Oh, look, it's my logo colours. I'm going to have to have that, aren't I, as my mount? Okay, well, let's uh, let's get that as a mount then, people. Might as well, mind we? So, we, oh, I better ditch these because that's a bit cheaty, and I get rid of these as well. So there you go. Now I've only got the things that I've actually earned myself. I can make some of them carbon pellets. Where's that creature blinking on? There he is. Hello, creature. Oi, oi. Yeah, you. There you go. Some food, my friend. Adopter's companion. I guess we have a companion. His name is Quartetto. Sweet. I didn't scan him first, though, did I? I wanted to discover that species. Right. I don't know whether we've actually started, though. I mean, I know Cynicals. Oh, OK. I guess I guess it's already been scanned, that one, then. Right, I'll scan him. Yeah, I'll scan that little guy as well. Cool. All right. Well, we've got our mount, anyway. OK. Well, let's go start building our little base then, people, shall we? Let's get our little homestead done. Lovely loves. Dum, 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 dum. Now, I know that we're not going to have jetpacks in frickin's light no fire, are we? But apparently there might be magic, so who knows? We might be able to levitate or do something. Okay. And I've got this little area here. Look, I've got a little puddle of water right here. Look, I've got a little bit of water. It's, a, it's, only, it's only a little puddle. But all these creatures seem to love it down here, don't they? So this is going to be like... Yeah, it's not going to be the most amazing place in the world. But I'm thinking build just here. Bam, bam, bam! Okay, right. So, can I put in some stone flooring? Because I, I'd like stone flooring. 
stone floor panel there we go and I'm just gonna make it jut out here I think people um, yeah about there Chikaboom. Chikaboom. it's not gonna be a big house you know all the ones that we saw in light no fire were relatively small so I'm gonna make it quite an interesting shape there you go and I think that'll probably well, let's just put one more square I think that'll probably do for the size of my dwelling Okay, right, now what I want is wood. I'm going to do the base in wood. So let's go for a wood timber wall. Actually, I need a door, don't I? I need to be able to get in the bloody thing. And we'll go for that one, I think. It's not as rustic as I would like, to, to be brutally honest. Oh, hold on. Why can't I build that? Is it because it's got glass in it or something? It does come up with what you need. Oh, pure ferrite dust. Okay, fine. Alright, well I can make some pure ferrite dust, I suppose. I'm going to have to make, um, well, one of these, which is going to need some metal plating first. Okay. Now we're not allowed to dupe or anything like that, so, you know, this is back to freaking basics. Uh, it's fun times. That's the wrong button, isn't it, I think. Uh, nope, that probably was the right button. I've just got quite a large list. Where's my metal platings then when they're at home? There they are. Sweet. And let's make ourselves one of these little doohickeys. I mean, this is kind of technology, but you kind of need it to make your, your freaking base. So, yeah, there is that. All right. Oh, I've hardly got any ferrite dust. Oh, darn it. Okay. Right. We've got a little bit of ferrite dust now. Is that going to be enough to make a freaking door? Go on. Be enough. You know you want to be enough. So I'm going to take six seconds to make 58 pure ferrites. Might have to go slap a couple more rocks. Boom. Okay, let's see how we get on now then, people. Okay, right, I want to build my door. Let me build a door. Heck yes, I can build one now. There we are. Isn't it lovely? Isn't it wonderful? Am I going to need glass for that? I am going to need glass for that. Of course I'm going to need glass for that. Yeah, I need glass, which, to make glass, hmm, can I or can't I make glass using silicate powder? You used to be able to make glass using silicate powder. Glass and glass. It says you've got to use frost crystal now, but can I do it just with using silicate powder? You used to be able to. Yes, there you go. I could make glass. I don't want too much glass. I go for two windows, please. That'd do me. I don't need more than two windows. I want a four. I'm gonna need some of that to make my um, wall half. I want it to be two stories high, roughly. There we go. I'll take that into there. Get the old silicate powder. Cool. And then we go back into the old wooden structures. And I'm thinking maybe this panel here for glass. So go through the door. I think this would be a nice view to have over at this side. But I'm maybe going to actually have like a little porch area to sit on there, I think. So maybe put that there. I do. That's my little view area. And then I think I'm going to... I am going to have another little porch just here. So I'm going to stick that there. So I'm going to have another door there. That's got a little window in anyway. And then uh, I think maybe just some timber walls for the rest. So along here... Lovely, lovely timber. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, 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 bam. There we go. So we've got wood there. And we've got this little area that I can go out on this little mezzanine here. And then I could get these little panels here. Chuck those down there. So I've got a nice little seating area out here where I can have my lunch. And then I need to build like a like a wall structure at the top here. So let's go over there. And, you know, does these have glass in, do they? No, they don't. So I just need ferrite dust for that and silicate powder. Pretty darn lovely. Okay, well, I want a few of them. So I need to get some more rocks. And luck be had it. Look at all those rocks over there. Oh, is that some feces I just got for freaking free? Where, where did it go? I'm sure I'm, there it is. I'll have that. Thanks, buddy. He's kind, isn't he? 
Right, let's go let's go zap a few rocks then. Bam 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 Dun 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 Oh dear I haven't got a, a advanced mining laser This could be fun to get all the rocks I need then Oh what was that? Is that a rock? That is a rock. I've run into a rock people It hit me in the face One more rock Zap that for some oxygen. Oh, watch out, creature! Get out of the way! Quattro, you're in the way! Stop being in the way! Okay, I might have to get rid of my creature, because it is getting in the way a little bit. Ah! Wrong button. Go on. I don't want to keep zapping you, and you're stopping me from mining stuff, so... Being a bit of a nuisance. I will have him out, because, you know, the whole thing with... Light no fire. It seems to be very sort of mount focused, doesn't it? So I definitely want to try and emulate what it's like to play light no fire as much as possible. Hopefully in light no fire. I mean, you are going to be using a pickaxe, aren't you? And an, an axe to get your materials. And you can bet your life you've got to repair them all the freaking time as well. So it probably is going to be looking after bars in a roundabout way to, you know, survival mode i can't imagine it's going to be too dissimilar from no man's sky in that aspect when it comes to the survival aspect oh look there's another one of those creatures lovely i'm going to zap this rock as well and i think that might give us enough for what we need to do but then i do need to put a roof on the dang thing and I am thinking of having a mixed roof, maybe. I would like a stone chimney if I can. I don't know whether I can get away with a stone chimney. But, um, yeah, let's head back then. Let's see how well we're getting on now. Cool, got a geode. There's another evil plant there. It looks like daytime has come around again, people, on this beautiful planet. We've been going all night making our base. But, yeah, I think this is quite a lovely little area for my little homestead. Right, OK. Let's, uh, let's start getting these in then. Let's go to stone. And I think this one, the large stone wall, would be quite nice. Oh, look at that. It looks really good at lower level, but then at top level it goes all crap. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, dang it. Look, it changes form. Okay, and you can't do the much about that, can you? Change access, free toggle, no, no, no. Cycle part, no, I don't do that either. I was sure that you could actually select the transition that you wanted in the top corner of these things. Maybe I'm wrong then. I was hoping I could change it to the long window. Oh, well, it's still going to let in a bit of light. But is there another window type one? I don't think there is. A circular window. Let's have a look at the circular window. All right, well, that's that's probably a little bit better, actually, isn't it? Okay, cool. Have a little stone area. Okay, well, we're out of that now because we're out of silicate powder. So I need to go dig up a little bit more floor, I guess. Let's have a look at the old ceilings, though, because I'm thinking maybe putting back on a wooden ceiling. And have we... Oh, we've got loads to choose from. These ones are the canopies on look quite nice. They kind of look like in-keeping, don't they? So, yeah, I could probably use those on the top. Like so, you know. Like a little crow's nest on top. I'll have to play with that in a moment. Right, well, I'm going to go dig up some more of my terrain manipulator then. Let's go do that. I'll just go over here, out of the way a bit. And, yeah, let's just start digging, I guess. Just zap a big hole in the ground here, right here. Lovely, lovely silica powder. I hope you're enjoying this, people. Just watching me build a base the legit way without glitching anything in. It's so tempting, though, I must admit. But at the same time, you know, once we get Light No Fire, I'd imagine there's not going to be any duplication glitches in Light No Fire. Hold on, this is this is a game made by Hello Games, Steve. It, uh, it probably will have. 
to be fair. Yeah. Right, we better restore all that anyway. Undo, undo, undo. Da da da. In the night, dream delight. Fill in, fill in, fill in. Lovely jubbly. Yeah, I know. It takes a little while, doesn't it? If you want to restore the landscape back to its once was. Now, what I am thinking, people, because there's no trees on this planet. Hopefully inside of my build parts I've got all the trees. Because I'd like some trees near to my homestead. And this big patch of land now that hasn't got any foliage on would be the perfect place to put some trees. Oh yeah, right. Um, where's my base gone? There it is. Okay. Let's see if we can have some more. I'm, I'm going to put windows all the way round, I think, people. Those round windows, anyway. Let's, let's have some more of them. And let's hope the textures all match and look lovely. Now, because we've already got glass in this corner, I'm thinking maybe do something a little bit different above that glass. So maybe go for one of these over here. Just to give it a bit more shape to the outside of my gaff. You know, why the fudge not? There we go. And then... I'm thinking ceiling wise might as well have this stone canvas wall up on this end then the rest of it's gonna be like a wooden wall I think so I don't know what a wooden ceiling thing I mean they have got this timbered struss which is quite cool I'd have a little bit more height wouldn't it we've got the roof corners yeah let's do let's do a proper roof on this thing shall we sweet Now, I did want a little stone chimney. I don't think I'm going to get a stone chimney. Okay, right, well, I'm good for this. I might be able to cobble something together on the outside that looks like a chimney. be nice to get a fireplace inside of here as well, wouldn't it? Which is the next thing I need to do, really, is, is then focus on the interior of here and make it feel really nice and cosy and snug-like. I could do some freaking lights or something in here but we can't really use lights so i'm gonna to have to use some sort of torch light or something all right let's have a quick look at what we got then inside of way of lighting i suppose have we got a fireplace because that might give up a bit of ambient light ah was that a quicksilver award it probably was wasn't it i probably haven't got a fireplace dang it okay well um, that's a shame i would have loved to have a roaring fireplace i guess that's not happening then down. Well, that sucks. Yeah, it keeps flashing onto the terminal over there, doesn't it? All right, people. Well, there's quite a lot that I could put in the interior, but I don't want anything that doesn't look like it's in keeping with what we're after. But saying that, it's a bloody space game, isn't it? So we haven't got a lot to work with, to be fair. I mean, we've got some. But yeah, you can't really get away with a neon freaking lights, can you? That lantern, maybe. Add a push. It'd be nice if there was that jar with the freaking fireflies in. We haven't got that either, have we? Heck no. All right. Uh, that that's kind of sucks. There's a little pillar light there, which isn't too bad. Holographic table, maybe? Is it too technology? I think it is, you know? How would, it wouldn't look right, would it? All right. Um... We've got these little guys, but we haven't got the one with the fireflies in it. Darn! Okay, well this is going to take a little bit of thinking, isn't it, really? We haven't got any sort of like wall lights that look like candles or anything either. Hmm. People, how do I do some lighting? I'm going to have to give this a little bit of thought, aren't I? Alright, anyway, before we can get that in then, let's just, uh, let's just get... I'll tell you what. Let's go outside. Let's, uh, let's build my little trellis area, shall we? I go up on the roof. And I'll build, I'll build that bit down there. Here we go then. We haven't even got the uh, barrel of fire. Which I was hoping to make my chimney using that. And then build round the barrel. So we had smoke. We haven't got a... haven't even got that. Darn! 
Okay, right. Uh, right, so let's uh, let's do what's what I need to do outside of here. So I'm thinking maybe this little table. Can I make that a bit bigger? I can make it a bit bigger. Let's go into build camera mode. Let's go down here then. Now I'm thinking hopefully I get some friends in at some point. So put that there. And then we'll have a couple of stools. And one there. One there. And one there. We don't want it too cramped. You know what I mean? Okay. And then we've got any cups or anything. We've got this little thing. A little beer dispenser. Might as well stick that there. Might not. Chicka boom. And some little tumblers. There we are. One for you. One for you. One for you. Cool. Little drinky sesh. Nice. Okay. Well, we've got that sorted then. Got a nice little area out there. Then I suppose we can move inside and it's a case of adorning all of this. Now, I could just... I might as well just do it with you guys watching, might I? Uh, I'm thinking make it nice and cosy. Have some sort of, like, I don't know, wall drapes, maybe. Can I get a wall drape on the wall? Well, that doesn't seem to want to blank in work, does it? Why does it work there, but it doesn't work hanging on the wall? That's that's a bit shite, isn't it? All right, well, let's, get, let's put some carpets on the ground, then. Let's have... A nice little snug area down here. See, I, I wanted a fireplace by these rugs, people, you know? Now, there's not many sofas that are going to look in keeping. They look a little bit too upholstered, you know? So I was thinking maybe just having a, a, a load of rugs, and you just sit on the rugs. You know, like the little rabbit kingdom that we saw in the game trailer. I think that kind of works all right, like, just like that, you know? And then maybe just stick one over here. How? Is there any actual pillows, like big cushiony ones? I've seen people use them. I don't. I, I don't think I've got them. Or maybe it's a sandbag and they've just, like stuck decals over it or something. But yeah, I think that's just going to be my little seating nook there. And it, even the bed looks a little bit too futuristic, doesn't it? But that's that's all we've got to work with, to be honest, though, isn't it, people? So. I might have to stick that over here. Oh, we need condensed carbon for that anyway. And I think it does look too futuristic, to be honest. Anyway, I've got this up here. I could sleep there at night as well. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's do the same in there. Let's get myself a nice little rug. And I'll shrink this down a little bit. Meow. The one there. Just in case I want to sleep under the stars. Put that one there. And then I'll just stick that there. Why not? Uh, I didn't get one of them ones. Stick it over there. Cool. So I've got a little sleepy hole up here. There we go, people. Isn't that wonderful? I guess it is. It's already starting to feel like home already, peeps, inside the Geoverse. Yes, it is. There we go. We've got a little table here. Um... I don't even think we can have planters. And it's not like we're going to have solar panels or anything either. So it's a case of just dressing this up with stuff that looks medieval. And to be honest, you haven't got a massive array of things that look all that medieval, to be honest. So, yeah, I think we're going to be a little bit scuppered with what's going to fit in here and look like it belongs in this area. Oh, we have got the carts, though, and stuff. Got some boxes. Got a little wooden pallet there. Okay, yeah, but no, there's there's quite a lot that we can use. I mean, there's quite a lot that we can't, but yeah. Oh, there you go. There's a cement bag. That's what I was looking for. And I'll just make that a little bit larger. And I'll stick that up here. So that's going to be the pillow. And when I want to sleep, I just roll that over, you know. I put another one this end so people can top and tail. That's technically our bedroom and our living room all in frickin' one. Now, what I do need is a kitchen. So, let's let's build a kitchen over at the opposite side, shall we? What's this panelled timber wall? Okay. That might work. And it might have a light actually built into it. I don't think that's too over the top. Yeah, that'd do. All right. And then if I go back into here... And we build a little bar, I guess, using this little kitty. Okay, so we're going to have like um, 
A breakfast bar that comes out this way. Chikapow. Okay. Uh, right. And then there's the end bit. Hmm, that's a little bit tight, isn't it? Okay. Have we got a smaller ward? Yes, we have. Yes, we do. There we are. So, put that there. Then I want this little rounded bit. There we go. So we've got that there. And then over on this back wall, this is where I'm going to have most of my kitchen gadgets. Well, to be honest, we're not going to have many kitchen gadgets because gadgets isn't a thing. So, right, okay. So we're just going to pretend that that's going to be our cooker inside of there. Can I shrink this down and make it look like it's a cooker? Uh, da, 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 da. Can I make it look like a cooker ring? Is that going actually in? I don't think it is, is it? No. Well, it might work. Let's put it right by that leg there. Boom. So this is going to be my cooker. And I'm going to put this vintage dish on top. Actually, let's put the big wok on it. There you are. That's where I'm going to cook, essentially. That kind of looks like a, a thing, doesn't it? Now, what we don't have is a sink. Um, oh, actually, that, that, that could work as a sink, I guess. I'm going to put the sink over here, I guess. There we are. Make that nice and big. Let's go into, let's go into camera mode. Let's uh, put a sink in this corner here, shall we? Yeah, that'd do. So that's where I'm going to do my washing up, people. And we're going to need some taps on that, aren't we? So where's those taps? Here we go. I do for a tap. Put that in the wall slightly. We'll put that there. Actually, that's probably the best way around. Got a little tap. I don't know whether they have plumbing inside of uh, Light No Fire, but I've got it inside of my house. Heck yes, I do. I've got an insulated flask. Let's just make that nice and big. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Boom. I have two of those, in fact. There we go. Uh, what else? What else looks medieval? This thing. This, this looks pretty medieval. I don't know what that is, but it's, it can go there, I guess. We'll have this, but we'll make it nice and small. Because you want something to dry your hands on, don't you? So there we are. Put that there. And not only that, we probably need... Can I hang that in front of it? So it looks like you can just dry your hands on that. Mm, yeah. I wonder if I can make it look like it's actually part and parcel of that roll there. There we are. That probably work. Well, it kind of, kind of does. Looks like it's gone through there. Uh, that looks quite good actually. That was a happy accident. Okay, right. So we've got that. Um, what else do we want inside of here? I mean, there are those little tables that are used outside. We've got these stools over here, so I can stick that there. So we've got a little breakfast bar. Boom, and boom. And I suppose if somebody really wants to, they can sit around this side too. There we go, we've got a little breakfasty area. We've got my little kitchen area, a place to cook, a place to wash up. This is all good. And then this is sort of like the entrance hall. So when you come in, that's where you can wipe your feet and all that sort of jazz. Let's put another carpet there. So as you come in, you can take your shoes off, you'll take your jacket off, hang up your weapons and all that sort of jazz. Yeah, that's a thing. Now we have got multi-tools. So maybe in the interiors... Have we got the weapons rack? Don't say that's behind some sort of wally type thing as well. Seriously? I haven't even got the freaking multi-tool rack. Oh, yes, I have. I went past it. There we are. I'm going to put that in my entrance hall. Oh, no, I need cobalt. We need to go into a, a cave so I can put up some multi-tools on the wall. That'll look good there. And it might bring in a bit of light, mightn't it? We have got this sort of like white line that goes all the way around where the two meet anyway. But it's not enough light to light anything up, is it? Hmm. Okay. What lights do I have for the outside that might... 
I might be able to get away with. I've got these banners. Now they've got lights on the top of them, haven't they? Yes, they do. Cool. I think we can get away with them. So let's put that under the window. I want it my banner colour. I want it red and white if I can. Please. Yeah, you can put that there. Put that there. I'll put them under each of these. And then we've got light then, people. And it doesn't look like I've used proper technology, does it? I'm going to have my um, multi-tool rack there, so I won't bother with there. I'm going to shrink it down because I don't really want it to be on my kitchen surface, do I? No. And there we are, people. I think that kind of works. Well, that one doesn't, does it? Because we've got that recess there. So I put one there. And that's it. That's all I can do at the moment. I need to get some more resources. But you know what? I think this is looking pretty darn freaking lovely at the moment. And I could put in some sort of seated area over there, I suppose. But... Yeah, we can't put in any technology, so it's it's rather restricting in what I can and can't use in a roundabout way. But I'm liking this. It's actually making me think a little bit, using the old grey matter. And I think we're doing all right so far, people inside of your verse. And maybe that small planter would be all right. I don't know, though. We'll have to have a look-see. But yeah, I think my house is looking like a house now, people. I guess. Might as well pick this up and take that with me yeah let, let's um upload my base and shall we bum, bum, bum. captain steves homestead cool and yeah, I might as well take a new screenshot off the base. I guess. There's quite a lot I still want to do to it. I don't like the fact that it looks like it's floating. So I'm going to be building something underneath it. There we go. And then upload base. Done. Lovely jubbly. Now, over on the old discoveries. I don't think anybody has actually named the planet yet. So I might name this after what the actual event is and i think it's called no man no it's not it's called light no sky that's it light no sky i think that's what we're calling this i'm going to double check before i rename this okay yeah, that's a good idea yes it's called light no sky so here we go light no sky Chicka boom there we are. That's what I've named the planet. Light no sky. Cool. Right, well, I, I might have a little bit of a head start on the guys, so let's have a look. See. Can I name this one? Add to Wanderers. Rename? Yes, I can. So, what shall I call this guy? He's called Rivenous. I'm going to call him Curly Nose. Curly! Nose. Okay, boom. What about this guy? Because I found him as well. I'm going to call him... Mm, don't know what to call him. Rat dog? Oh, yeah, why not? Rat dog. I do. Hopefully Ricey and, um, you know, Cynical will be doing a similar sort of thing. We've got this little chap. Oh, he's lovely. He just likes bright colours. I'm going to call him... Horns! There we go. There we go. Done, dilly, and done. So I've named those. They're all my logo colours, funny enough. They're all red and black, aren't they? There we go. I don't know what that one's blinking doing. Look at him. But I, I don't think I should scan much more. Because, you know, maybe I've had a head start. I don't know. I did tell them that I'm going to start building my base and doing stuff. So there is that, I suppose. Anyway, where's my... Oh, yeah, there's my base computer there. Right. 
I'm just going to use my ship as a save point. So I'm just going to jump in and out of my ship to save. That's the only thing I'm going to use my ship for. I won't be taking off on it or doing anything like that. There's still a few bits and bobs I'd like to do to my base. But I think that's enough for this episode in way of base building. So yeah, I'm just going to jump in my ship, add my ship, create a save. And that's pretty much all I'm going to be doing right now, people. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully, peeps, you've enjoyed me doing this episode where I've just built the basics of a base on this lovely planet and we've kind of got our sort of self established now on this lovely home world and i've also got a mount which is that you know that lovely strider now i would like to have a flying mount what i'm thinking of doing is using my pc save to meet up with my legacy save give my pc save a couple of the um flying eggs you know like griffins or or dragons and then you might use my PC save to come and visit this new save and give the eggs back. So at least I've got a couple of flying mounts. But first I have to run that past Cynical and Ricey to make sure that it's okay. They might be more obliged to that if I say that I give them some eggs when I do it. Yeah, so we've all got a flying mount each, you know. That could be a thing. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. I'd have to suggest it and see if I can get away with it. But until next time, people, salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I'm going to be setting out on the first quest. Now, this is a quest that we can do solo, or it's a quest that we can do as a sort of like party. If you want to come and join me, I've already made the video on how you can go and do that. It probably was a trailer to this video. So anyway, I, what I've put together over here... Behind these decals, behind this wall, is actually a storage vault, and I've labelled it Treasure Chest. So if you are working with me, and if you are in my faction, and my guild, the 07 Brew Crew, just stick all your treasures, anything that you find inside of here, and it's like a collective treasure sort of vault thing. If, for whatever reason, you can't put it in these vaults, I have given everybody access to my refiners. So you could just put them in here, and then when I get back to my base, I can pick it up and I can chuck it into the giant vault. Okay, that's kind of what I'm thinking anyway, people. Oh, look, Ghost Light has entered. Oh, haha, <laughs> Ghost Light's somewhere on the planet and putting down a base. Oh, that's pretty darn freaking epic. Oh, cool. There's something over that way. There seems to be a message beacon over there. You know what? I'm going to head towards there anyway, because, yeah, we've got a mission now, people. Our mission is to try and find a relic site and dig up some treasure. So I'm going to head this way, and uh, I'm going to see what that message orb is anyway. But on the way there, hopefully, we might come across either a plaque or a colossal archive, because either of those places should be able to point me to a relic site. Now, being that we've got to go there on foot, it's going to take me a month of freaking Sundays to get to a relic site, even if we locate one using those two methods that I just mentioned. They really need to fix the hitbox on those bitey plants. Freaking mental, aren't they? All right, anyway, we're heading over yonder hill. Hopefully I come across a plaque or a colossal archive or just stumble across a relic site. And it doesn't matter whether the relic site is underwater or on land. Because both of them give some kind of treasure. The ones underwater can sometimes give cursed objects, but they're still worth a lot of money. And basically what we're going to do is sort of compare whose is the most valuable in units anyway. To see who actually wins this little mini exercise. Now if you do want to come and join me and my crew and my faction, yeah, any treasures you find, just stick in those repositories. Either in the actual um, refiners or inside of the giant vault itself. Thank you very much, people. Right, so what I'm thinking is, as soon as I get to the top of this hill here, is I'm either going to get on my mount to go a little bit faster, or I'm just going to pop into camera mode quickly and just have a little butchers around with my eye peepers to see if I can spot a plaque or anything of interest. So this is the best way to get bird's eye view. Now, I'd imagine in Light No Fire, because you've got flying mounts, you wouldn't have to do this. You can just fly around on your flying mount and find the things that you want. But I'm not seeing much in my actual walking path. There is some damaged machinery there. We can go check that out, see if we get ourselves any sort of technology modules. Because that's the only ones we're allowed to install are the ones that we actually find on the planet. Just having a little butcher's back at my base. That, oh, look, I've already gone past the technology module. That's a bit silly, isn't it? What's that down there on the ground? What's that yellow thing right there? 
that it looks like I've gone past. Is that just some sort of strange... Oh, it's a giant freaking sodium crystal. All right. Okay. Well, I'm not seeing any plaques. I'm not seeing anything massively interesting amongst the landscape. Hmm. Okay. All right. Anyway, we'll head towards ja damaged machinery. I'll see you when I get to that damaged machinery on yonder hill, people. Holy fudge, people. I'm being thrown around all over the place on this thing. Here we go. Look at my cape. Yeah, I switched my hair back and forth. I switched my hair back and forth. Anyway, we've, we've arrived, Kate, at the damaged machinery. Let's go and have a look, see if we've got lucky, shall we, people? Let's uh, head on in. Yeah, I'll take that, because, yeah, that, that turns into bringing ferrite dust, doesn't it? What are you going to give me, that machine? I got some nanites. Okay, well, that's not so bad, because I can trade that in for a map or something, anyway. And I can see some more smoke over on Horizon, so there might be more damaged machinery over there. Oh, there's a creature over here we haven't scanned yet. Let's go and have a look at that. Hello, creature. What are you? What are you? Oh, look, it's one of these sort of, like, predatory dog creatures. You know what? I think that might be slightly faster than the creature I've got. Doctor's companion. He's feeling sad. Nudgy, nudgy. And ah, ha ha I don't think anyone's got one of these. And let's uh, ride that, then. Hooray and hurrah! We've got a new creature. And he is quite fast. Look at him go! That's a little bit more comfortable on the old buttocks, I must say. Yeah, I mean, my, my um, cape is still swinging all over the place, though. But yeah, never mind. Cool. Anyway, we're heading over this way, and we'll see if we can spot anything on said way there that might lead us to a relic site. Okay. I've had some more damaged machineries. So, oh, don't really want living slime, though. There we are. What's inside of that? More nanites. Okay. All right. Not lucky. All right. Let's uh, pop back into camera mode and I'll see if I can spot anything. I've been doing this a lot. I've not spotted anything yet. Okay. I've had another damaged machinery. So, I'm coming across quite a lot of these on my little trek across the landscape. Go on, be something cool. Oh, we've got a thermal protection module. Yes, don't mind if I do. Let's stick that there. Adjacency bonus. Brilliant. We've got our first protection module. Not that I really need I don't really need it, but you know, it's something. At least it's something, people. Right, so we're heading this way still. And uh, it looks like we're gonna have a long walk. I gotta walk all the way back to my base after this. Yeah, hopefully they're gonna have some sort of fast travel way and means to get back to your base. In light no fire, you know? Okay, I've had quite a lot of journey milestones popping up. Now, I have been locking on to knowledge stones because I'm hoping that one of them, you know, might be at a relic site, uh, at a long chalk. When I haven't got nothing else to lock on to, that's what I've been locking on to. And then damaged machineries as well. So I'm doing multiple things as I'm looking for um, you know, a relic site and trying to get those treasures, people. Cool, yeah. Anyway, we've arrived, Kated, and another damaged machinery. Let's have a quick look at this then. Get rid of that. What we got? Go on, be technology. No, it's nanites. Go cool. Another journey milestone. Yes, learned eight words. Oh no, look at me learning words. Heck yes. And um, yep, another damaged piece of machinery over here. Now I have looked into camera mode like about six or seven times, and I haven't come across anything interesting. Not even buildings, which is a bit weird. No outposts, no nothing. And I've been walking now for a long time. It's not an abandoned system or something weird, is it? No, it can't be. No, it's um, it's all good. It is quite a large planet, but even still, I would have, I would have expected to come across more. You know, Hello Games did say that they would like to have things on every hill, every horizon that draws the player's eye. And they did add in the Colossal Archives that did exactly that. But I have not yet seen a Colossal Archive, a Relic Site, or even a plaque. I haven't even seen a monolith. I haven't seen any buildings, nothing. And of course, when you hit this scanner, when you're on foot, it doesn't really throw up buildings. It does when you're in your ship, but obviously we're not allowed to use our ships. So it's, it's quite a tricky ask to find this Relic Site. So yeah, maybe if you guys can jump in and help with the search, that might help somewhat. I'm trying to think of other ways that I might be able to do it. I was thinking about tunnelling under the ground, because then you're more likely to see the treasure chest markers for a relic site. But you still have to be like within like 
I don't know, a thousand years at the very least. Yeah, that's not going to happen, is it? Anyway, I'm looking for like little red glowy dots. I'm, I'm getting low on oxygen. There's some red or red glows over there. So at night, it's quite easy to spot your oxygen and your hazard protection. I don't really need hazard protection on this planet because it's a lovely planet. But let's just grab some anyway, just in case. You never know. A storm might kick in. Lovely. I'll grab some of that. Might as well. It's there, isn't it? And then we're going to get our oxygen plant, which is just here as well. Lovely jubbly. Okay, so I'm still heading towards this marker over there. Apparently it's going to take me four hours to get there. It's probably going to take me twice that to get back to... Well, it will take me twice that to get back to my base. Oh, chums. Well, there seems to be some free star objects on this planet in the way of sack venom. Okay. All right, well, what happens if I shoot that then? Oh, I need hazmat gauntlets to pick that up. Gauntlets? I'd say that they're sort of like the thing of yesteryear, aren't they? I think we'd be allowed hazmat gauntlets, because they're gauntlets. Hmm, what does it take to make a gauntlet? Okay, well that's something to strive for, isn't it? You know, I don't think that's going to hurt anyone, me having hazmat gauntlets. But yeah, there you go, we've got those in still well. Got it in place, I still need to get the resources for them if I want them. That's if I want them, you know. There might be a challenge at some point for the player to get the most freaking sack of venom since it is on this planet and i've been walking for like what maybe 40 minutes now before i even come across it so it's rare on this planet but it's there so maybe that could be a future challenge maybe heck yeah get your hazmat gauntlets on and go find some sack venoms right i'm gonna zap that because that's gonna give me some oxygen as well just in case my life support gets a bit low Chicka boom. You know what? That's a long way to go to read a freaking comms ball message, isn't it? Four hours that way. I don't think that's happening anytime soon. Yeah, I think we need flying mounts before we can do any of these missions. So maybe that might be my next mission. The only thing is to get to the portal. That is also four hours away as a walk. That is a mission and a half. Yeah. Anyway, let's, uh, let's carry on looking around. Let's we'll see if we can just find it by chance. But I'm going to circle back to my base now, people. Oh, chums, there's the pilot that's landed near me. I don't don't think they sell any treasure or anything. Where is he? Where is the actual pilot? Oh, here he is, around here. Hello, mate. Hello. Cool. Let's off to make a trade. Let's see what they've got. Oh, they've just got all of these. I don't know whether I'm allowed to buy them, but I haven't actually got enough anyway. But that would be a good way of getting tech. And it was on this planet. Okay. Um, I wonder if I can upload all my discoveries or something. Chicka pow. Oh, I've got 216 nanites now, my friend. You got anything for 216? I don't think they have. No, look, it's all 300 and something. There's one there for 763. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, well, at least we found something that I can spend nanites on as we're gallivanting around. We might come across those guys. And there you go. Look, there's a hollow terminus down there. I don't think a hollow terminus is going to point me to where I need to go to, though, is it? No. No, it's not. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. We're a little bit scuppered, to be honest, people inside the viewerverse, aren't we? In finding a relic site, that is. I mean, I've been looking. Can't find one for Toffee. Okay. Well, we've got a long way to go back to base. Another 16 minutes that way. Uh, let's just hope we come across something on my travels. Okay, there's another piece of damaged machinery. I went out of my way for this one slightly. Let's go and have a look in here then. Oh, yep, yeah, rusted metal. We'll have that. And uh, let's hit this up then. What have we got? Ah, no, nothing there. Let's have a quick look around. Oh, there's, there's two more damaged machineries in very close proximity. Not seeing any plaques. Not seeing any old relic sites. Uh, there's the uh, hollow, art, hollow terminus that you saw me at earlier. So I haven't gone too far from where we last reconvened, people. But I'm going to hit up those two machineries anyway. There's a knowledge stone here. Let's grab that. Let's just head on down here then. Where are those machineries? There's one. Yeah. Another milestone. Is that words again? Yes, ten words. Go on, yo. Hit this up. I just went past some oxygen there. Take away the living slime. 
Go on, give me something cool. Something cool. It's nanites. But as we now know, if one of those travellers come and lands right by me, I could buy myself a really lovely module. What would I get? I'd probably get some kind of weapon of some kind. Just, just you know, just in case Cynical comes at me with something evil. There we go. Pick that up. Lovely. Let's head on over here then. Oh, Theseum. Don't mind if I do. There we go. And what do we got this time? Ah, oh, nanites. Okay. Right, where's my ship? It's all the way over there. Right, okay. We're... I'll reconvene if I come across anything interesting. Well, chums, I just hit up damaged machinery, and I got given this. And... But, rather than install it, I'm thinking if I do see another one of those pirate vendors, I might be able to sell him it for a load of nanites. And if I can sell it for nanites, because I don't need radiation protection on this planet, jobs are good, you know? Hopefully I'll be able to buy a module that I do want, is what I'm thinking, people. So yeah, I need to save up some nanites for when we come across another one of those piratey guys. Now I have been picking up a load of salvaged data as well, because I should be able to throw those into that little refiner back at base and refine those into nanites. Die, pumpy plant! Yeah, you're done, mate. I guess. Huh. Okay. Um. Yeah, I still haven't come across any plaques or anything interesting. What's trying to attack me? Why is he angry at me? That's an oddity, isn't it? Well, I'm gonna have to do battle with it. Freaking have it! Out of it! Bad teacher. Wow, he went miles, didn't he? Okay, cool. That's him done. Got myself some beef steaks I can throw in the barbie later. Lovely jubbly. Got miles to go back to my base though. Hey people, another pirate just landed by me. Let's go and put my sort of um, idea to the test, shall we? Oh, what a lovely ship as well. It's a barrel-nosed droid. Hello, mate. Not that I can have his ship, but there we go. Hello, trader in the wilds. Offer to make a trade. And I'm going to sell... Um, I want to sell you my module for loads of nanites, mate. No, he won't let me sell it for nanites. Oh, that sucks, doesn't it? Dang it. Well, I don't think I've got enough. I've only got 350. Oh, I've got enough for one. A life support module. That could be quite nice. What I really want is a shield module. There's one there for 360. I need four more nanites. Four more nanites. Oh, my days. Ah, oh. Shite. Hold on. Come on. Come on. Let's see if I can upload. Oh, I've got three. Oh, I'm one nanite away. Come on. We can do this. We can do this. We can do this. Okay, come on. Upload. Upload. Yes! I've got three more nanites. I've got enough. I want a shield module. Please! Thank you. I'll buy a shield module. That should keep me uh, alive a little bit longer. That is for my exosuit, not for a starship, isn't it? Suspicious. I think it is. Let's go for this then, people. Let's put this in. Let's see how we get on. Boom! Yes, I have now got an upgraded shield. Ha <laughs> ha! Brilliant, eh? Righto. So this wasn't a wasted journey after all. Let's get to the top of this this um hillock. I mean, there's there's another bit of machinery all the way over on that hillock over there. Oh, yeah. Basically, all I'm doing is listening to hear if a ship lands by me. Oh, I need some cobalt so I can build my weapons rack when I get back to base. Let's get some cobalt. What did I scan? I thought I scanned the cobalt. Got some dehydrogen. Lovely, lovely. Any more cobalt to be had in here? Oh, mining beam is out. There we go. Lovely, lovely cobalt. Cool. Well, I'm just going to get a bit more cobalt and I'll let you know if anything else interesting happens. 
Well, chums, right over in yonder distance is my base, where that flat plateau is. But on the way there, look, there's a, like a little spire here, some sort of aerial mast. Now, I know that when you hit it up, sometimes it locates something of interest. I don't think it locates relic sites, but that's where I'm heading to right now to see what it hits up. Okay, chums, well, I've arrived, okay, did. Let's see what this thing does, shall we? Zoom! What's it going to find? It's probably going to find an observatory or something. Well, whatever it finds, it's going to give me a new marker to head towards. A minor settlement. Nine hours away. This planet really doesn't have much on it, does it, to be fair? Okay, well, that's something I can head to on my next episode, people. I mean, I could use my creature, couldn't I, come to think of it. Let's, um, let's ride this guy. He's nice and tall. Yeah, right, please. And away we go. Come on, walk, dang you. Not that way. Freaking heck. I want to go back towards my base, please. This way. Run like the wind. There we go. And we're off, people. We're off. Oh, it looks like another base has just emerged over there on yonder hill. I think it's quite close to my base. Maybe I've got a friend. Hold on, let's just jump off my um, little creature. Let's see what's going on over there, shall we? Okay. It looks like someone is building a base as we speak, people. There's a sheep, ship flying over. There's Daniel Hipley. Daniel Hipley's here. And this is Gulen Outpost. I don't know who that is. Well, this is getting exciting. We're getting neighbours. Neighbours. Everybody likes good neighbours. Oh, just a little understanding. Okay, anyway, that's enough of that shite, isn't it? Oh, would you look at that? Daniel Hibley, I think, is flying over me right now in a little baller ship thing. Hello, Daniel Hibley. Where's he off to? Oh, he's off. I don't know where he's going to. Yeah, I've walked freaking miles, I know. Story of my life. Cool. Could have given me a lift, couldn't he? No, can't do that. Right. Anyway, we need flying freaking mounts. That's what we need. I might have to have a word with Cynical and Ricey to see if maybe before we go treasure hunting, which was the idea to find relic sites, because this planet is so blinking big, I think a, a rideable flying mount is a must, really. Yeah, I'm thinking we can get beetles quite easily, but it would be nice if we could maybe get Miyogi to come in or something. And drop us in each a pet of our asking. Yeah, I'll probably go for a flying dragon. Or a griffin. Yeah, I think maybe a griffin. Or a, or a dragon. I don't know. I can't decide between the two. Yeah, yeah I might have to do that. I might have to ask Miyogi to jump on by. And uh, see if he can gift us a flying creature. And I suppose, you know, Cynical and Ricey can do the same. They can make their own sort of request acquisition. From the good old Miyogi of the pet given variety yeah that, that could be a thing right anyway i'm going to pick up this as well get some more oxygen i haven't long just topped up my hazard protection oh, okay that had a little bit of a weird blue glow about it i thought i was going to get lucky then and just find myself a freaking plaque by sheer chance but nope okay yeah, chums i've come across some copper so i'm going to terrain manipulate this out of the ground anyway because i wouldn't mind making those hazmat gauntlets you know Everybody in the medieval times rocked a pair of gauntlets, so yeah, I want those, I guess. Just in case we do have a mission at some stage to go and collect some, I don't know, sack venom from this planet. Because it is here. There is sack venom here. There's also, like, um, Albion pearls, but, you know, they're not like three-star. They're a two-star type good. But yeah, at least if we do get given a mission to go and get a load of sack venom, then uh, at least I've got the hazmat gauntlets already. And I haven't wasted a full episode, you know what I'm saying? Well, I don't think I have, to be honest. I've got myself an awesome module. I've got a shield module, so that's been great. Oh, great. I'm going to recharge this now. Yeah, i use a bit of that. Cool, even though, you know, that sort of stuff's good for making stone walls. Oh, chums, we've got somebody here. That's Daniel Hipley. Hello there, Daniel Hipley. Kaboom. Oh, he's looking very medieval. Very cool, Mr. Hipley. Ah, come here. We've come across another intrepid traveller. 
on our journeys, people. This is freaking awesome. Well, hello there, Mr. Hipley. I don't suppose you've got something you can give me, have you, sir? Um, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's signal that I... Yeah. Anything? You got any cool flying pets, my friend? Any more? Any, any cool pets? Yeah, I could do with a cool pet. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah, cool! He gave me, he gave me an egg! <laughs> I was after one! Okay, I wonder what it is. Okay, it's still developing. I've got five hours on it. Brilliant! I have no idea what it is. I can't wait to find out. Okay, um, I, I should th say thank you, really. Um, yeah, um, da, da. thank you. Thank you, Daniel Hipley. Five hours on the egg. So there we go. We, we'll see. Hopefully that's a flying pet. If it is, I'm going to be super freaking happy. Nice one. I didn't message Daniel Hipley. Nothing of the sort has taken place. This was just a sheer random encounter. Honest, I promise. Honest. 100%. Legit stuff. I haven't cheated. Okay. Okay, chums. I, I must tell you, it actually feels good arriving back at my base. Now, I've been having a couple of thoughts, people inside the view of us. Now, inside the trailer of Light No Fire, at their base, they've got like a little blue bowl that lights up. Like a sort of like a teleport. It almost looks like a teleporter. Although I'm wondering if there's going to be a magical way to teleport yourself back to maybe a major city or something like that. Just to buy supplies or to buy weapons and things like that. Now I'm wondering whether we should be allowed to install a teleporter at our base. To teleport back to the station. Either to, you know, use the appearance modifier. But not only that, so we can buy cartography maps. We've still got to earn the units to buy, say, cartography maps or the nanites, which I've just gone and spent all of mine. So that's going to be a fun ask, trying to get the nanites I need to get the cartography maps. So I'm going to have to have a word with um, Professor Sinecorn Ricey to see if they feel that that should be an OK thing to have. And of course, the only type of fuel reactor that we can use is a biofuel reactor like this one that I've got underneath there to power my treasure chest, which is over here, which is a big storage container of things that I've found in the verse. I've got nothing that I want to squirrel away there at the moment. Nothing of value. Nothing of treasury goodness. No. But anyways, let's see if anyone's put anything into my little mini portable treasure chests to put into my bigger chest. I doubt anything's happened while we've been away, people. And I haven't made people even aware of this sort of mechanic yet, so it's probably not a thing. Oh, OK. I can't interact with this last one over here for some reason. That's a bit weird, isn't it? OK. Fun times. OK. Well, there we are, people. That's pretty much everything gone got this episode where's my ship i'm just going to jump in and out of it to make a save and i'll go and hit on up professor cynical and um others and see what they say but it does look like i've got my first neighbor over there heck yes i can see him there he is standing right there 944 u's away from me my first neighbor has arrived located and i don't know who they are to be honest it's not a name that i recognize this has only gone out to my super members so it must be somebody I know. Interesting. Then again, Daniel Hipley isn't one of my super members. I don't believe anyway. All right, anyhow, let's um, let's just make sure I'm definitely saved in and out of the ship. Check a out, and there we go, peeps. Right. So in five hours' time, I get to hatch that egg. I've also got that little mini outpost that we managed to find using that pylon, a minor settlement. I don't think there's going to be much at that minor settlement. I mean, yeah, I could probably afford or maybe purchase a Kate a new multi-tool there that might have a weapons module in it. But at the end of the day, they are the weapons that we use inside of this. So they could be the weapons that, you know, equivalent of and, you know, weapon smith is a minor settlement, I guess, isn't it? So maybe I might be allowed to buy something from there. Just have to pass that by Ricey and um, Cynical to find out. Anyway, next episode should be an interesting one. We've got a neighbour. I'll be putting out the portal code if I haven't already. It might have been a trailer to this video. But if not, just keep checking my channel. Because the portal code is coming extremely soon. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Well, how do there, chums? Does I, Captain of Steve's. And today, chums, I'm hitting up a portal. Mainly because... I'm inside of my legacy save right now and what I want to do is jump on over to this sort of no man's sky event that we're doing the light no fire one you know whatever it is light no sky 
I'm just looking for the old portal code so I can get there in my legacy save because I'm going to build a hub for me, Ricey and Cynical and pretty much anybody else that wants to use it as well. Here you go, I've got the actual code now. Now this should be public already by the time you see this video. So here we go, let's um, activate portal and let's put in the portal codes. This is how you can get there. Okay, so I need to have a budgie or pigeon, a sunset and a whale and a boatman and boat face. That's my first four. Next four, I need a Sunday set, a dragon fly, a uh, black hole, a whirling and twirly thing, and an eclipse. That's the next four. The last four, boatman boat face, a double triangular thing, boom boom, and a waypoint. Chicka pow pow, chicka boom boom. That's the code that we need. Hook as it is. Right, so now I'm going to jump on through and reach the other side and that should be the lovely lush planet that we arrive at Kate on. Let's see if that's the case shall we people. Papa Chow! And I'm in. Right there. Well I've arrived at Kate. Lovely jubbly. I guess I discovered this place apparently. Yes I did. Oh there's Daniel Hipley's base over that way. Very cool. Anyway what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock onto south and I'm going to go 2000 U south and that's where I'm going to build the actual sort of hub area. So from the portal, it's 2,000 years south. Let's just go this way then. Aya! Ah, oh, wow! Yeah, okay, here we go. Let's, let's get over this way then. Meow. And my ship is there, so I just need to go 2,000 years from my ship. You know what? I might stick it on that big black plinth over there. That would probably do the trick, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'm going to get on that big black plinth and I'm going to stick the base on there. That's far enough. At least it's still sort of like, you know, viewing distance from the actual portal. So, yeah, there's that. Okay, right, I'll see you on top of that plinth. And you know what? I'll just build the base because you don't need to watch me well, build Well, how do their chums? Well, I've finished building the base. So there's a hut down here with these sort of like robotic hands outside. And there's a little furnace here, a biofuel reactor that you're going to have to power to get up to the actual base area. There's a site to site teleporter here. I know that we shouldn't really have any sort of electricals or anything like that in this planet, but this is the central hub. And I'm hoping Light No Fire is going to have magic and maybe point to point teleporters. So I kind of stuck this in anyway. Right, so here we go. Let's go on over here. Let's go power this up then. So there will be furnaces in, in uh, Light No Fire. I mean, we saw inside one of their houses that they've got like a little fireplace. So this is kind of the equivalent of that. So there you go. I powered it up. Now I can use the magic. Boom! And I've appeared up here. But what is up here? There are three chairs. A red one for moi. There we go. Let's take a little pew. Heck yes. Lovely jubbly. And there's also a yellow one over here. For Ricey, Starship Emporium, because his colours are red and yellow. And then I've done an orange one for Cynical, mainly because he's running around in a golden freaking mask. So I've gone for orange for him. He's in a yellow get-up, but, you know, Ricey's already bags in yellow. So there we go. And, yeah, so that's a site to site teleporter. Then up here is the PS de Resistance. Here is our actual teleporter. And that can take us up to the space stations. And the reason we need to get to a space station is to be able to purchase cartography maps. So when we get given quests, we can go get a map from the quest giver. But we're going to have to have nanites to get those. Now, the only way to really get nanites on the planet's surface, on this planet, is to either big, dig up the salvage technology and spin it into nanites, or to hit up machinery and hope that you get nanites. So there we go. So hopefully we'll be able to get ourselves enough nanites to go get our charts, to go do missions. I guess, people. So yeah, there is method to the madness. Now the reason that I built this in my legacy save is if you want to come here to this central hub, it's freaking miles away. Yeah. What you need to do is stick yourself in permadeath. When you leave your base to come here, you need to be in permadeath. And every other faction... Can try and take you out now what i would say is nobody actually stand here and just wait for people to fly in and kill them yeah that, that's just stupid all right so it, it just try and catch them on their way if you see people heading this direction take a pot shot at them okay but yeah they will be in permadeath it could completely destroy them and take them out of the game but that's the sort of risk that you're going to have to take so I know that when I'm going to be setting off from my base to come here for a jaunt to go get my maps, I'm going to be going into here and I'm going to be going into um, 
networking and I'm going to be looking at the nearby players list to see if there's anybody here right now that might be able to take me out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right now would be a perfect time to go. You can see that it's enabled. It's enabled. So I'll be turning on my PvP and I'll be heading here because there's nobody in the nearby players list. So I should have a pretty safe jaunt. I'm thinking... The reason why you need to have your permadef turned on, why you make your travel here, is it's going to make your heart race a little bit more. It's going to make you plan your travel here. You're going to only use this sparingly. Now, there's free chairs here as well anyway, for me, Ricey, and you know, Professor Cynical to sit and have a chat. So there might be times where we do like some sort of general discussion, where we all sit here and we talk about what the next phase is going to be, what the mission should be, and we might open it up to Discord, let people jump in, say what they would like to see happen inside of this verse. So it's more of a de democratic thing with me, Ricey, and Cynical as a sign-off, you know? I think this could work quite nice. The little council of three, the trilateral commission inside of No Man's Sky. Anyway, let's go see if my teleport works the other way around. Yes, it does. I guess. So, yeah, hopefully you like this. So, you can see what I've done here. I've built a very crude hand down there. And then the actual base itself looks like the Light No Fire logo. Well, that's what I've tried to make it look like. I mean, obviously, that's a bit small. Now, what would have been really nice up here, people, is if, you know what Zoo used to build? Those giant sort of kaleidoscope things. If we could have had one of those giant kaleidoscope things up here with the teleporter in the centre, that would have been freaking magical. Okay, I can't build those things. If you're quite apt and you're quite good at doing that, you can always hit me up at so on social media if you can build one of those kaleidoscope things up here. You can always come and join my game. I give you base building rights and we could always build one of those massive zoo type kaleidoscopes. In Ode to Zoo, but not only that, I think it would be rather fitting for the actual style of the actual base. But yeah, I think, I think the zoo would have been right into this. This would have been right up his alley, to be fair. But yeah, anyways, that's that's the actual base that I've gone for. And now that you all know the coordinates, if you do want to come and join either Ricey, myself or Professor Cynical, I'll put the actual coordinates on the screen right there. So you can jump on over and get involved inside of this event. What I would say is watch all of the rules because you're only allowed to build out of stone and wood. That's the main thing. You can't use your exocraft. You can't use your ship. OK, no technology. So you can't. If you want to join here, it's best to join, maybe come into a creative save and join here that way. Um, yeah, anyway, I've done a video on how to get here. I put a video up there on how to get here. In addition to that video, though, you should go to the Nexus once and go and visit Johnny Five and claim all your Quicksilver bits, all your cosmetic stuff, because this planet has no trees. And what I would love to see happen is when people put down bases is to build little mini forests around them and stuff. So it looks a little bit more like the light no fire planet. Other than that, this planet, the terrain on it is freaking gnarly. It's freaking magical. I think Cynical has done a freaking top job in the planet choice. I mean, look at this place. It is a wonder. It is freaking beautiful. It does look like something out of the, no Man, the light no fire trailer. We just need some poxy trees, and then it would have been perfect. But you know what? Hats off, Professor Cynical. You've done good, my friend. You've done good. Anyway, people, hope to see you getting involved inside of this event. We've got some we've got some loose ideas for sort of events that we can do so far, people. And I think it's going to be quite fun once we get it all sort of established and how we're going to be running this. So anyway, that's that's pretty much everything I've got for you. I want to say a massive great big thank you for everybody that has got involved so far. I'm seeing so many base computers appearing. I'm seeing factions starting to spawn and come into life. So at some point we will be putting out the first sort of mission quest and mission objective for everybody to get involved in. So yeah, I hope you're as excited as I am. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's... it's... <laughs> I think this is perfectly timed, to be honest, because I think everybody's been looking for something to do inside of No Man's Sky. Now, what I would say is myself, Ricey and Cynical, we don't own the rights to this idea. If you're out there and you think, you know what, I would like to do this on my own. I'd like to do something like this for my members and my hub. Do it. Do it. You know, I'd love to see other people spin this up and do their own version of it. You know, if you're a content creator and you think, actually, I could hook up with this person and this person, we could do this. Do it. Freaking heck, yeah, do it. Um, uh, take us as inspiration. You don't have to copy us letter to letter. It'd be nice to see what you come up with and what ideas you have. 
we might come and borrow some of theirs in ours, you know? And maybe we could grow this out. A little bit of a, a light no sky sort of thing, you know? Why not? Anyway, salute them on though. Take care, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Well, how do there, charms to Zai, Gout and other Steves. And as you can see, I'm back inside of Light No Sky. And yeah, my nice little alien critter that I've got here right now. Now, I got given an egg by Daniel Hipley, and it should be ready to hatch. Let's give it a hatch, shall we? Let's see what we get. Oh, it looks like it is a flying creature. Oh, I've got lucky. Hey, get out. Oh, come back here. Oi, you. Oi. Oi. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Oh, great. Looks like I'm going to have to despawn it. It flew away too blinking quickly, didn't it? Hopefully I can ride it. Let's try again. Got him. Okay, right. Gently pat. Give him a treat. There we go. Give him another treat. And a pat. Let's ride him. Oh, yes! I have a flying mount. This is freaking groovy! Thank you, Daniel Hipley! Yes, I now have a flying mount. Lovely jubbly. Now, there's a couple of things that I don't have, people inside the viewerverse. And one of the things that I don't have are trees. And I want to be able to plant trees around my base and make a nice little forest. You may have noticed this planet, as lush that it is, and as beautiful as it is, and as crazy as the terrain is, we have no ability to create trees. Now, there are, like, big bushes on this planet, but they're not trees. So I'm going to pop up to the Nexus and I'm going to speak to Johnny Five and I'm just going to claim everything that I can that's going to help with cosmetics for my base. And that's the only thing I'm going to do. I did notice that when Professor Cynical was building the other day, he actually has everything. Now, he, he went and saw Johnny Five. He had that little bit of insight. He'd he done that already. So he said it's fine for me and Ricey to do the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm actually going to film this anyway. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off my network settings because I don't want anybody up there inside of the Nexus, a space anomaly, to give me anything that I'm not entitled to. So I'm just going to fly up. I'm going to call in the old Nexus. And then I'm, I'm just going to grab what I need. And I'll be coming straight back to the planet, people. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's pretty much all I'm doing. Okay, so let's see if we can call it in now. Where is it? Oh, crap. I haven't even got the ability to summon the Nexus right now because I'm not that far into the story mode. Oh, balls. All right, okay. So I don't know how I don't know how cynical managed to do it. Right, well, I've, I've progressed the story until I can okay, actually... So I answered Nexus. that comms that was coming in. And then I've just warped one time. Let's see if that's all I need to do. Hopefully that's all I need to do. Let's see if that does the trick. No, I still can't get the freaking Nexus to appear. Oh, here we go. What's that? All right, I've got to go to the stranger's coordinates, have I? All right, fine. Well, where the fudge are they? Okay, chums. Well, I think you've all done this a billion times. Apart from, you know, it's not bloody working for me at the moment, is it? Nope, it's not. Well, apparently it's there, but it hasn't given me a freaking marker. Okay, well, I'll work this out. Anyway, I'll reconvene when I get to the next. Okay, Jums, I worked out what it was. I had to actually move the actual mission to Awakenings, Hearers and Finders. Okay? And then it puts the actual marker on. It says follow the marker and it doesn't kindly swap you over to the current mission. That's all it was, people. All right, cool. I didn't do anything in the station. I just parked there so I could make a quick save because I had to go and answer the door. Again, that takes me to a crashed ship. So here we go. Let's hit this up then. I'm not going to claim cra said crashed ship, you know. Okay, there you go. Done. Open up. Open Sessamoir. I've just stuck it back into creative mode just to move this forwards. Cool. There we are. Done. All right. Um, let's just make sure it hasn't moved me on to any other blinking mission. All right, now I'll go, go back to my ship. Go on, yeah. go back to my ship. I'm, I think I've got to search for clues or something for Artemis around here, so I'm just going to open up this damaged machinery anyway. Come on, I mean, give me whatever. Nanites, lovely. Um, I don't know whether you do have to interact with the ship. Let me just check. No, that's fine. Okay, call you. And this thing has now done what it needs to do, hasn't it? Yeah, can't interact with it again. 
Because it just says there, down at the bottom, search for clues here and on other planets. So I thought I'd have a little butchers around. Okay, we've taken off something. and we've got an incoming communique. Oh, here we go. It's Nada. Brilliant. Cool. And I think this is where the actual anomaly appears, isn't it? There it is. We've got the space anomaly. That's all you had to do, people. Just go to the crash ship, interact with that washing machine with a red glob in it, and then take to the skies. And then Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, in pops the old Nexus. So this is a bit that I wanted to record just for prospect prosperity, that I didn't do anything that I shouldn't inside of here. You know, networking's off. There's no other multiplayer people in here. They can't give me nout, which is lovely. I mean, yes, Daniel Hipley did drop by and give me an egg. Now, what I'm thinking is in my legacy save, I also have flying creatures. So, Professor Cynical and um, Rice, if you want to hit me up, I'll give you a flying creature each. Here we go then. So, here we are. Let's um, create items from Quicksilver. Let's go get all the expedition rewards first. So, there we go. Um, I don't really need all these bits and bobs, do I? Because we're not going to use the ship anyway. The Atlas Scepter, I just saw Daniel Hipley had that in his hand, but uh, yeah, I'd better not use that. Okay, right, so let's get posters, 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 Robot Companion, don't really want that. Yeah, why not? Get these bits. Doesn't matter if I accidentally claim something that I don't want, I can always just, you know, not use it, so. Ah! Don't want that, though. Dang it! Okay, so let's just go down here. It should be all right now. I don't think there's any other ships. Oh, there is. There's the Golden Vector, isn't there? Be careful not to accidentally hit that. Oh, we don't need that either. Loads of new flags. Cool. Don't really want the quad pet either. Would look a bit weird riding around on a robot, wouldn't it? Oh, the sandworm egg. So there you go, Ricey and Cynical. If you do want a flyer, they fly. I don't know whether they fly as good as the actual birds, because they're super fast. But yeah, why not? Give them a go. No, I don't really need the fireworks. Ah, oh, these are the bits I want. That's the thing I really want, Bio Lantern. I think those, those will look quite in keeping. You know, that's a natural form of light for your base. So that's definitely one that I wanted. Okay, don't really need that. There's the golden vector. Must be getting near to the end now. There we go, people. I think that's pretty much everything that I needed from him. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, cool. Now let's go into Quicksilver items. Available. Oh, I get that then. I haven't got any Quicksilver for that, but we might as well get all these as well. Right, it's going to take me a while to go through all of this and get everything that I'm allowed to have, but I think you get the general idea. I just, I just finish this off and then I'll show you what I do at the end. And there's the fireplace. Heck yes, we definitely want the fireplace. Lovely. There's also those coral plants in here that light up and stuff, which are pretty cool. There's those that light up too that give natural light looking things. Don't really need these, but grab them anyway. They give light, they give light, they give light. Again, all good for putting inside of your base. All these are really good things, to be fair. So there's a lot of good stuff inside of this list. I'm nearly at the end. I'm not going to bother about those titles. All those titles. Let's just move on. Nearly there. Nearly done. That's my favourite backpack. But I'm, I think I'm better with a cape. There you go. Cool. Oh, I thought I was nearly done. We've got even more to ah, go. Ah, look. We get these visages as well. I think I might change my look and appearance to that one. Because he looks a little bit more like No Fire Esk, doesn't he? Now, you know what? I'll just keep what I've got. But yeah, that would have been lovely to have started out with Hesperus. But I, I've got, I kind of got attached to my little alien guy now. I think he looks quite cool. It was like a variant of like Piccolo or something from Dragon Ball Z. So these are the light up plants. Well, that's one of them anyway. The rock garden. I really like the little light on that. That lights up really nice. I'm going to be putting one of those inside my base if I can. And there we go, we get a load of um, heroic poses and emotes. That's the one that I, I think Professor Cynical used, or this one, 
as a table. He turned it up the other way and turned it into a table. Freaking great idea. Okay, cool. So we, we get in there. Get in there. And that adds a lot of light inside of your base as well. Oh, my days. Okay. I, d I had no idea there was this much inside of the Quicksilver store. It's insane. Look at it all. Look at it all. It's in this mental. Oh, my days. It's a shame there isn't, like, a, a, a collect all button right now. You know why we've got all items up here? It'd be nice if there was collect all. And you could just collect every... Oh, there we go. We've got to the bottom of the list. That is going to go mental at the, at the top of... The, just there. For, like, time now. Okay. All right, well, here we go. Let's head on over this way, then. Let's go straight into here. Looks like I have accidentally picked up a pet or two, maybe. I don't know what pets I've picked up. What have I got? Robotics. I'll just delete it. And what's this one? Lilias. Well, I don't have no, I have no idea what that, that is. I'll get rid of that as well. Okay, cool. All right, there we are. I haven't got anything I shouldn't have. And let's just jump in through this portal, then. And let's head straight back to my base. So there we go. Your base is... I've only got the one. I'm just going to teleport straight back to my base. There we go. I've done everything inside of the Nexus that I needed to do. I'm not going to go there again. So people in the Viewerverse, if you hit up the creative method that I showed in episode 000, a video up there, you're allowed to do this as one extra addition. Go there, get what you need from the Quicksilver store. Jobs are, your jobs are good. If you haven't unlocked everything in the Quicksilver store, you might want to log into your legacy save, unlock everything you want for this build, then go to your creative save, go up there. Because you should be able to claim everything you've already unlocked. Like I just did. Cool. I'm back at my base. I've got all these extra parts. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it lovely? Heck yes it is. And now this is going to happen for the next like 20 minutes. So I'll reconvene in a bit of time. Okay, chums. I mean at the moment this board that I've got. And this wasn't through the Quicksilver store. It's got the little fireflies around it anyway. It gives a little bit of luminosity. I also found these banners, they've they're also got lights built into them, which give like a little bit of ambient light. But now that I have got that little jar with the fireflies in, and I've got my own fireplace, so I can put my fireplace somewhere. Let's, uh, let's stick my little fireplace here. That's going to give a little bit of ambient lighting, isn't it? Very freaking lovely, if I don't say so myself. And where's my little jar of fireflies? Oh, I've got the flaming barrels as well now. I can have my chimney, people. Lovely. Okay. Well, I'll probably put the chimney above where the fireplace is. Let's just keep it real. Huh? Okay. Well, there's the other two jars. Where's the freaking jar with the fireflies in? I wish there was a search feature on this so you can actually search for the dang things. You know what I mean? There's quite a lot of menus now. We've got quite a lot of base parts. So give us a blinking search feature. That'd be lovely, wouldn't it? It's not in there either, is it? I've probably gone past it, you know? Probably gone past. There it is. I was on it. Okay, bio lantern. Okay, well, I'm going to stick one. Oh, I need glass for it. Dang it! Okay, well, I do know how to make glass. Um, let's just pop out to the refiner quickly. Just this one over here. That'll do me. Put a little bit of fuel in. Just half would do. And then if I put in some silicate powder. Oh, look, I can only make one. Budgeon heck. That's a lot. No. Oh. Okay, still got 33 left. Alright, fine. Thank you. Lovely jubbly. Let's go back in. And, um, yeah, I get my little lantern. Now, this you can actually scale. You can make it a bit larger. So, you can make it a bit larger. So, just so I get a little bit more light, I guess. But I don't know whether that looks in keeping. But, actually, let's, let's, let's put it by that sort of size. There we go. And there you go, I've got my own little mini light orb there. And I'll, of course I could put more in here, but I need more glass. I mean, I could have some here, to be fair. Maybe put a few chairs in here to look out at my little mini vista, watch the wildlife. That's quite a lovely view, for example, isn't it, with a little pond. Yeah, but I have got this mezzanine out here too, and I wouldn't mind putting a little bio lamp in the centre of there. So I've still got work to do, people. What I did do, though, is I got a load of um, cobalt the other day. So I should be able to put my multi-tool rack on the wall. Let's, uh, let's see if I can. Yes, I can. So I got that while I was out gallivanting. 
Now, something that's sort of behind this wall, I mean, I like that anyway, because it's also got tube lights in it. But if I go over here, look, I can interact with my storage container and I've labelled it treasure chest. I want to see if other players can put things that they've dug up or found inside of here. So when we run quests, I'm hoping people can put them there. And if they can't put them there, I'm hoping that they can access my refiners and put the things they find here. And then I can come along, take it out of here and put it into this repository over here, into my giant treasure chest. And then we can work out how much our faction has managed to gain in loot. And if it does work, I'd encourage Cynical and Ricey to do the same. And then we can keep a tally of, of what's happening. You know, so there we go. Right. Anyway, people, that's everything for this episode. It was just me showing you that I did sort of use the Nexus just that one time, people. So, yeah, if you want to do that, be sure to do it. Until next time, bye goodbye. And goodbye again, people in the view of us. Well, hello there, chums, does I, Captain of the Steves. Now I'm in Light No Sky. Yes, there's no man's sky, but we're playing it like Light No Fire. Now, one of the mission objectives is to go and scan every single fauna on the actual planet. Now, so far, I have managed to scan seven of the eleven, and the rest of the creatures for me to find are all underwater. So today, I'm going to be going out, and I'm going to be doing that very first step of this quest. Okay, righto, so I've got myself the wand, I've gone and picked that up from the old Nexus, because, yeah, Rice has got the wand, and I think Cynical's also going to be using the wand as well. All leaders are allowed the staffs or the wands. Now, I'm wondering, closer to when we go into a massive, great, big death match. Oh, God, there's somebody at the door. One second. I'm going to be giving my crew some very sort of in-depth tips on how you could get yourself quite a lovely multi-tool and perhaps be more useful inside of that showdown. But yeah, I'll put those tips out perhaps on the Discord or something, but spies are everywhere. We've got to be so careful, haven't we? Anyways, right, so I need to go and discover, locate these creatures. So before I go out on a quest, I'm going to be going into um, general. No, I'm not. I'm going to be going into difficulty, changing it from normal to survival. Yes, full on survival mode. Heck yes, and then I'm going to be going into network and making sure my PvP is set to anyone. <laughs> oh my days! My heart rate just went up a little bit. View nearby players list. Now we've got a few people here already. Now the Spotted Badger has sent me a couple of invites to group already. Now, I would let him come with me. However, I think I'm going to do this bit alone. He sent me a few invites. I'm recording a video. That's why I didn't accept it, Spotted Badger. Um, but yeah, here we go. Let's head on out then, people. Um, this could be fun. Right, so hopefully there's not a storm raging or else... Okay, or else I'm going to start losing damage already, aren't I? Okay, well, what I need to do is I need to find myself an area of water, don't I? So let's get on my bird. Oh, he's feeling sad. Let's just let's give him a tr treat as well. I'll give him a pat. There you go. You're not so sad now, are you? Let's ride! Okay, now I don't really want to go towards other players' hubs. And really, what I want to do is try and find myself a lake. Now, we are setting off in a storm, which was freaking stupid, to be honest. But here we are. We're flying over. And hopefully we're going to find a lake or something. I mean, there's a little mini pond there. I don't think we're going to find much in a blinking pond. So I'll just carry on going. I mean, normally, if you were in ships, you could sort of fly right up into the atmosphere, up where the air is clear, couldn't you? Now, if there wasn't a storm raging... Oh, hold on, hold on. I think I've spotted a massive swathe of ocean over this way. Heck yes. And we've got ourselves... Oh, yep, storm is clearing as well, which is great. Ah, maybe it wasn't a massive swathe of ocean. It's a trickle. It's a freaking trickle! Okay, people. Um, it, it's, it's hardly a lake. It's, it's, it's a pond. If that. Okay. Fudge. Hopefully we're not flying towards any of the enemy bases and structures, because that would not be good. Uh, okay, well, um, I'd let you know if anything interesting happens, or if I come across something like a lake. Chums, I think I might have come across a plaque. Uh, I think it's just over this hill. If I'm right, I think I caught... Yes, I found a plaque! Which means that's going to take me to an ancient relic site without needing a freaking map. Awesome! Let's head on over here, then. Let's go and hit that up. 
not what I was looking for, but you know, when you're not looking for something, you find it, don't you? Okay, so this is like um, point three on the quest objectives. So here we go, let's go into here then. Lovely jubbly. And um, I want to seek knowledge of the past. Hopefully it's going to be on planet. Be on planet. Historical data revealed. Freaking lovely. Okay, so it's all the way over there. This is going to take me mile. Look at that, 38 minutes. 38 minutes is going to take me on foot. Okay, well let's um, desummon my bird, recall my bird, and uh, let's uh, let's ride into the night, my little budgie. Heck yes! Right. Um. Oh dear. Where's it gone? Uh, fly in the wrong direction. Come on. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. These things don't turn too quickly. Why can't I see? There we go. Okay, right. Now, while I'm flying towards this, I am going to be keeping an eye out for a massive swathe of ocean. But you can see here, it's still going to take me 35 minutes or so to get there. So I'll see you when I come across something interesting. Okay, chums, well, I've arrived, Decated. Here we go. At the ancient relic site. Lovely jubbly. Okay, right here. Um, now I need to dig up some keys. So here we go. Let's uh, go get the keys. Bum, 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 bum. And this is miles away from anything and anyone. So I don't think I have to... I can kind of relax a little bit now, I think. Unless pirates attack me, which happens quite frequently on this planet. When I was here in my legacy save, giving away a couple of pet eggs, which I do daily. Okay, so if you are after a sort of, a, you know, a flying pet, a flying mouse, like I was just on, I'm giving away maybe four a day at random to people that I see online if I'm on my legacy save. I've got four eggs to give away today. I'll probably be logging in in a bit and uh, giving them away. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, anyway, I was in my legacy save, and you know I'm in, I'm in normal mode on my legacy save, rather than PvP. And I'm not going to attack anybody, obviously, in my um, my legacy save. But yeah, it was yeah a, a load of pirates attacked me, and they were setting me on freaking fire. If that was this save, I would have died in one like sorte. I reckon wouldn't have been good anyway. Okay, right, there we go. Done that. Now where's the big chest? Gravitino ball. Not after the gravitino ball. There we are. Large artifact. Great. Let's go and get myself a lovely, lovely artifact. Lovely, lovely. And boom. Straight in. Chikapow. 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 I'm done. What have we got? Oh, it hasn't given me it yet. There you go. Got to interact with it. Okay. I got cloned rust leaf, which... I don't think is all that great. It's not a golden treasure. So that's not going to set me too high up in the rankings. Hopefully you guys get luckier. Now, I could try and find a Colossal Archive. If I could find a Colossal Archive, you can put this into a little machine at the Colossal Archive and it gives you the same or better. So you can trade up. So I might have to go to the actual hub, get a tele the teleporter up to the station and hopefully get myself maybe some maps to find a colossal archive to do exactly that, people. All right, well, there we go. We've, we've dug that up, which is lovely, isn't it? That's pretty darn cool. Now, I could dig up the extra keys. There is a chance that I might be able to turn them into the actual guild envoy up there, depending on the guild envoy and what they're after. Sometimes they want these keys. So, yeah, I get the extra keys anyway. And if not, it just means I've got less digging to do next time. Anyway, I'm going to dig these keys up. I'm still looking for oceans. Even on my fly here, I didn't come across anything that could be classed as an ocean. Um, which sucks, to be fair. Uh, so I'm going to go over here, dig that up. So I'm just going to dig up this last key, and then I'm going to continue my search for a swathe of water. So hopefully I can get all the underwater creatures scanned. And then that way I can claim a massive stash of nanites, and I can use those nanites to buy a load of chart maps. Now, there's a couple of different chart maps I want to get for different reasons. Oh, great. This one's, this one's balls. This one's underneath the ground. Oh, look. I've managed to get it just. All right. Well, let's just blow my way out of here. Coolio. And away we go, people. So I'm going to continue my search for ocean. All right. I'll see you in a bit. Oh, something just to um, point out, people. Your ship, although that we're saying don't use any technology or whatever, you can call your ship in if I had you know, launch for us to fuel. And I could jump in it and out of it to use it as a portable camp. Because I can't really do that, 
I don't even think I've got it. I haven't got enough to actually even do that. I was going to try and make myself a nice little save point. So, yeah, I, I, I can just make a little makeshift camp, but I haven't got any of this stuff at the moment. Okay, uh, right, yeah, so let's just pop into here. Let's see if I can sort that out quickly. I don't think I've got any dehydrogen. I've only got four of it. No. Uh, okay, fine. I'll just press on and we'll, we'll look for uh, we'll look for somewhere using my budgie. Here we go. Come on then, budgie. Now, I don't know which way I was blinking flying. All right, anyway, I'll look for an ocean, people. Okay, chums, it's not quite an ocean, but it's probably the biggest lake that I've come across so far. So I'm just going to take a dip in here and see if I can find some of the creatures. I mean, look, I can barely get under the water. Ah, oh, my days. This is like a paddling pool for kids, isn't it? This is freaking rubbish. Okay, stay under the water. Let's see if we can find some creatures then. There we go. We found one. Boom. Got that one. What's this one? Looks like a little crab creature or something. Yes, it is. And I think that's our lot, people. And I don't think we're going to get anything else, just in this little swathe of water here. Heck no. No, we need to press on, but at least I've found two of the little critters. Heck yeah. Lovely jubbly. Cool, yeah. Okay, chums, well, I managed to build myself a little save point. I mean, I freaking had to, to be honest, because I get interrupted all the time. So let's go and hit this up and let's take that with me. So I've still got that. Right, let's call in my budgie. I guess. Come on, little budgie. Now, I think what I'm doing is heading east. Northeast. Yeah, the reason why I'm heading east, I don't know whether this planet actually gives a good representation. But you can see there, look, there's a swathe of ocean over here. So I'm there and I want to... <laughs> <laughs> There's not an exact science, I know, but that's where I'm heading, people. That's that's what I'm hoping to do, anyway. So I've got to get myself on north. So there's north, right there. So if I'm going... There you go. Then I'm going east if I head towards that giant... Well, it looks like a giant shoe, doesn't it? Floating in the horizon. Right, well, I'm heading that way, then. And hopefully I'm going to get there. Now, something what I'd say, though, people, is you see my health bar down in the bottom corner over there where the heart is. Look how fast it goes down when I'm flying on my bird creature. You need a heck of a lot of oxygen inside a survival mode when you're flying. You see how my creature keeps doing this dive bombing of the scenery. Every now and again, it hits the scenery so hard, it launches me off of it. And I go miles. I've broken my legs a couple of times, so I'm lucky I've got an extra shield module that I found in some tech. Or else this bird could freaking kill me with ease. So yeah, be a little bit careful, people, because right now we're like glass, you know? We haven't got hardly any, any protection against long falls or anything. And of course, if you jump off this bird, it's a, it's a long fall. Okay, right, okay, we've got another little puddle here. Honestly, don't think that's any deeper than the last one we was at. There's a structure there, but it's... It's not really a decent structure, so I'll just carry on. Anyway, I'll let you know if I manage to get to the seaside. Oh, chums, I've come across a trading post. Well, trading posts are great because they've got a galactic trade terminal interface on them. So this is kind of like our version of maybe a little mini town or something, isn't it? So you know what? I might just plonk myself here for a second. Lovely. And you know what? I'm going to put my little save point here for a moment underneath this cover. And this is a lovely little spot for me to just take reflection on what's gone on so far. So there you go. Made a little save. My bird has got stuck in the railings. Okay. He's feeling quite upbeat about his predicament though, which is good. Right, let's head on over here then. Let's see what we've got. Oh, I've got hardly any money. <laughs> Can't buy much. But can I sell anything? You want my living slime? You can have it. I mean, I could spin that into nanites, though, couldn't I? I can sell the Mordite, I suppose. But then again, I could I could turn that into something as well. Salvage data, I could turn that into nanites, too. And I need nanites. So I don't think I've got anything that I really want to... What the... Where did I get that? And how? Why? I have no idea why I've got that, people. It sells 3,200. I don't... Okay. I've got some meat on me, which is great. No, I, I don't think I've got anything worth selling. I honestly don't. No, I'm going to keep it all. Thank you. I mean, I would sell that treasure, but to be honest, we need the treasures for the event, don't we? So anyway, oi, come back here, you. Yeah, don't you go anywhere. 
Why can I not? I can't ride it there. I'm stuck in the railings, I suppose. Right, well, we're going to continue going east then, people. I still can't see any swathes of ocean. Hold on. Is that a colossal archive? I think it freaking is. I guess. Okay, right, we're heading towards the colossal archive then, people, because from there I can get another map. Ah, I left my save point up there. I got too excited. Let me go get my save point and we'll go to the colossal archive. Okay, yeah, chums, I've got my save point and now I'm heading towards the Colossal Archive, I guess. I'll dive bomb the ground. Wow, throw me up into the air, why not? Okay, here we go, we've arrived, located. Sweet! I'm now at a Colossal Archive, right. Well, I'm definitely going to be putting... Well, I, to be honest, I'd like to beacon this, because I want to come back here at some point. So I need some sodium nitrate and some metal plating. Okay, well, I wonder if I can just buy some sodium nitrate from this little guy on the wall. Um, no, but now that I'm in a actual, like, safe structure, you know, this is almost like being at a base or whatever, because I can sort of say, now say, right, well, I'm no longer on a quest. I can put this back to normal. Go back to normal mode. Hit that up. Oh, no. We're under attack by pirates. Ah, oh, some biscuits. Right, okay, this might not go good. Well, I was lucky that I swapped out. Where'd my save point go? Um, oh, okay, I must have picked it up. Right, well, we'll save it, you know, because there's nothing I can do against those pirates. But they shouldn't be able to get me in here anyway. But, you know, I got that treasure earlier. Let's go see if we can upgrade it, shall we? Here we go. Sweet. Here we go. And, oh. Damn it! I can't upgrade it. I've got it on my person, haven't I? Yeah, there we are. But, yeah. Now that I'm here, and now that I've done my save, that's all great. That's all groovy, baby. That's all groovy. Okay. Now, to get rid of those pirates, I can just do a reload now. Because I'm in this safe structure. It's not like I'm on a mission. I've declared that, you know, this. I'm no longer doing the mission at the moment. I'm having a breather from the mission. I can exit out and come back in again. So we go. Just do a reload. Okay. Now I've reloaded back in. There's my save point. I've got my refiner here as well. Let's stick that down. So if I interact with this, stick that in there. Have I got any sodium on me? I've got 101. Let's put that in there then. Let's spin that up. Because I, I want to beacon this place. I want to be able to come back here whenever I freaking like. So I need two metal platings as well. So let's make two metal platings. Lovely. I guess. I still haven't found epoxy ocean. I bet you when I'm not looking for an, ox an ocean or a deep lake, I bet I find one straight away. Yeah, That's the only thing I haven't managed to do yet. That's the easiest part of this mission. Well, actually, I haven't managed to find any um, venom yet, have I? Okay, let's pick that back up then. Make a little save. Oh, there goes my freaking door again. It's lucky I have got this save, isn't it? I need to get somewhere safe before I can go and answer the bloody door. Right. See you in a bit. Okay, people. Well, Ivy is actually off work today. He's put a load of stuff on Facebook Marketplace, so that's why the doorbell keeps going. Freaking mental. All right. Oh, wow. This looks beautiful, this planet in storms, doesn't it? Really does. Heck, yeah. I forgot what I was bloody doing now. Oh, yeah. I wanted to put down a beacon, didn't I? Okay, right. All my beacons I'm doing as red, okay? So I've got a red one at the um, portal... And I've got another one here. Okay, all mine are going to be red. So anything of interest is going to be red for my team. As I'd imagine, you know, Rice, you could always use yellow, since um, he's going for yellow. And Cynical could always use orange. I'm going for red. Okay, now the reason why I wanted this place bookmarked is because of this machine right here. If you hit that up, it's going to print you a map. Lovely, lovely. Yes, please. Print map. And that's going to give me another location of another relic site, whenever I want it. Heck yeah! Lovely! Brilliant! Cool. I really wish I could put a teleporter here so I could get here nice and easy, rather than having to fly my pigeon all the way back here every time I want to come. But, you know, that that's it is what it is. Okay, right. Let's just jump off of here then. Zoom! Oh no, I want to just break my legs. There's another machine on the wall down here. I don't know whether I can trade my goods in here. 
But this is also a good way of making your treasure worth more as well, people. So if you can see my red marker, my faction, yeah. <laughs> The only trouble is everyone's going to see that freaking thing. They're going to, oh, look, Captain Steve's found something interesting. We're going to go use that. It, it, pretty much it's just put a marker for death there now, hasn't it? Because now pretty much every other faction knows there's a good chance I'm going to be here. It's a double-edged freaking sword. Okay? All right, so here we go. Let's uh, call in my budge. Oh, I'm back on quest. I'm going back on quest, so I need to go back into difficulty. And I need to go back into survival. And I didn't actually change my PvP status, did I? Well, that could have been a bit dodgy, couldn't it? Where is it? I always lose where it blinking is. It's still on anyone. So here we go. Let's um, let's take to the skies again. And we're going to be continuing going east. Because we need to find ourselves a lovely place, don't we? Okay, right. So there's north. So I want to carry on going that way. Over towards that big rock on the hill. Come on, my budgie. Fly, my pretty fly. I guess. So I've got a lovely cartography map that I can use to go to another relic site when I'm good and ready. But I still want to get a load of nanites for scanning every single creature on this planet. Look, there's a little lake here, but that does not look deep at all. Ah! Well, we're in there anyway now, because my budgie freaking nosedived it. Let's have a look, see. Let's see if there's any creatures in here that I haven't got already. Might as well scan a few bits and bobs while I'm in here, might not I? Yeah, and I've spotted something there. Oh, that, that's, that's crystallized sulfide. If I could find an underwater relic here, that would have been worth picking up, but there's not any. Because, yeah, you can spin those into nanites, you know, the Hadal cores or whatever they are. All right, okay. We still haven't come across any free star bulls on here. You know, like the... Look, there's no free stars, is there? Now, the free star items on this planet are extremely rare. I just saw a, a grave over there, but... Yeah, there's no free star things. If there is a free star thing, it's going to be the sack venom. Now, that's another part of the quest, is getting sack venom. Now, the only thing is, I have seen... Naughty Naughty Daniel Hipley has gone and built a sack venom farm. No, the actual mission says, quite clearly... That you're only to get yourself wild sack venom, Mr. Hipley. Bad Hipley. Okay. So, so, yeah. Don't use farms. Do not grow sack venom in your own farm. That's just, that's cheating. You've got to find the sack venom out on the planet. And it's as rare as rocking horse turd. That's the whole reason I've selected it. It's to get people running around in freaking PvP. Having to recharge their life support all the freaking time. Running out of oxygen and um, going up against it. Hold on, look, we've got ourselves a lake over here, people. And it's got a giant diving board above it. Look at that. And it's freaking beautiful, doesn't it? Okay, we've got, we've got a bit more of a lake going on here now, peeps. Let's, uh, let's see if we get lucky. And let's see how deep it is, shall we? Okay, let's have a look where we are on the map so far. How? Look, I've, I haven't even freaking moved! Okay, alright, fine. Um... Let's go for a little dip in here. Let's see if it's any deeper than the last puddle I was in. No. No. I'm not going to find any new creatures in here. I don't think. I think the only creatures I'm going to find in it. No, I'm not going to find anything. This is miserable. Miserable, I tell thee. Well, is that crystallized sulfide? It is, isn't it? Yeah. Great. No new creatures in here. Oh, there's a two star there. Submerged relic. Let's go get that. Might as well. Because that, people, is going to spin into nanites. It's a Hadal core, so we might as well have that. Is there any others while I'm in here? What are you? Crystallized sulfide. Ah, there's another creature. Oh, luck be had it. Okay, right. I think we've only got one underwater creature left. And that is going to be the giant underwater creature. And you're only going to find that in the deepest of oceans. You're not going to find it in a piddly little puddle like this. Um, it has to be a certain amount of fathoms deep. Now, sometimes you can use your terrain manipulator to trick the game into thinking you are a lot deeper in the ocean than you actually really are. Oh, no. I'm drowning. Oh, oh for fudge sake. Get out of the menu. Just let me get out of here. Yeah, you drown a lot quicker when you're in survival mode, people. And of course, there's no blinking oxygen 
thingies in a, an ocean this shallow. When they say you can drown in an inch of water, they're not blinking joking when it comes to No Man's Sky, I tell you. Heck yeah. What the fudge is that? Is that another plaque? Have I just found another plaque by sheer freaking fluke and chance? Well, I'm not going to let that go. I'm going to go and hit that up as well and get another relic site on my radar for later so I can hit up three different treasures to bring back to my base all on my own, people. So this is going good, isn't it? Hold on, this looks a lot deeper over here, unless I'm mistaken. And look, we've actually got a reflection of the actual coastline. I thought they had stripped that out. Maybe I just don't see it because I'm usually swimming around in the daytime. Hold on, look, this is a lot deeper here because we've got a cave. Do I dare swim through the cave? I might have to do it. I might have to chance it, people, in a bit. The only thing is, I'm fairly sure that's going to be a dead end, and I'm going to end up dead if I try. Any of the bigger creatures here, because this is slightly deeper. And because there's a cave complex underneath me, the game engine might think I'm actually in deeper ocean than I am. There's another um, Hadel core there that I could have had. There's another one over there. There's a few in here. I'm only really interested in finding that last freaking creature, to be honest, though, right now. I might have lost that oxygen again. Fudge and heck. That's dangerous, using your scanner inside of the oceans. It's not even an ocean, people. I'm not used to swimming in survival mode, you can tell, can't you? I nearly freaking died like three times now. Look at that. My hazard protection is, like, battered. Okay, all right, well, let's hit up this plaque then. And we get another ancient ruin locked in. Because as I'm going towards the ancient ruin, hopefully, I might come across some more ocean. Let's do that. Hello there, plaque plaque. Lovely. Jubbly. Okay, here we go. Knowledge of the past again. Give me another relic site. Oh, there's another bit of ocean over there, but it's it's I, it's a, it's a little bit unfair to call it ocean, to be honest. Hold on, there's a trader that's just landed as well. Oh, he's just took off. Oh, you get. Oh, look, we've got some um, frigates flying past. Lovely. Now, you can take on sentinels if you really wanted to, to get some more tech for your multi-tool. But I'm not going to do that right now. That's that. I might I might have to put that as a future quest, you know. Like, take out ten sentinels or something. Because that's a very good way of getting yourselves slightly more OP and ready for combat. Right, so I think this is east. Because, yeah, south is that way. Yeah, yeah, this is east still. All right, well, we're flying this way. I've, I can just leave that marker for the relic on my map anyway. I'm going to carry on going east because it looks like it's trying to take me the opposite direction. Is this slightly deeper? It might be, mightn't it? Yeah, let's just jump in here. Come on. Last creatures, where are you? Oh, come on. Please. Right, let's go get this quickly. Kelp sack. I mean, you can see how hard this is just to find the last poxy remaining creature. I mean, I'm heading out towards where all the bigger lakes are now, heading towards the eastern side of the planet. But even still, I'm not having much luck with finding this last creature. And I don't think I'm going to. Inside of these little mini ponds. Because that's all they are. They're like lakes at best, aren't they? Hmm. Yeah, a bit of a jolly. Still not seeing any red dots for creatures I haven't any got. Oh, my oxygen's getting lower yet again. Ah, there's 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 an oxygen plant right here. Can I make it in time? I've just taken a hit. Phew. Come on. This is actually really difficult. I didn't think finding all the actual corner on this planet would be as difficult as this people I honestly didn't okay this is actually prove it step one of the quest is actually proving more difficult than I thought it would which which isn't a bad thing this is almost like an expedition when we're not doing an expedition isn't it this whole sort of um, questy type stuff 
I'm actually enjoying it though, you know. And of course we haven't found any sack venom yet. Which is just as well. Because come to think of it, people, what I haven't done is got myself prepared for that just yet. So here we go, let's go get ourselves prepared. Yeah, interact. Let's put a bit of carbon in there. And then what I want is to get this copper. Stick that in there. I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna only gonna do half of it. 156 of it. There we go. And this is for the, the um, hazmat gauntlet. So I've got some sodium nitrate now. So I only need 50 to get that spun up. So might as well get that ready. Heck yeah. Inventory is getting quite low. It might be that we have to do a future quest to find drop pods or something, you know? There's so many different quests that we could come up with. If you've got any good quest ideas, stick them on my Discord. And then I float them past Cynical and um, Ricey for the next set of events to do. Anyway, why that's spinning up? Is there any other three-star droplets on the map right now? No, there's not. Uh, my starship's all the way over there, one hour away. So, north. I still want to be going that direction, then. Towards that unknown building. Okay. How's this going? There we go. Got enough. That'll do me. Use my stuff sparingly. What is that unknown building then? Where's it gone? There. Well, it's only over on the bank. I might as well swim it. And while we're swimming there, we'll see if we can spot this last remaining creature. Not that it's that deep. Oh my god, my um, life support is extremely low. Yeah, these bars in survival mode, you really have to look after them, don't you? Okay, right. See, this is nice and deep. I, I would kind of think that there's a chance. A chance. It's not, it's not like a massive chance. But there is a sl slim chance that the last creature could spawn in something this deep. But, um, yeah, it's, it's not a great chance. Well, where's that building gone? Oh, great. I've lost sight of it. There it is. I wonder what it is. I wonder if it's a drop pod, now that I just mentioned drop pods. Might be, mightn't it? Okay, well, we've got another Hadel core down here, which is good for nanites, just in case another trader does sort of stop by again. We'll have that. Yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, right. Take that, you, oxygen plant. Boom. You're gone. Oh, there's a second one. Zap, you're gone too. What is this unknown building? Oh, it's a trade terminal. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit this up to get some free navigational data. And it acts as a save. Lovely. Navigational data should appear just up here. Any second now. Go on. You know you want to? There you go. Boom. Navigational data. That's always handy. Lovely. What can I buy here? Is there anything worth buying? Star silk, unstable plasma. There's not really much to worth buying there, people. Apart from maybe that, but I can't actually afford it anyway. At least then I can call my ship in once I've recharged it as a portable sort of campsite. Which would be quite handy and dandy, to be honest. But, you know. Well, right now, I'm okay with my little portable save point. I'm using that. But if there's a storm, it is nice to just jump in your ship and shelter from the storm. Yeah, I mean, I won't be able to fly in it. It's just a case of taking shelter in it, you know? Okay, right. So that's... Okay, so if I'm heading north, that's that way. That means east is this way. Okay. Hold on. What have we found here? Ah, we found an Albion Pals. That's not what we're after, though. We're after three star items. And we're after the, um, the Sack Venom. Hmm, maybe that could be a future mission, though, is Albion Pearls. Because they're still rare as, aren't they? But yeah, I'm not seeing any um, Sack Venom out here, people. And even Sack, sack Venom is actually really hard to spot when you're on your bird creature. And your bird creature flies that fast. Now, you know, you might want to just do some exploration like this on foot. 
But yeah, I've got one treasure so far. I can go and get two more treasures. But you know what? I'm, I'm quite eager to try and find this last poxy creature on this planet. So you know what? Bear with me. I'll, I'll let you know if I come across anything interesting. Okay, well this is interesting. I've come across another massive swathe of lakeage. Yes, maybe we're getting close to the close line now, people. I mean, look, it goes all the way, all the way over there. Let's just pop into camera mode and just have a look at how big this lake actually is. I mean, the trouble is, you can see that the tide has gone well out. You know, it's there's a lot of recession here when it comes to water depth. But it does look like I'm getting closer, perhaps, to the oceany side. Of oh, look, I think we've made it. I think we made it to the ocean, people. Heck yes. Okay, right. Well, let's uh, let's get into this then, shall we? Let's go swim out into the oceans. Let's see if we can find this last poxy fish, shall we, people? The only trouble is, is in survival mode, your chances of drowning goes through the freaking roof. Especially if you've got to swim down deep to find your last fish. Hello, fishes. Okay, right. Oh, go get, go get these. We go this way. Come on, the last fish has to be out here somewhere. Come on. You know, shall I just reconvene when I find it, or if I die, I'll let you know that I drowned. You know. Okay, I think that's a plan. Oh, would you look at that? Another trader has just landed right by me, people. So let's uh, let's head on over quickly and let's see if we can do anything with said trader. Now, if I stand on his ship, hopefully he's not going to go anywhere. All right. Okay. So there we go. I'm on his ship right now. Now, what I need to do, though, is put down this. Oh, don't take off, mate. All right. Let's go spin up the Hadal cores that I've got. I should have done this earlier, shouldn't I? I've got two of them. Quickly, quickly. Get 100 nanites. Lovely. Pick that up. Turn around. Hello, right, mate. I've got 100 nanites to spend. Plus probably a little bit more on me. Let's see what we've got. I've got 325. Do you have another shield module? I mean, you've got some hazard protection modules, which might be good. 361. I'm not quite there, am I? Not. And I don't think uploading my discoveries... Oh, didn't get me close enough. You know what? I'll come back when I've got more cashola. Plus, I also want to buy some more maps and stuff anyway. So yeah, you gotta you gotta spend wisely. You gotta spend wisely, people. Anyway, I'm gonna swim out to the oceans and see if we can find this last creature. Tell you what, people. You know, Cynical has found an awesome light no fire type looking planet. I mean, this looks like the trailer at the start of Light No Fire, doesn't it? Swimming in this ocean. Okay, right. Give me that kelp plant before I freaking die. Ow! There we go. Oh great, a storm and being underwater at the same time. This is not going to be pretty, is it? Okay. Creatures just freaking spawn in, you daft freaking creature. Okay. You know, when you're not looking for these things, you kind of discover all fauna without even trying. You know what I mean? It's when you're trying to do something. It's like I couldn't find relic sites for love nor money the other day. I found three in today's episode just trying to find these poxy underwater creatures. So there is that. Okay. Well, I thought this ocean was going to get deeper. It hasn't. It's got shallower. Oh, great. Now there's, there's, there is a big storm out here. Ah, and now I've lost my life support. Oh my days. Yeah. Managing these bars in survival mode is a lot freaking harder, isn't it, people? Has to be said. And this whole going out and searching. What the fudge is that? Alluring specimen. No, thank you. You keep your alluring specimen. Okay, well, that's back where I just came from. There is another Hadel core down here. See, that's the nice thing about looking for these creatures is you are going to find Hadel cores which do spin into nanites and I would suggest trying to grab as many as you possibly can when it comes to those Hadel cores. Have I swum past the dang thing? No, oh, I lost sight of it. There it is over there. 
Because if you can get these Adel cores, of course they do turn into nanites. And then nanites you can spend with the trader. And you can see here, this one is actually underneath the ground. Oh great. I need to get out of the ocean quickly before I drown again. Holy mackerel. I'm just going to get the Hadel cores I can see, not the ones I have to dig for. Oh my god! How? How did that happen? I'm, I nearly died. Oh my days, people. Should I just stay still? I think I should, till I get my shield back. I don't want to take critical damage. I'm just going to stay here. Ooh Come on, shields. Replenish. I'm not going to do anything. You know, if, if one of Cynical's crew flies by right now, I am... I am pickings, you know? I'm like a... I'm like a freaking fish in a barrel. Literally. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and I have got my markers on. So, you know, people can see that I'm just swimming around, like, in the middle of an ocean right now. Yeah. Not great. Not a, not a good position to put yourself in. Come on, fish! Last fish! Where are you, fish? Come on! I tell you what, when I see these little red dots appear for this last frickin' fish, I am gonna be elated. Hold on, what's that over there? I saw movement, I saw movement. Okay, let's pick this up. Come on! Come on, fisherman, fish, fish! Okay, there's another Hadel core over here. Let's see if it's above topsoil, shall we? I think it is. I think we should be able to get that one. Yep, we'll have that. Yeah, I have that. Thank you very much. Right, kelp sacks, kelp sacks, where are they? Oh, it looks like when you pick up one of those Hadel cores, you actually get your oxygen back anyway. There's a whole load of oxygen here, which is good. Let's go pick that up. Okay, the joys of fishing. I'm not really an avid angler in life, to be honest. I mean, I do like going cray fishing, because you can eat them. It kind of feels like, you know, it's worth doing when you can eat the things you catch. It's like sea fishing. I wouldn't mind doing sea fishing and actually catching my lunch, you know what I mean? But just sitting there to catch a fish and then plonk it back in again, what's the point? Okay, right. Ah, ha, ha. Okay, right. Come on, fish. I've had enough of this now. All right, people. Well, I'll, I'll let you know if and when I see some red dots appear and you can see how deep the ocean is when I find it. But I, I'm going to stop recording for a bit because, I one, I need to concentrate because you've got to manage these bars. It's, it's, it's not easy. Well, you know what, chums? I've been at this for some time and I have not found this last remaining sea creature. Um... And I'm getting really low on oxygen now. Really low on oxygen. It's um, quite scary how low on oxygen I'm, I'm getting, to be honest. Swimming in the oceans, your, your hazard protection goes down so quick. And your life support goes down so freaking quick. So I'm just out here on this massive island at the moment, in the middle of the ocean that I've just come across. I'm just grabbing a few bits from up here. But what I'm tempted to do is put down a little save point on here. I'm grabbing some more oxygen as we go. You can grab oxygen from these, but the hitbox is like massive, so it's and it only goes one way, sadly. You gotta it's a fine art to nick that oxygen out of there without getting battered. Okay. There's some more oxygen there. We'd have that. So at the moment I'm just harvesting oxygen so I can swim a little bit more. But you know what? And what I'm thinking of doing is making a save point on this... Oh, fudging heck. Go Get out of it, Sentinel. It wasn't me. I did nothing. Okay. I'm thinking about putting a little save point on here. And um, I might have to reconvene later, live, looking for the last fish. We could do that on my live stream. The only thing is, is people know that I'm live and they know roughly where I am. They might come and try and kill me. So anyway, let's, uh, let's put down a save point. There we go. Let's put that down there. Chicka boom. And especially if I'm in the oceans and I'm struggling with my oxygen and my bars, I could be a prime target, couldn't I? But anyway, people, I'm going to continue searching this ocean tonight, live, for the last fish. Yeah.
that's that's a thing now you might see this episode the day after it depends how long this takes to render people inside the viewer so yeah so quest one so far i've managed to get some treasure i've managed to get my hazmat gauntlets installed i haven't managed to find any of the sack venom and i haven't managed to find every single creature on this planet i'm just one short right now what are, um is there any creatures i can upload add to wonders no no i think all of these has been discovered located haven't they yeah they've all been discovered located i wish people would have named them something awesome i did name quite a few creatures something awesome but look all their names have reverted back all the stuff that i named and gave cool names to they've lost their names honestly don't i honestly hold on you can't see what i'm seeing here so yeah all of these that look i've named i named all these awesome stuff and now they're just all back to their default names i honestly I honestly lose the will to actually Hello Games has got a lot of polish and a lot of fixing to do with this sort of stuff, haven't they? At least, at least the planet's kept its name in this particular instance and the system. But all my discoveries that I made, all those lovely little uploads that I've done, out the window. They're gone. Yeah. Now, another thing that we're going to hit, I think, in a moment, people, is once we hit 21 bases, which I think we've hit now, the cascading effect starts to happen, where bases don't always fully render in and only a certain amount of bases are going to show up so there is that too anyway i'll put down a little save point here where's it gone there it is i'll do another save i'm just a little bit nervous that something hasn't saved there you go and uh yeah that's that's me for now and i reconvene with my search for the last fish and for sack venom in the next riverton episode people yeah and i'll be doing that live 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 inside of light no sky until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I'm in No Man's Sky, and we're playing it like no fire, like no fire. So, yeah, we called it like no sky. And as you can see, I'm at my base at the moment, people. Now, behind these decals is a vault. So, if you head on over to this, take a little while to actually interact with it but there you go it's labeled as treasure chest now i am hoping that people can put any of their treasures inside of my vault because i have given everybody access to build at my base that's part of my friends group but if not over here there's some refiners now i have given everybody access to access my refiners so you could leave stuff into here three there and then i've got another three over here now i have been doing some testing offline and online and offline things are not appearing they're not working as they should even though despite in network i have made it that anyone can use my refiners but yes yeah and i've made it so anybody that's part of my group or friends can actually add to the base so as long as you're on my friends list you should be able to put things in my vault in theory doesn't seem to be working in practice the only time it does work is if you're online and i'm online at the same time and you can come to my base i mean inside of my base right now i do have one of my chums oh he's gone he was just here and he put a load of carbon inside of my nutrient processor i tried to give him some meat back but no he's gone so anyways if i go into here i'm just gonna make myself some meat for my journey heck yes people so i killed a walker earlier last episode or the episode before so i'm just gonna chuck that into there and i'm going to make some processed meat before we go on our next excavation well excursion i should say people you're probably wondering well what excursion is that captain of the steves well um i've come up with four challenges four so the first challenge is to scan and discover every single creature upon this planet. As you can see here, I've got seven of the 11 done. Seven, 11, I guess. So I've got to go into the gnarly of the waters and scan all the underwater beasties. Once I've done that, I can claim all the nanites and I should get 2,750 nanites. Challenge two, people, is to get yourself a relic. So to find a treasure site, so I'm looking for an ancient relic, something like that. It could be on land or it could be underwater. Dig up the treasure and hopefully get something that's worth a shed load of units. The one that finds the most awesomest treasures wins, basically. Now, all of you guys can be get involved in this. Just get your fauna scanned. Go get your treasures. Bring your treasures to your leader so they can put it in their vault. Now, 
you might have to wait until your leader's online. So just keep checking to see when they appear. And when they do, get on over there as quick as you can. Heck yeah. Okay, so challenge three, people. Okay, so challenge three is to get yourself some hazmat gauntlets created. As you can see, I haven't got the chromatic metal. I haven't got the sodium of the nitrates. I have got some sodium right there. And I have got some copper that I can turn into chromatic metal to get my hazmat gauntlets done. I've nearly got them. Yeah. Once you've got your hazmat gauntlets, on this planet are three star items. Sack venom. Go and pick as much sack venom as possible and go and screw all that away inside of your leader's vaults as the last challenge. Now, we're going to be running these four challenges until the end of May, mainly because different time zones, people sort of, you know, their commitment to gaming. You might not get a lot done, but yeah, go to town. Try and get as much sack venom as possible. Go dig up as many treasures as possible. The more treasures we get, the higher chance we have of winning. Plus, we're probably going to add up the the actual total of that treasure to find out which group has done the most treasure hunting. Yeah, I can't imagine there's that many relic sites on the planet. It'll be interesting to see. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, hello, mate. How are you? Cool. There we go. That's, that's probably one of my guys. Now, the trouble is... is when you are actually doing these challenges, people, we're supposed to be putting our games into survival mode and turning on our PvP. That means we could be killed by any of these guys that are around. And I don't know who's in my team and who's not. <laughs> yeah, so this could be a fun one. So, yeah, I'm just going to have a look at networking. Let's just see how many players are online right now. Holy fudge. We've got all of these that are online nearby players list and i don't i know that this guy he's one of my super members but i don't know about the others sorry people but yeah there's a, there's a limited window of my fans that i know them actually by name in game name you know a lot of them hit me up on social media i know their real names not their in-game names so this could be a fun one right now running a mission and trying to scan all creatures or something could be fun Oh, OK. Got a journey milestone there, people. That's pretty cool. Now, something that is quite cool, though, is I have got myself a flying creature now. Check this out. Gently pet and ride. Look how fast this thing covers the ground, you know? Look, I can get to this damage machinery in seconds now, people. hop a chow Jump off! There we go. And I've arrived, Kato, at some damage machineries. Lovely! Heck yes, grab that living slime. So anyway, people, there you go. There's your challenges. So challenge one, scan all the fauna on the planet. Challenge two, make sure you claim your nanites. You've then got to find a relic site. Now, what I would suggest is you make yourself to the actual hub of this actual realm. And there is a teleporter that can teleport you up to the station. Once at the station, you can buy yourself some cartography maps. Those cartography maps you can use to find yourself a relic site. Go to the relic site, grab yourself some treasure, treasure, heck yes! Or you could find yourself like a colossal archive, and there they print relic maps, and that'll take you to a relic site, depending on what you want to do. Like, yeah, so there is that. Okay, right, and then after you've done that, the next challenge. Make yourself some hazmat gauntlets, and then until the end of May, get yourself a load of sack venom as well as treasure. Yeah, just keep doing relics and stuff like that. Oh, I've just built a chimney on top of my house. By the looks of things, this guy is taking in its wonder and going, oh, that's a lovely chimney. Yeah, I put this little thing behind it, sort of like to give a smoky, steamy effect. But yeah, pretty darn freaking lovely, that. I'm quite happy with that. And inside of my base now, you may have noticed, it's far better illuminated now as well, people. So if I head on in, I've got this little lamp here that's doing some illumination. This fireplace, and I've put like in a, a chimney stack that actually goes up to the chimney on the top. And I've put in another little fire thingy here on the counter, almost like a little candle or something. Yeah. Oh, where's my weapons rack gone on the wall? I put a weapons rack on this freaking wall, didn't I? Yeah. There you go, stick another one on there. Don't know what happened to that. Uh, there we go. It's back, Dillion back. Okay, cool. And I've also got a nutrient processor for making my meat. So here you go, I've got my meat. 
Now, the next episode will be me doing challenge one. Challenge one, a scan all porno. As you can see, I've already got seven of the eleven. So we're going to go diving, people, which means I need to get on the back of my actual creature, fly over to a nice deep area of ocean or a lake or something, and go and scan all the creatures. That's what I'm going to be doing next episode. We came in all of my uh, nanites, heck yes, yeah, so hopefully that'll be cool. And then uh, what else have I got to do? I'll be moving on to challenge two, people inside the viewerverse, which means a trek to the hub. I might even do that live, turning on my perma, well not perma, survival mode and PvP and seeing how I get on, people. Um, hopefully I won't get murdered on my way there. Okay, right. I'm thinking, do I need to fill out this little staircase underneath? Probably not. But yeah, you can try and drop stuff off in this large refiner. The only trouble is, if I'm not online, what I've seen so far is it just eats your products. You lose them. Yeah, I, it looks like I have to be online. It looks like your leader has to be online when you drop the stuff off. So I don't know what we need to do there. Maybe we need to come up with some sort of uh, time slot. Maybe I need to put on my community tab on YouTube when I'm going to be online and how long for. I mean, luckily, I work from home most days of the week. I can just leave my PlayStation on and just leave myself sitting inside of my house. So that solves a problem for me. I don't know whether Professor Cynical and Ricey have got that same luxury, but hopefully they can. Because otherwise it's a little bit squiffy. And finding the vaults don't seem to work. So there is that, people. Heck yeah. Uh, I have made it slightly easier to get to the vaults. You can get to them from up here if you need to. The refiners or whatever. And this vault here, if you go over to this weapons rack, you can access it there. Look. Boom. Like that. Okay. Well, there we are, people, in the view of us. I've had a few people say to me, can I make life support gel or do I have to craft food products? Well, you can you can do this. I mean, look, I've just made some meat. It's going to give me 20% life support power. Go with what you like. I've also been picking up oxygen as I've been destroying hazardous flora out in the wilds. That's how I'm doing it for myself. I don't really mind how you want to play. The only thing I do have a little bit of a concern about is people jumping in and using their old items, their legacy items, having an OP multi-tool or having an exosuit that's full of tech that they've got from their legacy saves. If we are turning on PvP, that puts you at a massive advantage and that's kind of not great. We want everybody on the same base level. We don't want any super murderers inside of the game. So, you know, try and abide by the rules when it comes to that sort of thing, people. I am also planning on doing an episode very soon, perhaps to the tail end of May, where I go around and look at everybody's bases that people have been building in and around inside of my faction. And basically, I'm, I'm going to be looking to see what people's interpretations are of the light no fire type stuff so if i was doing a tour of my own base i'd be like well this is all very much in keeping apart from maybe this little sort of steamy type unit but up here but i can see why it's been added to add a bit of a, a steamy type smoke effect it's a nice idea but it does look a little bit steampunk universe you know what i mean but it's well hidden so you know it's all great there's also like the multi-tool rack yeah okay fine it's got tube lights on the dang thing but you know the weapons of choice in this game are multi-tools. I've got to try and use my imagination. Rather than seeing multi-tools, I'm seeing axes there, swords and spears and stuff like that, you know? So it's a case of using a bit of imagination thrown in. It's a bit like the nutrient processor as well. I can see that there's an old rustic kitchen built around it, but the functionality has to be that thing, you know? So yeah, you know, if I was scoring my own base, I'd say it was good. It's a decent rendition of what we might see in Light No Fire with a few caveats thrown in, which is lovely. Well done, me. Heck yes. So that's the sort of base tools I'm going to be doing on your bases. So try to keep them as fatically pleasing to the eye as possible and in line with Light No Fire as possible. I mean, I'm not going to be reprimanding them or giving them scores or anything. I'm just going to be dashing out some drizzle drizzle when it comes to the freaking opinions of what's going on you know yeah that that sort of stuff which right yeah uh right so did i upload my base i'm just gonna do that one more time before i exit out there we go upload base and i'll put down the challenges inside the video description along with all the rules but basically check out my community tab there you're going to see any rule changes any community type stuff any new missions that we come up with that sort of shenanigans now what i'm hoping to do in between now and 
the next episode is I'm just going to plant a few trees around my bush, uh, around my base. So I'm going to make these nice and large. I've just been gifted a load of carbon. So I'm going to make a nice little forest around my base right now, people. Heck yeah, because why not? There we are. Let's have that tree there as well. Coolio. Because you know what we don't have? We don't have many trees or anything like that inside of this planet. So there we are. And I've been using my terrain manipulator around here, so why not add a few flowers in too? Yeah, there we go. Anyway, I'm going to get to work on making my base look a bit pretty before I go out and scan those creatures. I'm just going to enjoy my weekend. I'm taking these challenges nice and slowly. It's just a good way of getting to see the planet as well as do something a bit functional and a bit fun. Till next time, people. Salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again. Uh well, how do there, chums? As I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I'm jumping back into the Light No Fire, Light No Sky event that we're doing. Now, Miyogi, the Master of Pets, has put down a pet shack. And hopefully, you can go over to a, the pet shack when he's online and pick yourself up a lovely pet. Now, as you know, we left off last episode out at the oceans. I was looking for the very last creature. Now, I'm just waiting for Miyogi to come online. So while we're waiting for him to come online, I'm just going to dive into the oceans and see if I can spot this last freaking creature. <clears throat> well, chums, I just found the last remaining sea creature. I guess if I go into discoveries, I just picked it up. It's this one here. Look at that. I got him. Heck yes. Brilliant. <laughs> so he was quite deep out in the actual oceans. I'm going to swim back to an island now, get out of the water. And uh, yeah, hopefully we're going to go and see Miyogi's shack. He's, he's not online as yet, but I know that he's built quite near to the actual portal. And the portal I've marked with a red beacon. And it's quite near to the hub, which is one of my bases. So I should be able to get to it relatively easy. The only thing is, you know, I have still got on the old PvP mode and all that sort of shenanigans. So, go in there. I do run the risk of getting murdercated. Let's have a look. View nearby players list. Oh, look. Ghost Light's online. I'm not seeing Miyogi there. I might have to call him. He might have fallen asleep. Or he might be having his lunch, you know. But anyway, we will try and get there, people. We will try. All right. Okay, well, I'm back on land and where I need to head to, that's my base there, Hilltop Brew Crew. So where is that the hub? There's the hub portal all the way over there. So that's where I need to head to. So I'm going to call in my little um, budgie. So if I face the opposite way of where I want to go and call him in here like, like so... You should be facing the way I want to go. It's a bit weird. You have to face the opposite direction. Here we go. And let's go. Right. I'm on my way, people. I will let you know if something eventful happens. Ah! I've jumped off of him by accident. Oh, for fudge's sake. I pressed the jump button, people. That's what I blinking did, didn't I? Okay, here we go. And, uh... Ah! Yeah. Menus. I hate them. Okay. Ah! He flew off! All right. Let me sort this out, peeps, and uh, ride. Let me on. Okay, right. I won't fall off of him this time. I'm facing the wrong way now. I didn't use my tactic of facing the opposite direction, did I? All right, I'll see you if something amazing happens and not falling off the budgie. Okay, people, that was very short-lived. Yeah, because I was out in sea. He's not very good for taking you across the oceans. He drowned. Um, you can't fly birds over the oceans. Unlike in Light No Fire, where their flying mounts clearly take them over a massive body of water. Hello, games. Can you please fix the flying fauna in No Man's Sky? Just that little bit of code that you've got on the dragons in Light No Fire? Please put it in No Man's Sky. Thanking you in advance. Okay, chums. Well, on the way to Miyogi's sort of place and to the hub, there is an ancient ruin that's only 12 minutes away. So I'm going to use my bird... And hopefully get there like, a little bit quicker. Come on then. I just got stuck in the terrain though using him and I, I, I nearly died. Which, talking of which people, if you do die because of a bug or a glitch and if you manage to record it all the better, sort of send it over to myself, Cynical or, or Ricey, your faction leader basically. 
with what happened. I mean, I've had people say that they've been killed by a sentinel dog that managed to zap them while they're in their own base or in a building, or if they managed to seal them into a cave or something like that. So if that sort of thing happens, let us know. If a game bug killed you, not a player and not your own stupidity, then fine, we might be able to grant you the ability to log back in again. You know, just like a, like a pass, a free pass to get back in. Because we, we've all been playing No Man's Sky for a long time. And we know that you can die and it's not your fault. It's the game's fault. So yeah, be sure to catalogue what happens and let us know. And we'll be fair and firm, you know. And there's a good chance you might be able to get back in. Otherwise, you know, you have to wait until the next planet. Which could be a good month, and all, a good month away yet. Oh, here we go. I've arrived, located at an ancient relic site. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I guess. Let's see if we get a better treasure here. I'll dig up the free keys and I'll let you know when I'm about to be dig up the chest. Okay, chums, I'm at the big chest. Let's see if we get lucky <coughs> with the contents, shall we? Let's see what we get. Open sesame. Ah, oh, great. I just got some more of those petals. It's another biological sample, which is worth... Freaking not much. Yeah, so they're the treasures I've managed to get myself. I've still got two spare keys. I might eat these. Gives me a little bit of extra on my life support. There you go. Lovely. Okay, right. So we're still heading towards the hub. Is that the hub over there? No, that's my brew crew. So the hub is not too far away from there, to be honest. Shouldn't be anyway. I've lost my base. Fudge. There it is. Over there. Hub portal. Four hours away, apparently. Okay, right. Well, I've, I've got a lot of flying to do then, people. I really did go quite a distance to go out to sea, didn't I? So I only got myself to blame. And all this time I could be picked off by another player. Because, you know, there's a lot of them about right now. Okay, so there we go. Let's head this way. Now you've got to kind of avoid these giant rocks. It doesn't actually count them as being terrain. And the reason why I want a different flying creature is this creature at the moment keeps doing this dive bombing malarkey. Now, Miyogi says that he's got another bird that doesn't do this. Apparently the smaller birds that you can only just about ride do this. But the slightly bigger ones do not. <clears throat> and you can see how annoying it is. This whole, it's like being on a freaking dolphin or something, isn't it? Okay, well, I'll see you when I get there, because, you know, if it's annoying me, this must be annoying you immensely. Right, now, I've been flying for about, what, eight minutes, ten minutes? And it said four hours earlier, didn't it? It now says three hours, so it that time dimension when you're on a bird just really doesn't make any sense. Just keep flying, and it just ticks down by the hour. It, do, it doesn't actually go down in increments that make any sort of sense. I was like, oh my god, this is actually really going to take me four hours. And then, no, it just dropped like a massive swave all of a sudden. Now, as I'm flying, I am trying to keep my eye peepers peeled for um, sack venom. The only trouble is, with all this upping and downing, I'm starting to feel a little bit queasy. <laughs> yeah, fun times. What's this over here? Okay, there's a little tower there. I did fly past a minor settlement earlier. I was so tempted to stop and take a look at the multi-tool. But then being leaders, we've all got the staffs. Me, Ricey, and Cynical. Now, over on Discord, on my Discord, I don't know about theirs, but on my Discord, my faction has been sharing coordinates of minor settlements that have got multi-tools that are either an A-class or S-class. Or even machinery and stuff like that that contain really good S-class modules. And they're given the X and Y coordinates and they're in and around where our faction actually is. So you can travel to them without fear of getting mullered or killed. So if you're on Discord, go and hit up the area for Light No Sky on my Discord server for some rather crafty and awesome coordinates. Yeah, really I should have stopped at that um, minor settlement and just checked the multi-tool and added to it. But this is so far north of our settlement, I didn't see it as worth it because the trek is just insane if you haven't got one of these flying birds. So there we go, people. 
Oh, would you look at that, people? I've just spotted a relic site. I don't know whether this is the one with treasure on. It's not. It's where you can learn of a place to go to get treasure, though. I guess. Let's uh, go down there. Let's let's go hit it up. Oops. Ouch. That hurt my legs. Might as well learn a word or two while we're here. Now, a lot of what you see here, like these weird symbols, we kind of see those in Light No Fire. Which kind of makes me want to choose like this this first objective of finding these relic sites as one of the first things we do. Because I am kind of think we're going to see places like this in Light No Fire. There we go. La 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 la. And which choice is it? Seek knowledge of the past, please. Find me another relic site that I can go and get some treasures, I guess. Oh, is that some sack venom to the south? of this the opposite direction to where that is how far away is that 19 minutes away i think i might have seen some sack venom when it was zoomed all the way out but the chances of me of finding it is very slim well i haven't heard from miyogi so you know what i'm gonna fly to that relic site and dig up that treasure as well okay jumps well i've arrived located at the next ruin site and you know the drill i need to get some keys you know what i might just dig up one key and then uh, go and dig up the actual chest. Now, something I completely forgot, as I went past an alien grave in the last episode, didn't I? Well, somebody hit me up in the comments and said, Captain Steve, they give you memory fragments of technology. You might have passed up on an awesome bit of tech. Dang it, I completely forgot that they did that. So yeah, the next time I see a grave, if I'm ever that lucky again, I'll have to dig it up. Oh, for fudge sake, just give me an epoxy key. Well, where is it then? Ah, it's underneath the ground, isn't it? Dang it! I hate this. I hate it when this game trolls you like that. Look, I can't even reach it through the ground. Oh, I got it through the ground. Brilliant. Lovely. Okay, right. I go dig up the chest. Where's the chest? There it is. Large chest. 31 years away. Let's just go get out and grab it. Oh, fudging heck. Sometimes it's easier just to go out, isn't it? And then go back down again. I'm forever topping up this freaking life support in this mode. I think the next time I get the ability to get myself a, a freaking X-Class module from a landed trader, I, I think I might get myself a, a life support module. Now I've lost the blinking chest. There it is. There we go, people. Oh, I just got given some samples from Ghostlight. Is he? Is he nearby? Okay, well I just got some as well. Heck yes. The ghost light must be right by me. Where is he? There he is! Hello mate! Aha! Brilliant! Thank you ghost light! If you haven't watched any of Ghostlight's videos, he's doing some awesome videos. Yeah, thank you. I d How the fudge did you find me? It's not like he joined my game or anything. He must have just flown here on his pigeon. This is mental. I guess. Boom! I have no idea how you got here. Yeah. Dancey, dancey. I guess. Brilliant, eh? Thank you very much for handing over your treasures to me. So yeah, we've got that, we've got this, we've got this, I've got all sorts. Oh, he's giving me sack venom as well. I wonder if he's got anything else to give me. Um, here you go, have that. And um, what else can I give you? Um, I don't have much else I can give you. Have that, I have no idea. Mainly because I've run out of space. I... <sighs> I got no space, mate. I got I got no space left. I uh, and um right. Uh, sorry, I didn't really have much I could give you in return. Um. Oh look, he gave me some mysterious meat stew. Thank you. I will eat that. Yum yum. <laughs> right eh? Uh, where are we going? So I need to get back to the hub, don't I? So hub 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 hub. That's my sh that's my normal base. Oh, there's somebody over there. There it is over there. 
There we go. So that's where we're going. Uh, here we go. And I need to get rid of my budgie. Oh, that, that, that. Fudge heck. Yeah, right. Get rid of my budgie. I already had him out, apparently. And right. Here we go. Let's go. I've got three hours flight, people. Yeah, well, that's good. Ghostlight came and found me. The only worrying thing about that, people, is there's other people out here right now that have got flying pets that are far better than mine and could catch me up as quickly as Ghostlight did. And they're not as friendly. They're not from my faction. They could kill me. Okay? Now, something that I've found when you're on these flying mounts is you can actually use your scanner like this. Now, I don't know whether that means I'm going to be able to spot the free star items on this planet, i.e. sac venom, while flying over the planet like this. I haven't done enough experimentation as yet, people. Or do the free stars show up when you do a scan like that? I don't actually know, people. So, yeah. It's, I've got to do a bit more experimentation. If I do find out a, a surefire way to find Sack Venom, I'll be sure to let you know. But yeah, I just got gifted some by good old Ghostlight, which was lovely of him. Thank you very much. That puts us on the scoreboards, at least on that stent. Thank you, Ghostlight. I guess. Okay. Let's do another little test. It still says three hours on the old clock, doesn't it? But I did just go and fly 15 minutes in the opposite direction to go to that relic site. Oh look, there's a load of oxygen there. Oxygen is a must. So I am stopping for oxygen if I see a massive clump like this, people. Because you do need it for swimming and you do need it while you're in survival mode. Massively need it in survival mode. More than anything else, you need oxygen. Yeah, I'm finding that is a little bit tedious. So I suppose you could just get yourself a load of life support gel if you go visit a galactic trade terminus. I think that's where I'll be investing some units at some point. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Look at all that lovely oxygen. Right, well, I still haven't heard from Yogi. I know he's got a lot going on in real life, so it could be that he's got waylaid with things, people. Oh, well. Well, I can get as close as possible. Look, it's gone down to two hours now. Okay. So we're getting closer. I guess we are. Oh, darn it. I'm going to despawn my bird. And ride. Ride, my pretty, ride. Okay, here we go. Two hours. All right. Cool. It's not going to be two hours. Uh, fudge, people. There's a massive storm that's just come in. And not only that, I seem to have hit the seaside. I don't know how, because as you know, I flew all this way before without encountering a massive swathe of ocean. And I think I'm going to go plop into this in a moment, and I'm going to have to end up swimming for hours and hours, and, like, literally hours. Come on, bird. Fly up high. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're in the water. Okay. Well, at least it's during a storm, but I've got miles to swim now, people. This is going to take me a month of freaking Sundays, isn't it? Ah, fudge. I bet you now that I'm not looking for that freaking large underwater creature, one swims right past me, because that's just the way things are inside of this game, isn't it? You know? I bet you. I bet you when I'm not looking for one, it just scutters past me. It, it, it's going to be a thing. Tell you what though, chums, all this swimming I've done, I've actually found out a better way to swim. So when you're under the water, here you go, just use your jetpack for about three seconds. One, two, three, then release. Then one, two, three, then release. One, two, three, then release. One, two, three, then release. Almost like you're swimming in real life. Do a bit of paddling and just let the inertia take you. Freaking works lovely. Look at that. See what I mean? And if you stay near to the surface, when your oxygen gets a little bit low, just breach the surface. Heck yeah. Yeah. That is probably something you guys already knew. But, you know, it's, it's, it's working for me. All this swimming sort of paid off. You just wait for it to go back up to the top, hold it back down again for a few seconds. You can even do it a little bit quicker than every three seconds if you want. 
But even still, this is a, it's a long freaking way to bloody swim. So, I don't know what went wrong there. But at least those giant fish haven't swim, swam past me yet. My bird keeps flying past me under the water. Which is kind of a bit of a tease, isn't it? Look at him. See, there he goes again. Little git. Yeah. Alright, fine. Yeah, okay, I get you. I get you can swim, freaking bird. Okay, right. Anyway, this is going to take me freaking time. So hopefully see you later, people. Well, chums, this keeps happening. Data Bean has requested to be your friend in No Man's Sky. There you go. I'm accepted. But last time he sent me an invite to join his game. And I nearly freaking drowned because I sunk to the bottom of the bloody water. So I quickly disabled that. Well, I didn't disable it because you can't disable friends' requests or, or invites to play. But yeah, fun times. Looks like I'm nearing land now, people. But this is taking me ages. I tried to get up there, but it wouldn't let me. I kept running out of jetpack fuel. Kept getting weird. But anyway, people, we're slowly getting there. I've been swimming all night. Look, the sun's coming up now. Fudging heck. Okay, back to my swimming method. Lovely. There we go. I'm on my way. Yes. Look at when you use your jetpack in water in survival mode. You see my little heart down there, my life support. When I press it, look. Uses free bars. Look how quickly that drains. Just for swimming. That's why you need a lot of oxygen. I'm glad I bought and picked up a stack of it on the way here, but it's all going to be gone by the time I get to this poxy island over here. And then there's probably more ocean at the other side. Holy fudge. Oh, ghost lights just left the system. But I'm nearly at this island now. It hasn't taken me like an hour. Okay, right, jumps. Yeah, there's another swathe of freaking ocean. Now, I did try getting some oxygen here by zapping those plants but you see that pesky sentinel over there kept telling me off little git okay right let's see how far i can get with my bird this is tedious okay come on birdie my bird bird he's feeling downhearted not as downhearted as me okay right let's let's do this fly like the wind no don't fly down oh fudge heck okay well, that was like a game of joust, wasn't it? Well, chums, it, it happened again. I freaking got another invite. And it sunk me. I'm, I'm swimming for freaking miles. And I think I might have just spotted another blinking plaque. Oh, no. Pirates have engaged me, people. Pirates have engaged me. Pirates have found me somehow. Hopefully they can't get me underwater. That would suck if they can. But it's not like I can fight them off or anything, is it? How the fudge did they spot me? I'm just swimming around, minding my own business. It's not like I can take them out either, you know? The only real way I know how to get rid of pirates is to put down a save point, save and reload. Kind of a bit cheaty, really, isn't it? Otherwise, they're going to kill me because there's no cover out in the ocean. Let's hit this up. Let's hope they don't get me while I'm interacting with this, eh? There we go. Oh, look, they're, they're coming round the back of the freaking thing. Okay. Oh, would you look at Seek that? Hey, I'm, I still haven't got across that lake. But look, it just dropped down to 57 minutes. So that's good. I guess it is. Well, kind of. Still feels like this lake has been going on for longer than the freaking sea at this rate. Come on. Get out. All right, we're just going to get out here. Then hopefully I can curveball round to where I need to go. I've just had enough of freaking swimming now to last me a freaking week. I tell you. Yeah, Hello Games could do with patching flying creatures to make it so they actually fly above water. God, that's tedious. Okay, right, here we go then. Here we are. Bird? So far, I would say that's probably my worst point of crossing the... I actually really enjoy using just mounts to get around. It's been quite blissful at times. However, what I would say is I need a better bird because this one's a bit squiffy, as I pointed out earlier, people. But we've still got... Hold on. Well, where's where's that where's that relic site gone? Oh, there it is. Whoa! I don't want to fly across water again. Ah, there's another plaque. 
All right, well, we'll hit that up as well. I'm finding loads of plaques just by flying around. Ow! Right, eh? Cool. I'm going to have loads of treasure to take back. Okay, here we go. Really, rather than go to... Oh, crud! Damn it! I learned a bloody word! Dang it! Damn! 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 I'm trying to skip the bloody text. Alright, I'm fine. Yeah, what I was going to say is I might as well go to my... I should have gone to back to my base to drop off all this stuff. Because if I do get killed, I don't know what happens to all of that. I think in survival mode you lose it all, don't you? Seven minutes to there. Yeah, we might as well go visit that plaque. How far away is my other base? Three hours. Yeah, that's not going to happen, is it? Should have gone back to my base first, just in case, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm really running the risk of losing it all. I would not be happy if I get zapped. Come on. Gently pat. I mean, even if those blinking pirates come back and attack me while I'm on my bird, I'm in trouble, aren't I? Okay, let's try and fly around this, shall we? Rather than over it, because I'm just going to go back into the drink again. Lovely. Swooping low, crush the oceans deep. We're walking in the air. We're flying through the mountain stream. The people down below, they watch us as we go. Tweet, tweet. I guess. Destination reached. Lovely jubbly. Let's dig up the keys. Let's get the chest. I'll show you what I find. Okay, got another friend's request. There you go. Thank you very much. Okay, right. The only thing is they also send you invites to join them and play and stuff. And Yeah. Oh, while I'm trying to make a video, probably not the best thing. And that's that's kind of all I do. But they're probably going to want to drop drop off loot as well, aren't they? But I need to be back at my base, really, before they attempt to do that. If they come and try and find me here, they could just be finding themselves in a lot of trouble that they can't get out of. That's my worry as well, you know. I'm a team leader, but I'm also doing the missions. On Fridays is where I'm just going to stay at my base. Okay, On a Friday, I'm not going to do no missions. I'm just going to let people come to me and hand things in. So if you've got a load of treasure, or if you've got a load of sack venom, and you need to come give it to me, on a Friday I will be at my base. Hopefully you've built your base near to mine, so you can drop all this stuff off. Alright, okay. Um, right. We're near to the hub now. 43 minutes away. Let's uh, get my bird, and let's go there. You know what, the next time we reconvene, if I don't come across something super awesome, we're just going to be there. This is a long episode. Ooh wee jumps. Um I've just realised I'm out of the good old hazardy protection stuff, so I've just flying over a hollow terminus. I jumped in here. I am pretty low on sodium nitrate now. So any storms that hit me, I'm pretty much a done for. Um I didn't realise how low I was getting. So this has really put me in a strange sticky situation. So let's leg it out. Oh good, the storm has stopped now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run over here. Hit up this. That's going to give me some navigational data. And check these boxes. See if I get given something. Like an ion battery. Which would be lovely if I do. I've got navigational data. I've got some nanites out of the box. There's a little bit of sodium there. It's not quite enough though, is it? For going on an adventure. Ah, there's some oxygen right there. Oh no, I used the train manipulator! Like a freaking tool. Okay, was that the beacon that I put down earlier? How random is that? Did I just do that by accident? I don't know. Anyway, head on over here. Because there's this beacon here, I can call my ship in. Okay, so we are. Call my ship. At least I can bring the ship that little bit closer. And I can jump in and out of it. Now what I want to be able to do is craft some launch thruster fuel if I possibly can. Just so I can use this as a portable sort of 
base. So I need some metal plating for that. Okay, right. Oh, for fudge sake, just give me the metal plating. There we are. Is that all the metal plating I can actually build? You having a laugh? Have I not got loads and loads of ferrite dust? No, I haven't got loads and loads of ferrite dust. Dang it! Okay, right. It looks like I'm going to be stopping myself here for a little while. So I need to make a little bit of room now. I've got too much treasure. I should have gone to my freaking base on the way back, shouldn't I? Okay, right. Let's stick that in there. Let's spin that into nanites. Lovely. That's that's freed up a slot. Just one. Ah! I should have done the living slime as well. Let's do the living slime. Living slime, where are you? There you are. It goes into runaway mould. And then that's going to go into nanites. That's going to take a little while. Why that's going though, I should zap some rocks. And uh, we, we get some ferrite. That's some pure ferrite there. Okay, well we need to make a load of metal plating. Because basically, I haven't got enough to make myself any ion batteries. I could go into a cave and get a load of um, cobalt. Actually, can I... I've got some cobalt on me. Have I got enough to make myself a couple of these things? Where are they? Ion, ion batteries, where are you? That's not you. There you go. Oh, I can make a couple, can I? There we are. I can make a shed load of them. That'd do. I've got 14 of them. That should be enough for the rest of my journey. Okay, right. Okay, well, at least I could make some more launch thruster fuel, just in case I get seriously stuck. Yeah, okay, well, that's going to take a little while, anyway. Alright. Uh, can I create... Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't get enough ferrite dust. Alright, well, I'm just going to zap a few rocks, and I'll be right back with you in a bit, people. I must scan these. Oh yeah, scan that. Lovely. Oh, I'm getting some sodium from shooting these rocks. It's hard to spot these rocks in this undergrowth. Take that, crystals. I get some oxygen from zapping him. All right. Well, I, I think you know the the drill of zapping basics, anyway, don't you? You know. What about you? Can I get some... No, it's pure ferrite. I don't know whether that's that's going to work for metal plating, is it? Well, you know what, chums? It's getting quite late here in the UK. I've still got this spinning up. And um, I'm going to wait for that to finish, but I think I'm going to be calling this an evening now. I've still got a little way to go, but Miyogi hasn't logged in. The only thing is, I I'm actually working in the office for the next two days. Oh, shite! Get in my ship! Okay, right. I think I'm going to be logging off now. I'm going to create a save. I'm going to get back in my ship as quick as I can before I die. And I'm going to log off right now. All right. Cool. There we go. And quit to mode select. Yes, I'm okay with that. Fudge and hack. So you definitely don't want that to happen. The only reason I was allowed to quit out then is basically because I'm at a resting point And I was about to log off anyway. Otherwise, if you're out in the open and you're, you get attacked by pirates... You can pretty much guarantee you're going to die. Burrow underground. You should train manipulator. Go underground and go deep. Yeah, hopefully they won't be able to zap you and just wait for them to do one. If you've got a portable save point with you, once you get underground and you've tunneled and you're in a point of safety, make a save point. Then you should be allowed to reload. You know, you can't just reload or quit out if you're about to die. Basically, you have to be at a base or undercover or somewhere where they can't get you. I could have gone into one of those little caravans at that little point. Anyway, I could have been safe anyhow. And I'd already called my ship in so I can take refuge in that. Anyway, people, have a good one. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again. Well, how do there, chums? Did I, Captain of the Steeds? And I've just logged into No Man's Sky on my legacy save. I'm going to hatch a couple of eggs. Well, I'm not going to hatch a couple. I'm going to lay a couple of eggs. Well, I'm not. My, my pets are. Let's just jump over into game because it's getting messy. Right, okay, so here we go. Let's, hope, let's bring in one of my pets. There we go. Bring in a budgie. So this is my legacy save, and all I'm doing is getting them to induce some eggs. There you are. And then I'm going to go and deliver these to a couple of people at random because I'm just feeling in a very kind mood, you know what I mean? So let's call in this one. Gently pet. 
And I tend to do this, I try to do it every day if I can. One injury's egg. Grab this one. Bam, ba dam, bam, bam. Oh, this one's a little bit smaller, but he's still quite good. Uh, give him a treat. Injury's egg. And I think I've got one more flyer, haven't I? Not in that one. Not in that one. Yes, this one. To rock. He's pretty darn cool, this guy. There we go. Right, so now I've got the eggs. Now I need to go and find people. Right, so network. Network options. Da -da 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 -da. View nearby players list. And I can't see James MC. He's not there. Okay. Right, so... Now he's supposedly Perrymon. But I, I can't actually join him. Okay, so let's go to network. Uh, let's have a look at friends list. Let's see if we can find Pyrimon on here. Pyrimon, Pyrimon, Pyrimon. It could take me a little while to find him. But yeah, I did promise him I'd give him an egg. But he's not showing up. So I thought I'd record this just to show him how difficult it is if you're on cross-platform to give them out. I'm not seeing them there. It's in alphabetical order. So he should have appeared there. Let's try over here. Pyrimon, LMN. He's not there. He's not there. Dang it. Okay, well, I, I can't give one to James MC. What I would say to James MC, if you're watching, sir... Uh, I, I, actually, I, I, give him a, I can give him a call. I've got him on the old DMs. Okay, well, someone just sent me a game invite to go play with them. So I've got a yellow marker. So I'm just going to fly on over to this yellow marker person who just hit me up and asked to play with me. And I'll go give them an egg quickly. Yeah. So where are they? They're quite a distance. Hopefully, James MC will just appear. We'll have a look. So flying over here this way. If he doesn't, though, James MC, what I would say is you might just have to hit up Miyogi's Shack because multiplayer in No Man's Sky, as you know, isn't the best. And I can't see you. Um, and you're not appearing on the main title screen. Um, it really... Yeah. I have to select anybody so anyone can come join you, really. I'll go give him an egg. Wait, hold still. Hold still. Hold on. Wait there, wait there. And you can have this one. There you go. Right, now I've got to try and find James MC. So let's see if I can find him. Won't be a minute, people. Okay, right, well, I'm in. And I should be able to see you somewhere, I would imagine. Oh, I'm back at my base. Where about are you? Ah, oh, you're over this way. 800 odd use that way. Okay, cool. I'm on my way. I'll just use the ship to get to you. Sweet. Sweet. Okay, well here I go. I'm about to land on you. <laughs> right, here we go. And do you want a dragon or do you want a bird? Okay. Well, there you go. There's a there's a griffin then. He's quite small. If you want a bigger one than that, Miyogi's doing some. But yeah, he's not too bad. Oh, here he goes. Here's another one. So you've got a choice of two birds there. I'll tell you what. I'll give you another one. And if you come across somebody else in the hub while you're online, just give it to them, I suppose. Sweet. Cool. Nice one. All right, enjoy. No worries, mate. It might take 24 hours for one to hatch. So, yeah. cool. All right, buddy. See you later. There we go, people. So I just gave out my eggs. Lovely jubbly. And um, now I'm going to log in and go pick up an egg from Miyogi. So here we go. Let's go join Miyogi. 
and I'm right near him anyway with my actual creative save but I haven't got long I can't stay on long so I just need to go pick up an egg from Yogi so I'm just going to hit this one up this is my actual proper save for the event and uh, yeah I actually saved off not so far from where Miyogi actually is it's probably about an extra what 30 minutes sort of flight on my creature it was virtually there last episode people and you would have seen the fun and games that I had getting there. I had to swim for freaking a days and a half. I don't know why I've got a view counter of two there right now. It's not like I'm live or anything. Oh, I've got two people viewing. What the fudge is that all about? Okay, right. So, ah, I'm still miles away from Yogi. I have to actually get to him by, um, you know, using my creature. So where's Yogi now? He's that blue marker all the way... Oh, okay. Oh, great. And there's a yellow marker there now as well. Okay, right. So I need to call in my budgie. Yeah, I haven't got the awesome flyers on this one. I've just got these ones. Let's go. Gently pat. Give him a treat. Let's ride. Let's hopefully get to Miyogi then. So this could take me a little while to get to him. There we are. Flying over yonder. On my way now. It could take me a while to get to him still. I think it's going to take me 30 minutes to get to him. I've still got my PvP on on this save as well. So this could be fun as well. Because there's going to be other people from other factions going to get these from Miyogi. Um, how long is it to Miyogi? Let's have a look. I don't know whether I am heading towards Miyogi now. It says three hours. That can't be right. Well, where's Miyogi's marker? Oh, he is over there, apparently. I mean, I, I haven't got time to do this now. Right. My dinner's been ready long ago. It's going to take me half an hour to get to him. This is insane. Okay, right. There we go. Now, it does make me wonder whether this is going to be the case when we get light, no fire. I'm just going to let my bird fly. I'm going to just give Miyogi a quick call now. So we are. Where's Miyogi? Miyogi, Miyogi. There he is. Call back. Right, let's call him Miyogi. Yeah, there, Miyogi. Hi, actually, I am all undisturbed. Yeah, I've just finished a new pet off fighting. Cool. I'm on my way. The only thing is, I've got to abide by the rules, so I'm flying oh, to right. you, and it's going to take yeah. me a while. I, I, I'm riding and flying to you as well, uh, so I'm abiding by the rules. Are oh, you flying to me? In yeah, your I'm ship? No, in, I mean new dragons. Oh, okay. Well, you you can you're I, I I think because you're not part of any faction, you can kind yeah. of just fly in your ship if you wanted to. So that that would kind of help, yes. I suppose. I don't, want, I don't want to break any rules. I'm flying in my dragons at the moment. I've actually got my new mount for you as well. I've got a horse for you. Okay. So All right. Shall I just stop yeah. where I am then? Because my 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 creature's wonky. Alright, why did you come to uh, this uh, where I'm with the uh, angel? Uh, anti okay, body? that's what I was doing. I just jumped off my bird. Okay. One second, I'll call it back in again. And I'll, I'll come to you then, so I can see your base, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah well, I said I need to get up to my base. I'm a distance away. I flew from a dragon to, uh, to the angel one's location because you disappeared. Oh, right, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, it did, it did show you it was like 15 minutes away, and then it's just jumped to three hours. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna quit out and go and have my dinner, and um, we'll do this yeah. another night because I'm starving. Yeah, you can. I mean, you can do this anytime you want to today. I don't want to be giving anything away to unless it's within the rules and the limits of everything. Okay. All right, mate. Cool, yeah. I I do. We'll do this another time. Yeah. I'm I'm actually working from home tomorrow, so we'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Okay, sir. Cool. No problem, All right. Bye, mate. Bye, bye, bye. Cool. There you go, people. So it's quite tricky to stick to the rules on this, especially when there's time. I mean, Miyogi's flying around on dragons, so he just flew the opposite direction from me for freaking time. Yeah, he's flown away from me, basically. Um, so yeah, that didn't go too swimmingly. But anyway, I've saved my game, and I, I, I'll reconvene with him tomorrow. But there you go. At least you got to see me giving out some pet eggs, people, to the actual viewerverse, or to anyone, really. And hopefully, James MC's got a couple of my eggs that he can distribute now. Till next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. 
Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Gamton of the Steves, and I'm back in Light No Sky. Yeah, and I'm heading towards the hub. So the hub is over there. Last episode, I head away from the hub to go see Miyogi, but I know his base is near the hub. He flew up to go and give an egg to somebody else. So it's kind of put me slightly off kilter of where I need to be. So let's just ride my pet and let's fly onto yonder hill and let's head on over to the hub. So that's where I'm heading. Let's go. Fly like the wind, my little bird, I guess. Right, hey people, and you can see there, my red beacon has just popped up. I just saw a freaking drop pod. Okay. All right, anyway, I'll let you know if well, anything chums, interesting. I came across another plaque. So I can't miss that opportunity to get myself a relic. Hopefully I'd select the right option. Oh, looks like I've already visited this one. Dang it! Okay, right, bird. Okay, budget. <laughs> or somebody else has, you know. Done. Okay, go on, bird. Let's go. Yeah. Take to the sky. Okay, chums. Well, I've made it to my base, which is the hub, and I'm going to be using the teleporter to go up to the old station. And I'm going to create a little mini save here and stuff like that. Now, it can be a little bit tricky to get up to this hub because it's quite high up. So let's just hope that my pigeon gets me up there. Yeah. Otherwise, you've got to go around sort of this way and then fly up. There we go. And. Ciao. Oh no, I've missed the opportunity to get up there. Oh no, and I'm going to break my legs. I'm going to hurt myself massively. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Alright, there we go. Yeah, because this is a little bit of a... I didn't really think this through when um, I actually did this originally, people. So here we go. Ground impact nearly killed me. This is why I need a better flying creature. Because that f creature's a little bit cack, to be honest. Right, there we go. Got my shield back. Let's try that again. Oh, come on. I don't want to be messing around here too much, you know? Because, yeah, it is like survival mode. And I could get killed-ocated. Yeah, I didn't think this through, did I, too much? You know, the, the whole getting up there is nail on impossible for um, this little pigeon. Maybe I need to build another little site-to-site -site teleporter around here, people, to get ourselves up there, eh? And there we go. I've got a bit higher this time, but I don't want to risk breaking my freaking legs again if I can help it. Let's see if we can fly against the side of it and see if it just goes up. Nope, he's chose to go down. Come on, go up. Go up. Go up. Go up, damn you. Creature. Come on. Oh, great. Now I'm sort of stuck on the underside. Come on. Come on. You know you want to. Get me up there. Come on. Dang it. No, it's not going to work. Right. Okay. Well, leave this with me, people. I might have to put a little sight to sight teleporter. Didn't actually think about this when I put it okay, there. Well, where I just left off, I decided to just freaking dig upwards. Um, so, yeah. I've, I've made a little tunnel going all the way up to the base, hopefully. But you know what? I might have to put something there for those of you that... Oh, no! Uh, I thought I'd managed to tunnel all the way up. I didn't. Okay, well, that, that plan went awry, didn't it? Let's try again. Now, it's probably letting me do this because I own the base. So if you just walk around the hilt of it for a while, hopefully you're going to find this tunnel up here. But yeah, that, that, that was fun. I mean, you might be able to dig your own tunnel, but... Fudging heck. Okay, where's my base then? It's somewhere up here. It's supposed... Oh, there it is! Yay me! I've made it, people. I've made it. Okay, I might have to build a little mini site-to-site -site teleporter just so you can get up here. Coolio. And there we are. We've arrived. Oh, now my bird flies past like it's easy. Here we go. Grab the oxygen. Right now. And let's teleport up, shall we? 
Ah, I need to power it. So let's go over here then. Put in some biofuel. Don't know why all the text is all messed up there. There we are. Now I can teleport up here. Zoom. Jump up here. Like so. And then I've got to wait for my jetpack to recharge. So I can get up there. Okay. Kapow! And we're there. Lovely jubbly. Okay. Now I can use this to go to the station inside of this system. Oh, would you look at that? There's a load of bases here. I didn't think you could teleport to a base if it didn't have a teleporter. Does that mean that... I mean, I know that I haven't got a teleporter at my own base. But does that mean we can just teleport to anybody's bases whenever we want? Daniel Hipley has got a freaking sack venom farm. That's not good! Okay, let's have a look what else we got down here. I'd have to do base tours at some stage, people, won't I? Take a look, see, see what everybody's done. Interesting. The Empire. Ah, the Creola Kingdom. Professor Syndical's base there. Yeah, so it does look like when you get to this terminus, you can just pretty much go to any base you want, peeps, which is pretty cool. Oh, there's uh, James MC's base there. Anyway, I, be I better just get up to the blinking portal, better now. There we go. Space stations. And it's this one. Current system, hopefully. Should be this one. This should be it. The Corvac system. Scientific, peaceful, five planets. That's not this station. Dang it. It hasn't locked in this station. I don't suppose it matters which station you go to as long as you teleport back to a base on this planet, even if it's your own one or this hub one. Okay, I might have to walk back to my own one going to this one. Dang it. That's probably because I didn't put boots on the ground in the station in this system. Uh, I put it in the, the system that I jumped to from the portal to get to this system, didn't I? Okay, fun times. Right, hey, well, I've arrived, Decated. So there's a few things that I can do here, but the main thing that you do here is talk to the actual cartography maps guy and exchange nanites for maps. So, um, so I think it's navigational data you have to swap for maps. I can't, I can't actually remember. If I go to Discoveries, let's upload everything. There we go. I've got a load of nanites there. But if I go to the system that I was in, this one here, go to the planet that I was on, I've also discovered all creatures, so I can hold to register that, and I'm going to get a load of nanites. I've now got 3,000 nanites, which is a lot of nanites. Let's see if you can use nanites to buy cartography maps, or whether it is navigational data. Aha, 15 man nanites there, but you can go here, and yeah, you need to use navigational data to swap for these. So as you're going over, um, you know, planets and things try and find yourself some navigational data now i could get more treasure if i wanted and get relic sites or i could go for this to get you know some more exosuit upgrade charts but i need free to, for that one and again the artifact one I need free for that too so yeah I, I didn't plan that out too well. Technically, I should have been picking up navigational data as I've been flying past structures on planet surface. Now, inside of the actual station, you can find navigational data. Like, there's one there. Look, there we are. But sometimes it just gives you nanites, not navigational data, that it says that it's got in it. So that can be fun. Cool. And sometimes there's server racks that you can interact with up here and things like that. Or um, something you can interact with to get yourself some more nanites. I don't think we're allowed to use the the old uh, multi-tools you find in the station. Yeah, I'm not having much luck with finding navigational data up here. I should have got more navigational data from the actual planet. Okay, right. It looks like Miyogi has entered the system. So if I use the teleporter, hopefully I can go to Miyogi's base now. I hope. He's just appeared, just as I... I needed him to be there, but... Yeah. Okay, right. Um, your bases, all bases. I wonder if I can see Miyogi's. Let's if, hit other bases. Can I see Miyogi's base inside of here? Let's have a look. He's in my group, so I'd like to hope that I can. Man of God. No, Pete. No, 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 no. 
be nice if you could hit up group members, you know? Vintage, oh, some brew crew. Ah, he's here. Oh, hello. Hello, Miyogi. Cool, I did want to come and see your base, mate. You're looking slightly bigger than normal. Ah, I don't, I don't know whether I've got enough... Well, I have got enough room for him to drop me off something, I think. Uh, there's not much I want to get rid of right now. I'll eat these. Okay. Well, it looks like he's going to go to his base from here. And then hopefully I can go join him at his base. I'll tell you what, I'll okay, see you people. I well, I got thrown out of the game. Um, so I'm just going to log back in and see if I can join Miyogi from the main title screen. So there we go. Join friends. Miyogi, Miyogi, Miyogi. There he is, right there. Oh, Professor Cynical's in. Oh dear. He might try and kill us. Luckily, he's showing in normal mode, so maybe he's not on the hunt at the moment. But this oh, is... Hello? Are you all right, Miyagi? Hello, sir. You okay, buddy? I'm just trying to join in. I'm trying to connect in, but it looks like matchmaking services are playing up a bit. It just keeps saying connecting, connecting. Yeah. And I know you've got things to do. I've got it. You know, I've got work that I've got to press on with. So maybe we're not going to get to do this. And also, you're not at your base, are you? Base now. I'm there within. I'm actually only thirty seconds away from your your house. Um, uh, on your base is right situated near, but not too far away. It's on a plateau over a lake. Oh, okie dokie. Right, enabled, enabled. Yeah, multiplayer is enabled. It's not letting me join you at the moment. I might just have to go into my save and try and get over to you. But I've got to fly to you on my pterodactylian. And I don't know where it's last saved because I was in the station at the time doing a few bits by going through the hub when we convened earlier. I don't know where it's going to stick me back up in the station. All right. OK, uh, I'll see. I'll see OK, Jones. Well, it appears Miyogi's base hasn't actually rendered in. Now, Miyogi not being aligned to any faction and Miyogi just being the master of pets has come to me in his living organic ship. Hello there, matey. Have you got a lovely pet for me, Miyogi? Gonna strip off and get more kind of natural. <laughs> cool. Yeah, well, there's, this is my, that's my look inside of this. I look like a crazed grasshopper, don't I? Oh, so! <laughs> Aha, grasshopper, son. Yes. Would you be able to, did you, did you bring an egg? I, I didn't see it pop up on screen that you've transferred an egg, no? I'm a bit nervous because Professor Cynical's actually in game right now. If you go to network and you go to view nearby player list, there he is, right there. He's, that, that, he could come and get us any second now. So hopefully, Miyogi's got a pet. He can give me the egg and I can get the fudge out of Dodge. Go back to my own base. Uh, just tell me what you've got. Got one. I got one. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah, hatch egg. It says it's going to take another seven minutes to hatch, so I can't hatch it just yet. So what I could try and do is use the teleporters that are at these bases, because this is the hub, to teleport me back to my own base. Oh, he's gave me another one. Thank you, Miyagi. What's going on there? I've got two eggs. Three eggs! Holy fudge! I've created tons of creatures. Oh, okay. okay. Cool, yeah, thank you. It took me about uh, 12, 10, 12 hours yesterday to do them all. Oh, nice one, Miyagi. Well, thank you very much, mate. This is awesome. So, amongst these, there's a flying one, yeah, and there's. Because they. Oh, they, oh there we go. Miyogi LNF Bird. Nice. LNF Bird and LNF Dragon. And I think I've run out of space now because people have been giving me treasures and things. Let's just get rid of the Mordite. Oh, and there's another egg that's just come over. It's another... Okay. I haven't got a lot of storage. I'll get rid of my fireworks. Here we go. Don't need oh. them. There we are. All the pride. And we should have a Beaky. Uh, LNF Beaky. Uh, LNF Dragon. LNF Bird. And LNF Mount. Oh, nice. Okay. So there's a mount amongst these. Bird... Bird, bird. Oh, there's a mount. Yes, mount two. Okay, cool. And that's like a, it's like a um, horse, is it? 
looking like the uh, the like no fire horses. Oh, and those thank you. It's over the ground. Sweet. Okay, right. Well, I better get back to my base. Thank you very much for these, Miyogi. I will do a hatching once I get back to my base and after the seven minutes pass. But thank you very much for joining us. I can't see your base marker anywhere, mate. It's it's weird, isn't it? This is. I mean, just. For the audience, because I haven't seen it, that's your mount. Oh, uh, oh wow, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh wow, that is very horse-like. Well done, Miyogi. It needs recolouring, but there you go with um, with your uh, your mounts, and this goes like the rocket. Cool. One dragon, and then you've got to obviously go, and I've got to go. So, bye, right, so. mate. Cool. Well, thank you, buddy. And uh, thank you again, mate. I'm going to try and get up to this. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is that the bird that you've given me? Jesus. He's massive. Wow. He goes right into the sky. He does. Very cool. Did I activate this one? No, I haven't activated that one. It must be this one that I've activated. I've got two bases here. One because I built it on my legacy save. And the other one I built it on on this save. So... I was worried that if I died and disappeared, the base would disappear. So I built two of them, <laughs> just to make sure that people can see them. Yeah, here we go. Because this is the only base that should have a teleporter in the system. Okay. All right, here we go. And here's my teleporter terminus. And I'm just going to jump back to my own base. Yeah, golly oh, safety. Lovely. Zoom. Okay, people. So basically, I need to get a load more navigational data to get maps. It's not nanites that you buy maps with. I mean, you can buy random maps at 15, 15 nanites a throw. So I could have bought a load of random ones, I suppose, couldn't I? That could have been an idea. Anyway, thank you very much, Miyogi. Pleasure as well, mine. And if you need any modifications to them, let me know. Cool. Okay, dokie. Okay. Well, I will uh, wait until they're ready to hatch and I'm going to showcase them. But thank you for your time this morning, mate. Much appreciated. Cheers, yeah. buddy. Yeah. Bye bye. Is, uh, okay, bye -bye. chums. Well, a good few minutes have passed. So now I need to understand which pets I want to keep, which pets I don't. So let's go into my old menu over here. And let's start getting rid of some of these pets, shall we? Let's go into here. And I don't really want him anymore, so goodbye. Don't really want this guy, even though he was quite cool. And this guy may as well go as well. I mean, his stats were pretty darn freaking great. He just kept dive-bombing the ground all the time. And that wasn't the best. So there we go. We've got rid of him as well. So we've got some pets from Yogi. So let's have a look at the actual mount first, shall we? Let's have this one. Egg is still developing. I've got another eight hours. Dang it. Okay. Well, some of these are ready. The mount isn't. So, here we go. That one says it's very large. That one says very large as well. I think a lot of these birds are very large. Okay. Well, we'll go for one of these. I think all these are exactly the same. All these birds, I think, might be the same. Sadly, the mic that Miyogi was on, I couldn't really hear him all that well. Okay, here we go. And let's just put it there then, I guess. Oh, Jesus Christ. Look at the size of this egg. Okay, all right. Holy mackerel. Well, that is big, isn't it? Let's give it some... There we are. Let's have a little ride on this thing. Now, I'm not actually doing any sort of quest at the moment. So I don't really overly want to be in PvP. So let's just get on the bird anyway. Go into options, I go into networking, and I'm just going to put this into no one at the moment for PvP. And yeah, that'd do. I'm not bothered about the game mode at the moment too much. Because I was just testing this bird out. You can barely see me on this thing. Oh, this is freaking mental. Okay, now the only problem with how high up I am on this bird... Is I can't actually see what's on the ground. It's like, but I can see for freaking miles. So it might be better for spotting buildings, but for doing little mini 
sort of like excursions, maybe looking for sack venom. I might struggle to see the sack venom up on this bird. Wow, though, this is cool. All right, how far does he fly? Fast does he fly? I think my small bird flew faster than this one. Unusual, if that is the case. Okay, well, I'm seeing a load of star bramble down there. I'm not really seeing any sack venom. Because I am extremely high at the moment. Yeah, I think my old bird was actually faster. How bizarre. How odd. All right, well, you know, Miyogi did say he might be able to sort of tweak things and stuff like that. But yeah, I think my old my old bird was definitely quicker than this one. But that's pretty darn sweet, isn't it? Lovely jubbly. I know that the birds that I have previously from Miyogi fly a lot faster than that one. Oh my god, and look how high up from the ground I am. I have to turn my air burst very, very timely or else I'm dead. Fooey. Okay, that takes a bit of skill. And as you can see there, I still broke my legs. Yeah, I think, Miyogi, that bird might be slightly too large. And I've, I've just lost my jetpack abilities now. I'm going to have to find the materials to fix that. Darn it. Okay, it's just ferrite dust. That's fine. Okay, cool though. Very cool bird. Uh, I could give out these to people if they come and visit me to drop stuff off today. I'll give them out anyway, but it, it could be that we might need to get another rendition of the bird. But uh, I know how long Miyogi spent on making this bird, so it's a tricky one. It's cool! Don't get me wrong, it's a freaking awesome bird. But uh, yeah, maybe a little too big. Yeah. Anyways, let's head into here then. Lovely job, eh? Chickaboom. I'll just uh, sit here. Let people drop stuff off to me today, I think, people. Okay, John, something to mention is we've got the portal code in the bottom left-hand corner there if you aren't already here. It's not too late to join. You can still come and join, people. So, yeah, come on jumping over and join the Captain Steve's Brew Crew. Now, if you do have difficulty in finding me and finding my base, because this, this this whole planet is just covered in bases right now, people, um, you can join me by using my friend's code. So I'll show you my friend's code right now. So here we go. And you just go to show no man's friend's code. There it is on screen right there, people. Another way of getting my no man's sky friend's code and a good way of making lots of friends on here is to have the No Man's Sky app installed, people. So the No Man's Sky app is available on all mobile devices, Chikapow, and all you do is you just go to friends, friend codes, okay? And the very first on the list is Captain Steve. You can probably see that right there. And you can just, you know, show that. There it is there, and big at the bottom, I guess. Lovely jubbly. Awesome, eh? Fantastic app. Put your friends codes on there. It's a brilliant app really is can't rate it enough and the guy that makes it kurt kurt you're a freaking star you're a legend mate you freaking are okay coolio so that's that's pretty much that anyway because based in the options i put can join my group friends only and the reason i've done that and not put it to anyone is because I don't want somebody that hasn't seen any of these videos, don't know who I am, that's just fired up the game, joining the instance, coming to this planet, not knowing the rules and building some monstrosity. You know, so that's why I've got it as friends only. So to join me in the easiest way, you're going to have to use my friends code. The only trouble is, Hello Games have changed matchmaking somewhat, and they've made it now that I also need to have your friends code inputted and there's not much way of you getting your friend's code over to me. On PlayStation, I think it just lets you connect. But when it comes to cross-platform, it doesn't seem to connect all too easily anymore, people. Inside of the Viewerverse, it doesn't. So if you are trying to get your way to my base, and you can't find me, you might have to go from the manual coordinates, which are on the screen right now, and I'm in the way of. So let me just um, remove myself for a bit. That's the actual coordinates right there, people. So it's a plus... 6.37 and a minus 146.59 okay coolio 
Hopefully you can find me using those coordinates. But yeah, there's other bases around me. There's quite a lot of bases around me. So if you can't see my base, you might be able to see some of the others that are in nearby vicinity. Like there you go, Myongs. There's also Sonos's, which is at the top of the hill. It's got a massive staircase going up to it. So you're not going to miss that one too, too easily. You know, There's a couple in very close proximity to me. Like that one there. That's really close. And that's Dread Fort of Doom. I'm going to have to do some base tours of these soon, people, because some of these names are freaking groovy. Yeah, now, because there's quite a lot of bases that are already here, I am having to update, upload my base every couple of days just to keep it relevant inside of the list. Inside of PlayStation, for whatever reason, it only shows the last, like, what, 14 to 20 bases that have been updated. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a bit of novelty, that one, people. Anyway, that's everything. I'll see you in a sec. So, people, the first person in the game was Spotted Badger. And, um, yeah, I was just about to log off and uh, do my own thing. And, yeah, he, he visited, so I gave him an egg. There we go. So, there we are. That's the first person that's come. However, I don't think he dropped me off anything. I'm not seeing any additional treasures in here or anything. Let's go check the old large refiners. Let's see if he's he's deposited anything. Nothing in the large refiners? No. Okay. Nothing there. Okay, fine. Well, um, yeah, I'll just uh, sit back here and work out what's going on. Now, what I can do is I can go into here. I go into networking. What I do is I turn on speech to text translate speech and voice chat enabled there you go i'll put those on for a sec thank you very much spotted badger hopefully it's going to appear on the side of the screen over there it should anyway hmm it hasn't dang it all right let's try that again network okay enabled enabled yeah, I've got everything enabled that should be. Voice chat is enabled. That should work. Okay, don't know why the voice interaction things aren't working. There's a lot of things inside of this game that are fairly broken. So Spotted Badger is probably wondering why I'm not sort of going on an adventure with him right now. Well, I'm just going to sit here and go back to being idle for a bit. I mean, I haven't put this video live yet, so there's that. Well, I'll just sit there then, and uh, just take a little hankering here. I just saw another another person zoom past. That wasn't Badger, was it? Oh, look, we've got another person right here. Let's go see this chap. Who's this? Oh, it is Spotted Badger. Yeah. Okay, right, fine. Go away, Spotted Badger. I'm good. Um, I, I need to just sit and wait for people to come and drop stuff off today. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, you got yourself a free bird anyway. There you go, I'm just going to sit here now and wait. I, you may have noticed, people, that outside of that window, I've actually put a marker. Well, there was a marker when I wasn't in camera mode. Look, the, the landed pilot is still there. If it's still there the next time I log in, something seriously has gone wrong with my trader. And I might not be able to get any X-Class modules, because I think only one trader lands at a time inside of a save. So if that doesn't clear itself, my save might be scuppered. I might not be able to get any more X-Class modules. I might not be ready for combat anytime soon, which could mean that that's really foobard things for me. But there we go, people. It is what it is, isn't it? There's a lot of bugs. I'm going to be doing a video just on bugs that I've come across inside of this whole sort of event. There's lessons to be learnt by myself, Ricey, and also Professor Cynical. But there's also lessons to be learnt, I think, from this, from Hello Games, and perhaps for Light No Fire, as well as No Man's Sky. I'll have to put something on my community tab, put something on Discord, let people know that I'm I'm logged in so people can drop stuff off. There we go. I'll just uh, leave it like that. You know what? I'm not going to just leave it like that. I am going to change my difficulty to normal, just in case, because you never know what somebody's capable of. They might be able to murder me while I sit on my bedroll, mightn't they? So there we go. 
that's where I'm going to be sitting all day today. People, come and drop stuff off to me. Ah, I need to drop off my own stuff, thinking about it, because I haven't got much space. So let's uh, let's put all my treasures into my storage vault. Here we go. Put all of those into there. And we've got quite a lot of treasures. I mean, I could go get some more treasures, but to, I need to find a lot more relic sites and things, don't I? There we go. I think that's about good now. I should have sold that while I was up in the station. That would have given me an extra slot and would have given me some more nanites. And I could have just bought a load of random maps. So if you've got navigational data, you can actually choose the map that you want. If you've got nanites, you can buy random maps. And I should have bought some random maps while I was up there. I should have spent some nanites. But I was thinking of keeping hold of these so I can come across a trader on planet and hopefully buy some more modules to upgrade my multi-tool or even my exosuit to make myself a little bit more capable of looking after myself. Ah, I didn't take the sodium out of my... I left my portable refiner on the go, didn't I? All the way over. Oh, dang. I still need to get some sodium nitrate, so I've got some sodium there, but not a lot. All right, well, I'm just going foraging for some sodium around by my base, and it's not really... Well, it is kind of a quest, isn't it? Because I'm looking for sodium. Ah, hold on. Looks like there's a trader that's just landed. Right behind my back. Let me get to the trader. Ah! Where is he? Where? Where? I can see the marker for the trader. I can't see the trader's ship anywhere, though. Is there a trader somewhere around here, an invisible trader? Well, that's just freaking weird, isn't it? It's, it's showing a marker for a trader, but I don't see the trader there. Oh, look. 28 U's. Well, where is he, then? I don't see him. Well, that's broken, isn't it? Yeah, I'm running around just holding on to square just in case I can interact with this invisible trader. But no, I can't see him. How freaking odd is that? Well, hopefully that's not glitched or else I'd never see another trader ever again, probably. Alright, anyway, let's swap game mode then. Because I'm going on a little mini hunt around for some sodium now, people. Sodium. There's some over there. Let's go grab that. Up a chow! Look at that giant staircase going up there. I think that's Santos's base at the top. It is. Whoa, you fudging heck, you made me jump. Okay, yeah, right. Heading over this way. Aya! Sodium. Nice. And we've got two plants. The only trouble is, in survival mode, you don't get as much. But because this is part of the quests to make the hazmat gauntlets, I have to be in survival mode. And technically, I need to put on freaking PvP as well, don't I? It's a shame that when you toggle one, it doesn't toggle the freaking other one, you know what I mean? That'd be nice. Uh, oh, there you go. Now it's fair. If somebody does want to come kill me, they can. Okay, here we go. Oh, we're getting loads of sodium nitrate just from zapping that. That's good. Alright, I think I've got enough, people. I think I've got more than enough. Right, where's my base, then? Fudge and heck, I've lost my base, and it was only two freaking shakes of a lamb's tail away. Okay, well, there's a, there's a little computer here. Have I interacted with this thing? Probably have. Yeah, I have. That's why the marker's not there. I wonder if there's any um, sack venom in nearby Pacinatai, because that's the next thing I've got to do, is go looking for sack venom. There's submerged relic. It's like that. Apart from it's got three stars. If you see three stars, that's your sack venom. Why is it say I saying I haven't scanned a creature? What the blind fudge? I've scanned every creature on this planet. I've completed all discoveries on this planet. Look. And now it's marked out that there's a creature that I haven't found. You're having a you're having a Jeffrey, mate. I've got them all. Well, that's a lie. Okay, right, no, fine. Okay, well, I'm back at my old base. Let's head on in, then. I know, right? I need, I need to get more life support modules or something, because I'm forever topping up that. 
when you're in when you're in survival mode well now that i'm back in my base i'm going to go back into options i'm going to change that back to normal boom 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 yeah that's fine and then i'm going to go into networking and i'm going to turn on off pvp no one there we go right now i'm ready for people to just hand stuff into me but before i do that i'm just going to get this installed there we are now i've got my hazmat gauntlets so i think i'm doing pretty good people when it comes to all the sort of stuffage now i will give whoever gets here first i'll give these away the only one i don't want to give away is that one that's that's for me i'm going to have that one and there's three birds that i can give away the first to get here will get three well i get one bird each you know the first three people to come they will get the birds anyway let's have a look at my old storage container Oh, fudge your neck. Let's get that charged up. Yeah, all the text is buggered on that, isn't it? Right, let's check my main storage container. And there we go. That's what we've got in there so far. Ah, I might as well put that in there as well, the sack venom. So I put all the treasure at the top, all the sack venom at the pop bottom. People, sadly, if you put stuff in my treasure chest, do you want to know what happens? It actually appears in yours. <laughs> I don't get to see it so don't drop stuff in there and if you do want to drop stuff off and you can't drop it off to me if I'm full for whatever reason you can put them inside of here and I will see them one because I'm online okay so you can drop them in here I have set it so people can drop stuff off in my refiners and I should be able to see them the only trouble is I've got to be online and I think you've got to be online at the same time so I'm going to be sitting idle I'm only going to be checking the actual um, save every maybe, I don't know, couple of hours, if that. Every time it goes to Captain Steve, you're going to hibernate. And that's probably when I'm going to check it. So there's a good chance I might miss things. But anyway, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait to see if anybody arrives. Okay, so there we go. I'll just go to camera mode, zoom out a bit. And hopefully, I've got it on the screen up there. Hopefully, I'll see if people come. Anyway, there we are. Done, dilly, and done. I'm going to head on over to my old Discord and um, also my community tab on YouTube. And I'm just going to put that I'm online. If anybody wants to turn in treasure or sack venom, they're fully capable of doing so right now. And the first three people that come here to drop stuff off, if you come and stand in front of me, hopefully I'm going to see you. And uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to see you. And then, yeah, little, little, here we go, turn on the game image. That's what I can see right now. That's the view. So I'm looking from the kitchen table over at myself. So as long as I see you come into this area, then um, I get up and I give you a pet egg. If you don't want a pet egg, egg or something, maybe do that emote where you go, no. If you've already got a decent pet and you don't want one of these ones, just let me know. You know. Anyway, till next time, people. Salute to Mondo. I'll be online again on Friday, all day Friday, doing exactly this. So if you don't see me today, come and see me tomorrow on Friday. Okay, salute to Monday. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Well, how do the people? So people, I have um, opened up my multiplayer. I've been here pretty much all day today. And let's just jump on over into game. You can probably see at the side of the screen that it's turning my text into, so, well, my audio into text, which is pretty nice. So people that join my group can hear me and also read what I'm saying. So I've just had Happy Wiggle Worm come and visit. There's Happy Wiggle Worm right there. Looks freaking awesome. There he goes. He's on my roof, up by my chimney. And um, yeah, we've been, well, there's been quite a lot of visitors. The, the actual flying pets that I had, they went within like the first like 20 minutes. And I haven't even put the video live yet. But if I go into here, I've now got quite a lot of treasures. Very nice. So yeah, I've got a couple that are high value, but a lot that aren't all that valuable. So that's worth quite a fair bit, isn't it? I think that's probably my most valuable. 563067. I oh, know, got one there. 687. Nice. Okay, 687 is my highest valued item. Very lovely. And we've also got 16 sack venoms. So that's not too bad. Depending on what the other you know, factions have managed to get. I could have spent this time looking for my own sack venom and digging up more treasure though, you know? Um, but that, that, it is what it is. I've got to be here to let people turn stuff in every now and again. 
So what I might do is try and do a lot of my questing early morning in UK time when there's not a lot of people online anyway. And then in the afternoons, perhaps just sort of sit about in here until around about this sort of time. You know, this is what, 4.20 UK time? This is, I've just finished work. I finished work at four o'clock. So I'm down in tools for work, checking to see if anybody else has offloaded anything onto me. You can see here I've got a fair few free slots at the moment, not a great deal. If, for whatever reason, it says you can't transfer stuff to me because I'm full, I have these large refiners here. Now if you hit up here, you can stick up to three things in here, which is pretty cool. Hopefully, if I'm online anyway, you can. You can access my refiners and put stuff in there. Okay, so there's one there and there's one there. So I can take another six items in here, roughly. There or thereabouts. I don't know why I can't access that one at the moment. Bit odd. But there we go, people. That's pretty much everything that I've got for you at the moment. Just giving you a little bit of an update on how people have gone with handing stuff in. I think it's going quite well. He seems to have frozen. You all right, mate? You okay? Huh? I know. Well, I'll just have him as a friend. There you go. I sent you a friend's request, sir. Hopefully you're okay. There we are. That's that's pretty much it. So, yeah, just a, a very quick mini update. Now, I've got this clip saved on my computer. So what I might do is just wait now for about another four or five hours until I've got some more pet eggs that I can actually hatch. Because what I've now done is I've got my PC saved into this same region i can come over on my legacy playstation save give eggs to my pc self then swap modes into this one give the eggs back to myself so i can give them out to the actual um people that come to visit me and that's another thing i want to ask professor cynical and also ricey if it's okay if i unlock the rest of my pet slots so that way i can have more eggs incubating at once and hopefully give these out a bit quicker to everybody as well you know so yeah I'm gonna call this one giant bird giant uh, yeah it helps if I can spell giant birdie man bird bird I guess I might just call it giant pigeon I guess giant pigeon is that spell pigeon I think it is I don't know it kind of looks okay doesn't it Maybe. Don't know. There you go. It is what it is. Giant Pidgeon. Cool, yeah. Right, oh. Yeah, so, yeah, what I'll probably do is reconvene and show you that process of me getting the eggs in. It might be a bit weird. All right, stay tuned. Okay, chums, well, I've logged on in with my PC save. So let's just go click over on the old screen. There we go. Now I can move. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to see the base. Well, there's, um,. Yep, I can. I can see the base. Right, so if I leg it in with my PC save now, there we go. Dum, 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 dum. Hence why I haven't got the webcam on, because my PC save. Right, oh, there's my legacy Captain Steve save file. So let's just sit down here on the old PlayStation. So done that. Lovely. Now if I get my PlayStation save. Oh, I've got to swap to the PlayStation screen, haven't I? Let's... Um, Let's see if I can do that just on OBS. Ooh, I don't know whether I can actually. Hmm, how do I do this? Okay, bear with me, people. <laughs> this is fun. Okay, okay. now I'm on my, on my actual, actual, uh, PlayStation, PlayStation save. save. And there's, there's my, my PC, PC save down there. there. So, so all, all I, need I need to do, to do is, is give these, these eggs, eggs over, over to my, to my PC, PC save. save. Boom. Trick a power. Excellent, eh? And uh, done, 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 done. done. Now I'm now not going to give anything, anything else, else to my, my, my PC, PC save, save because that would be, be cheating, cheating wouldn't, wouldn't it? it? There is there a lovely, lovely bolt caster module, module there. there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> the I won't. There, there we go. go. That's, that's all the eggs. That's all the eggs, all all the eggs given, given over. over. Lovely, lovely job. job. Right, right. So come on out of there. And that's now over with my PC save down there. Pretty darn sweet. Awesome. And now I need to log out of this save. So let's just. Hmm, if, if I didn't, I didn't say, say, if I just log out, out now, I'll, yeah, yeah, I wonder, I wonder if, if I'd still have the eggs, eggs on this, on this save, save. And I can just, just do, do it, it again, again over and over and over and over and over and over and over. No, no, let's give it a go. Alright, so there you go, come out of that. Then if I go to join friends, if I join the Captain Steve one now, 
Ah, it doesn't have names there yet. Right, let's get there. Hmm, that's a bit weird. Hmm. Very odd. Very odd indeed. Well, I think it it must be this... I don't know. It's not putting the names on the screen. Normally it does. Okay, bear with me one second, people. Okay, people, this isn't good. And when I try to load in with my actual normal save, it just comes up with this white screen now. Um, I may have to exit out. Not good. Try again. Okay, chums. I'm, I'm just getting a white screen. I can't actually load in to the actual event anymore on my save. Um, that's covered my save, I guess. Okay, that's not good. Um, and over on my actual PC save right now, people, I've had a chap give me quite a fair bit of stuff that I shouldn't be getting. I just got given a shed load of pugnium, and I've been given a load of other stuff by the guy. Uh, so they gave me a load of exosuit expansion slots, uh, which is somewhere in here. They gave me a load of exosuit expansion slots and a load of other stuff. It just gave me a shed load of pugnium that just popped up anyway. But he did give me exosuit expansions, but I'm not seeing them there right now. But yeah, ominous gaunt. I don't know whether... That's allowed. I did see Professor Cynical say, though, if people want to come and visit you and drop stuff off to you, then that's up to them. Um, which I don't think is right, to be fair. Um, so that's a bit of a weird one. I don't think I'm going to be using it anyway. Um, yeah, I, I tried disconnecting it right now while it's on the white screen, but I don't think that's going to work. Network cable disconnected, as you can see there. Right, okay. So if I hit... Well, I can't hit Joy Friends now, because my network cable is out. But here we go. If I choose this save, let's just see if we can recover my save, first of all. And then I worry about plugging in the network and trying to reach my PC save to get those eggs. But you can see that there's a lot of messing around for me to try and get the eggs over to my save. So I think after I get this batch of eggs over to my save that I'm trying to log into now. If I can get the eggs here, as long as I can brew them here, breed them here, hatch them here, everything's good. There we go. I'm right, I'm in. At least I'm in. Okay, now I know that my PC save is right there. If I plug my network cable back in, there we go. Pow! Network cable has been restored -icated. Right. Now if I go over to network settings on here, options, network, and I should be able to see nearby player list, hopefully. Hasn't, right, hasn't really kicked in yet, has it? So if I just hit disable, disable, I'm out of here for a second. Left group, now if we go back into the network settings, and enable, cross platform enable, whoop. And then go to view nearby playlist. It still hasn't kicked in just yet. Still hasn't. It might take a little while to sink in, mightn't it? Okay, well, let's, um. Now let's try just going out. I know I haven't done anything. Have we got anything on here? Let's just hatch this egg. Might as well hatch this one. This is one that Miyogi's given me, it's like a little mount. There's like a little horse. And you can see there, it's too young to lay eggs yet. So it might be a little while before I can actually give out eggs for this. Hey, look at him go. Isn't he awesome? Got you. So we've now got that pet. Whatever pet have I got? And I've also got a bird pet. This giant freaking thing here. Got you. Well, anyways, hopefully I'll be able to lay eggs for both of these soon. But let's just, just jump in the ship, out of the ship. And let's see if I can spot a reason as to why this save might be having issues in loading in right now. Ah, that's not my ship. That's my PC player's ship. 
I wonder if I can see him right now. Let's go on in. Looks like multiplayer has now kicked in. Yes, there he is. Sweet, awesome. Okay, and then on this save, I can just go pow, and I can give the eggs over to my other save. So here we are. Give Captain Steve. Boom. Boom. Chicka pow. Chicka done. Okay, right. So now this save has got all those lovely, lovely eggs. Oh. Oh no, they've got 23 hours before they can hatch on this save. And then they're going to be too young to actually lay eggs. So it's going to be a long time before I can actually give eggs out again from this save. And on my PC save, it's going to take you know, 24 hours over there anyway. So I don't know whether I'm going to be able to give away eggs like I was before. But give it, give it after the weekend and I should be able to start giving out eggs again, people. Okay, so there we go. Jump in and out of my ship. Create a save lovely cool <clears throat> now there seems to be a bit of a problem at the main hub site a lot of people can't fly on up to get to the hub locations to use the portal I have put a ground portal down there it doesn't seem to be working too right at the moment so what I might do is use my PC save to go there and build another hub building so there's three of them there at the hub they've all got teleporters and this time build one that's lower down to the ground so I'm gonna jump back over to my PC save for a bit and I'm going to show you me doing that. But with this save, for now, I'm just going to sit this guy down inside of here, just in case people want to drop off anything else to me. Yeah, I haven't got much free slots now, though, with all these eggs, have I? <clears throat> okay. Um, can I move some of this to my ship? Yeah, let's just move all of this over to my starship for now. So starships you can use as, like, portable tents in a roundabout way. So there we go, let's put all those over there. I don't know how I got 40 launch thrusters, to be fair. Somebody may have dropped by and gave me those. So I don't know. I mean, saying that you can use things that people drop off to you, I just got given shed loads of storage expansion slots. And I, I, I'm, I'm reluctant to use them. I would say use your common sense. If you think it's going to ruin the event, if somebody jumps in and gives you a shed loads of stuff that you think, hold on, that's not really fair. Don't use it, you know? It's common sense, I guess. I just hope that other people have got that amount of restraint, you know? But yeah, it is what it is. Okay, that's, um, I've got a couple of refiners there. That's cool. I mean, I put one in the ship anyway, just in case I do accidentally leave one behind like I did before. Cool. So a lot of this anyway, having it in the ship is probably a good idea. Right, there we go. I think that I think that's enough space now for people to drop off stuff to me. So if you have got things to drop off, I am inside my little camp again. Well, inside my base. There we go. Um, I better just make a quick save. Da 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 da. And then out of my ship. Uh, lovely. Go to And hopefully, yeah, that horse mount that Miyogi gave me, and also the bird mount, will be ready to give eggs after the weekend. I'm hoping, anyway. Right, I keep you up. I keep you posted anyway. Right, so if I just sit down on this one, Claudio, make sure my network settings are all good for people to drop stuff off. Enabled, friends only, yeah. Um, ship marker enabled. PvP is no one at the moment because I am just sitting in my base waiting for people to give stuff to me. Right, so that's that done. Now if I jump over to my PC save, cool. And on my PC save, I am going to be, okay, need to click on the screen. I'm going to be going over and building something a little bit different over at the hub. So, yeah, on my PC save, it's fine for me to be doing this. Uh, what I might do for now, just so people don't think it's a bit weird seeing Captain Steve flying around all over the place in a ship, is I'm just going to turn off the old multiplayer, join my group, i put that to, oh, invite only then and that's it okay right i'm gonna fly on over what difficulty i'm in Ian? i'm in creative good so i can build the base cool you because being leader I've got that sort of like little mini privilege i suppose but um now i've got to try and find the hub haven't i ah ah this could be fun couldn't it all right 
Miyogi's light no fire mounts free. Okay, I know that his base is fairly close to the hub. And then again, he did say he's built two bases, so I'm not 100% sure. Okay, chums, well, I flew up to the station with my networking settings off, and uh, <clears throat> I've come across, and then I rejoined my, uh, my, <clears throat> my PlayStation save. Now I'm going to walk to the actual base, so here we go. Okay, well, it's done something pretty odd. It walked me back to this base, not the hub base that I chose. Um, okay, dokie then. That's a bit strange. Well, hopefully now I might be able to see the hub base, but I doubt it. This is freaking weird. Freaking weird. There's some really janky stuff going on, people. Well, I'm going to have to just fly around in the ship inside of this mode, which people are probably going to say, how's he got the starboard runner? Why is he in a ship? Blah, 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 blah. Well, I've got to build another base, and I'll show you why once I get to the actual hub, if I can find the blinking place. There's so many bases here now, it's a little bit difficult to do so. I'm going to do base tours at some stage. Now, I, I know Miyogi's base, one of them at least. Holy fudge, I didn't build so close to my base. That's pretty cool, though. Okay, right, um, let's go over here. LNS base. Right, it's going to take me a long time to find where I need to go, people, because it's just chaos. And on PlayStation and on PC, there seems to be a problem with the amount of bases that can be shown at any given one time. Um, so, yeah, fun times. Fun times, people. Okay, it's saying unable to download base, so I'll try again. There it is there. Downloading. Come on. You know you want to. But yeah, this is this is a little bit of an issue when it comes to the old... Yeah, it's, it's not letting me download it at all, is it? So, at the moment, people can't actually see the hub. And I don't know how we get around this, you know? The base is... I can't see the hub. It's not actually appearing where it should be. Even if you go to the exact coordinates, it's not appearing in. For whatever reason, I think we've hit our maximum base limit now, which now people can't get up to the station. <sighs> I don't really know what the workaround is for this, people. I might have to speak to Ricey and Cynical to find out how we get around this one, but this is, as you can see, it's just not downloading. It, it's not happening, and we'll, we'll probably hit the uh, base. I'll, I'll probably have to go there on my other save and upload it again, and I'm probably going to have to do that on a daily basis so people can download it and can teleport to it. So if I come out of here, I see what the problem was as well earlier. Look, if I go back onto this and I go through the bases, so um, whatever, uh, other bases, boom. If I go down on here... When I see the Captain Steve one, look, that actually says 07 Brew Crew. It's got the wrong image. It's got the wrong image. That's that's why I went to the other base. It's the wrong freaking base screenshot. So I have to go down. There's the other one right there. This is the correct one, downloading data. And then it sits like this for a while, and you've seen what it does. It just errors out. It won't download the actual base, even though the character that built this is actually in-game right now. Last edited as well, 16th for the 5th. That's when I last updated it. That wasn't long ago. Okay. Um, that's kind of worrying, isn't it? Let's carry on down. Ah, here we go. I've got another one by me. This is on my opposite save. <laughs> Let's see if this one downloads. Come on. You know you want to. But that Captain Steve isn't online at the moment. Unable to download base. It's not happening. So I've got hub portal, and I've also got central hub, hub portal. Let's try again. I'm going to keep trying this, people, but it's not working. As you can see, it's not working. So now we don't have an effective teleporter to get people up to the station if they wanted to come here. It's, it's not working. Righto, chums. Well, this is where the actual hub should be. 
31, 37. So yeah, it's up on this giant plateau that I'm standing on right now. And as you can see, I can't see any of the bases. There's the portal right there. There's the portal there. Coolio. So I'm right where I should be. This is exactly where I should be. So I'm going to build closest to the portal side. So I'm going to go this way. Dum, 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 dum. And just before we get to this giant megalithic sort of island that the bases are on, which they still haven't rendered in. <laughs> Freaking insane, this game. I'm going to build another hub. Okay. Just off of the side here, nearest to the portal. You can see the portal just over yonder hill over there. I'm going to build a base right here. And it's going to be a replicant of the hub right here. So there we go. Let's hit that up. And yep, playing base. Might as well, might not. Boom. Thunderly and done. Right, well I'm going to just build a complete replica of this. You can see where it is there from aerial view. And you can see the portal in relation. So hopefully you're going to be able to find this one. And it's going to be at ground level as well, people. So hopefully it's going to render in and be visible and all that sort of shaz. Okay, all right. So let's just build a, a nice little base to get started from. All right, how do I go into camera mode on this joypad? Okay, there we go. Nope, maybe I'm not in camera mode. Now I am. Okay, cool, yeah. Right, let's start building about there then. All right, people, I'll be back with you once I've built it. Well, chums, I've finished building this massive structure. Well, I say massive structure, it's not really. And I haven't got all the Quicksilver items on here to actually you know, build up any higher than this. But anyways, that's, that's pretty much done. It's similar anyway. Let's just pop into camera mode. There's a storm at the moment, so there you go. Let's just get out of screen. There we are. So teleporter there. I haven't put in the chairs. And uh, we've got that there, you know, so that they can just sit on their backsides, can't they? Because I haven't got the chairs anyway. So there we go. Not not the ones that I want to use anyhow. But there you go. There's a teleporter. And that looks pretty darn freaking swish. I wonder if the, those ones up there have rendered in now. But anyways, so this one is at ground level. As you know, it's, it's closer to the portal. There's the portal there. Just come over the hill. And there it is there. Okay. Right oh, so hopefully there's three of the dang things here now. And if I can find my base computer, I'll give it a name and upload it. Okay, right. Let's just go into uh, rather than upload it in creative though. I put this into survival mode. See if that makes any difference whatsoever. I'm going to be losing hazard protection relatively quickly though on this save. So here we go. Let's go to here. Let's get a screenshot. Capture new brief um, screenshot for it. Yeah, I couldn't pull the rocks in for the fingers and all that sort of jazz, but there we are. It is what it is, but you can see there's a portal inside that screenshot. So we go and put this into. I'm just going to call it Hub Portal this time, I think, people. Let me rename it. There we go. Hub Portal. Done. Oh, I've already, I've already taken a screenshot. All right, fine. There you go. Bang. There we are. I'll just have to do. Upload. Pow! Thunderly and done. Okay, people, that's that's pretty much that on the old PC save. So, where's my shippity ship? Might as well just make a little save for me, and then I'll be jumping back over onto my PlayStation from here on in. Sweet. Well, if I do save here, at least it's at the hub. So, if anything else goes janky or wrong with the hub area, then at least I'm here to fix it on my PC save. Okay. Pretty happy with that. It hasn't got any power down here at the moment, though. What's going on there? I don't know where the little mud hut just vanished to either. Oh, for fudge sake. Seriously? Where's my biofuel reactor gone? How the... How the devil has... That happened? Okay. I, I don't know what's going on there, people. Right, sod it. I'm just going to keep this simple. I'll put down the little biofuel reactor here. I don't know what happened there. My mud hut disappeared. It's not like I deleted it or anything. Right, okay, and uh, let's just connect another cable to this then. This game, sometimes people, is just bizarre. All right, I have no idea what's going on there. Uh, right, so there we go. Let's charge that up. Let's just make sure everything works here before I say it's all good. There we are, that's now working. Let me into the teleporter. Oh, for fudge's sake, seriously. There we go, now I'm up. Cool. 
I'm up there. Oh, God. One of the barriers have disappeared as well. Well, the, the portal's still there. You know what, that's the main thing, is it's got a blinking portal, isn't it? You know, that, that's that's what people are coming here for, is the portal at the end of the day. And if the... That's just... This game... I don't know what's going on with it, people. I really don't. But there we are. That works as well. Can I get to the station? Space station. Current system. Light no fire hub. Brilliant! Okay, well that bit works. There's bits missing. There's bits that might render. There's bits that might not render. But that's 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 joy of no man's sky. Welcome to our list of features. They're ongoing. Okay, here we are. I'm going to re-upload that base. Bizarre! I have no idea why bits of it vanished. But it is what it is. Okay, people. Go to you. Oh, chums. I'm going to be feeding this little guy. Looking after him. And hopefully, he will come to age and can lay an egg. For now, I've just put some canisters on him and stuff like that. He's looking pretty good. Very nice. Let's give him a little ride. Boom. And he's going all right. He's all right. Whee! <laughs> Let him go. So Miyagi made this to make it look a little bit like the mounts that we saw in the desert inside of the trailer. Oh, I think I just killed him <laughs> right okay cool so yeah if you do want that beastie head on over to miyogi's base here and hopefully you'll be able to pick one up the other creature he's given me is a giant bird this one here now what i would say with this bird is it can be a little bit difficult to dismount it because it flies so high it flies really high but the nice thing about this bird is when you fly across oceans it doesn't despawn it. It doesn't drown. You can fly across oceans. Also, this is a very good creature for spotting like different structures in nearby vicinity and jump down to them, you know? Now, something that we've been talking about, guys, about the rules, is whenever you leave your your um, base confines, you know, or one of your territory's bases, so doing base builds, doing builds, and, um, you know, collecting resources to make your base look prettier as long as you're inside of your territory stay in normal mode keep pvp off but as soon as you make that decision to go wider afield from your territory and get to go exploring or to do anything to do with missions slap yourself into pvp mode and put yourself into survival mode because outside of base building any resources that you get will be limited you're going to be out there a lot longer in the field in in survival mode the amount of yield you're going to get is smaller and the amount of damage you're going to take from storms and all that sort of stuff is going to be higher so that it brings in that survival element into this whole sort of thing so before you actually set off from your base you're going to be making a few mental decisions anyway i'm going to jump off this bird and i'll show you how high i am so you've got to be careful. You've got to time your jetpack boosting just right or you're going to die. So just be a bit careful with this creature. Here we go. There we are. Safely landed. Takes a little bit of getting used to that one. It really does. Something I've also noticed about this bird is when you despawn it, it doesn't actually despawn. You just end up with another one flying around. And after a while, after calling it in, after a few to see, look, it's still there, still there after I just despawned it. When I call in another one, there's now two of them. Look, I've got one there, one there. If you keep spawning and despawning your bird over and over, over and over, it may cause issues on the um, lower consoles. So just be very mindful of that. Even if you choose a different mount, these ones will still stay airborne now. I don't know whether Miyogi can fix that or whether it's a bug just with mine, but I'm being extra careful. Um, I'm doing reloads every time I get back to my base. I, I jump in my ship, out of my ship to create a save, and then I reload my save, and it gets rid of all my spawned beasts that are out inside of the wild. Okay, people? So... There's a lot that's been going on in the background between Ricey and Professor Cynical and I. And uh, 
we are reporting these sort of bugs to each other. I think me being on PlayStation 5, I'm experiencing more bugs than them. And they're both on PC. Uh, there will be amendments to the rules happening quite regularly. If you're on the Discord, it's actually a pinned comment on my Discord that you can pick up. And you can pick up the newer updates of rules. So just check them if you can on Discord. If not, I will put a copy or an amendment to the rules every time there is a major on my actual um, community tab on, on on YouTube. Or just keep watching my videos because I've been given sort of updates to the rules as we go along. Anyway, hopefully this video has been of use to you. I mean, this just shows the back end of what's going on for us leaders in the way of how we're trying to get pet eggs into the actual instance and how we can give the eggs out to you guys. I was hoping to have all the eggs ready so as you turn in things for your missions, I can give you an egg as a reward. It's never going to go be to that point. It's going to be maybe the first four to five people that, that come in and do that each day that we get an egg. It's going to be a very slow burn. But if each of us faction leaders are doing this at our camps, then hopefully everybody that takes part in this event has got a chance, a chance to get a flying mount. But what I would say is if we don't give you an egg when you turn stuff in, go and see Miyogi. If you see Miyogi's base and you see Miyogi online, go see Miyogi, you know, because uh, he's going to have more pet eggs than us guys, hopefully. Okay, so something to also note, people, as I have been sitting here waiting for people to come and turn things in to me, but what I'm finding more often than not is I'm having people come over, giving me a game invite, not handing me anything over, not putting anything inside of the actual um, repositories or doing anything like that. I think they're just hoping that I'm going to play with them, turn on my mic and all that sort of stuff. But because I'm here just to pick stuff up, that's not really why I'm in to play. And I've got no real way on PlayStation of telling them that. Unless I go into here, go into networking, and if I turn on that, turn on that and that. Well, how do that, ominous god? Hopefully you can hear me, sir. Uh, or if you can't, hopefully text is going to start appearing over at the side of the screen. Or it should anyway. Let me just make sure that I've got the settings right. Yeah, enabled, enabled. It should be converting what I say into text. There we go. Yes, it is. It's working. Anyway, ominous gaunt. I'm just sort of sitting here at my base because at the moment there's an active quest. A quest to either get treasure from relic sites or to get sack venom. And then to hand it into your team or faction leader. And hopefully we're going to win on exploration and grind of gathering. Yeah, because the next phase, Ominous Gaunt, which will probably be one that you might be better at, to be fair, is going to be PvP. I say you might be better at, you just gave me a shed load of stuff earlier, which was very gra gratefully received, Ominous Gaunt. The only thing is, is you gave me a load of exosuit expansion slots, which is lovely, but I don't know whether I'm allowed to use them. Um, I kind of deleted them, sorry. I could have given you them back, you're quite right, but you'd vanished. Um, but yeah, they're gone now. Yeah, anyway, sorry about that. But anyways, um, I'm here to just pick stuff up. I'm not really... I can't really go too far out on questing or anything. Especially if I, you know, if I perish or die, it's going to be a bit shite, to be fair. So I'll go out sparingly. I have got a map to go to a relic site, which I was going to do to this morning, but I've been waylaid re rewriting rules and stuff. So, yeah, fun times. And also trying to get pet eggs into the freaking environment. I've actually got four on me right now, but they're going to take 21 hours to incubate, to hatch, and then I've got to get them up to adult before I can actually give out eggs to anyone else. Fun times, fun times. So anyways, things are going to get hot towards the end of the month though, buddy. Um, we might be entering into PvP and doing a load of combat against each other. Hopefully you'll be here to take on out the scourge of the Diver the Cynical Crew, which is the Crayola Kingdom, or Empire. I'm kind of hoping that those two, being right next to each other, kind of, you know, cancel each other out. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah. Brilliante. Until then, though, mate, you might want to to sort of get yourself pretty powerful with your multi-tool. Kill sentinels, grab modules, all that sort of stuffage. 
and get yourself seriously tooled up for that massive event that's going to be kicking off. I'm I'm hitting a lot of. I don't know about you. I'm on PlayStation 5. I mean, I can see you've got a PlayStation icon. But when I load in, I get a white screen. My game just hangs. I have to take my network cable out just to get into game now because of the amount of bases around here. Insane. So yeah, thinking about maybe winding this down and giving things a rethink and maybe coming back to it after the event, you know? It's like, I, I'm looking at yourself right now, mate, and I'm wondering, you've got the staff like uh, I've got. And I know that there was something in the rules about leaders having staffs where everybody else has multi-tools. I don't know what sort of level you are or what sort of level of power you have Okay, and you've also got a Sentinel multi-tool. Yeah, you see, I, I honestly don't think <laughs> that's part of the rules. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you are, you've got a hairdryer. Brilliant. That's pretty much what every other player's got. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. Uh, I honestly don't know how things are going. Oh, I'm in camera mode. I, I, I don't know whether I can. Ex I can't. I can't get to accept that. <laughs> That's just spanned my game because I was in camera mode looking at you. Um, I can't actually hit that. Oh, here we go. Done it. There you are. I managed to do it in the end. <laughs> this game is so broken at times. On the, even on the most simple of things, it really is. But yeah. We've got the game issues to deal with, but then we've also got how players have interpreted the rules. There's probably other people, just like yourself, Ominous, running around with the staff, with Sentinel multi-tools, with probably all sorts in them, and we're probably going to see chaos ensue towards the end of this event. I can only but imagine when it's last man standing, there's going to be a lot of tears, because I think there's a lot of people that have interpreted the rules differently, and... Um, are going to just mop the floor. Uh, yeah. I would say you've got, a, you've got an ensemble of multi-tools, right? I would say go into battle using your hairdryer multi-tool. And if you see somebody pull out something like a pulse spitter or something that's seriously OP and is completely annihilating everyone and it's getting down to the last man standing, sod it. Match them in firepower. You know, and I've probably got a few people on my team that are going to be similar. You know, I'm not. This is this is my this is my setup inside of my multi tool. Now I just went with exactly what it had when I picked it up from the actual Nexus. I don't know whether I got lucky or jammy, but mine came with two S class freaking modules drafted into it. I don't know whether Cynical or if um, Ricey deleted theirs. I did ask. They said just leave it as it is when you claimed it. I'm like, okay, that's what you just said. I'm keeping this. <laughs> this is a tool of death. This is the Atlas Scepter. And it, it yeah, I've got myself the Neuro Cat. The Neuro, yeah. I feel sorry for whoever picks on me while I'm out on the field because one shot or maybe two, and yeah, they're going to be a bundle of limbs, basically. But there we are. Um, it is what it is. <laughs> Anyway, I'm putting this video together. I've recorded a lot of what I'm saying here. And um, it's good that you was here as an example, to be fair, uh, Ominous, because I know this is happening in other factions. Because Cynical the other day said, you know, if you want to come and join us and drop something off, I can't help that. So I don't know whether he's taking advantage of modules or, or, or slots, things, or whatever. I'm just playing the way that I want to play. But yeah, I'm going to render this video, send it over to Cynical and Ricey and see if we can get some clarification around this giant PvP event that's going to happen at the end of the month. But yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, enjoy. So the quest that's running at the moment is get Sack Venom, get Treasure, bring it back here. If you see me sitting on my ass on those like um, rugs over there, hand me it in, I put it in the vault, and then we're going to compare vaults, hopefully, maybe this weekend or next weekend. And hopefully we get the winners of Quest 1 established, whether it's Ricey, myself, when I, when I say, or Cynical, the crews, the big the groups as an ensemble, you know? This is kind of like, this is for the people that enjoy the exploration, the quest. And then the people that enjoy PvP is going to be the end of the month. Last man standing. <laughs> yeah! 
Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's quite apt. Have I got the dance emote? I have. I have. There we are. Yes, I agree. It's going to be it's going to be fun times. Fun times all round. Heck yes. I wait to see what happens at the end of the month. But yeah, should be a good one. And then I'm hoping in June we're going to get an update, mate. And depending on how big the update is, it might really change what we're doing when it comes to this anyway. We might find a new planet and start afresh and get the rules better established. Because the problem I've got with loading in, we have got an idea as a workaround to get around that. But it's, it's a case of testing it a bit. Anyways, I'll leave you to it, buddy. I'll go back to sitting on my rugs and waiting to see if anybody hands stuff in to me. Because right now I'm working from home. I need to be doing some work. This is my tea break. I have my cup of tea to hand right here in a lovely Captain Steve merch mug, which you can buy from Teespring. I'm not talking to you, Ominous. I'm talking to the wider audience there. But if you do want to grab one, that'd be lovely. Anyway, take care, mate, and thank you for dropping stuff up to me. I did keep the star silk. That might come in handy for making some lovely bar seats or something, so thank you. Until next time, people. Um, yeah, I'll be um, yeah, just sitting here. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm doing. Cheerio. So there, chums. Yeah, I'm experiencing quite a lot of bugs, as you can see inside of this episode. And also, there's a lot of misinterpretation with the rules, perhaps, because we've been we've been evolving the rules as time goes on. I mean, I've had people saying, are you just making this up as you go along? Short answer, yes! <laughs> yes, we are. So the way that it's kind of working, let me just go back to basics. So right back at the start, Professor Cynical hit me up and said, Captain Steve, I want to do something. You know, people are getting tired. They're getting a bit bored. Let's do something exciting. Let's keep something on a planet. Maybe have little factions and have PvP events where you can take each other out. Once you're dead, you're dead. That sort of thing. Like have little faction wars. Because we've got the new factions up in the stations, you know, Gek, Viking, Corvax, and all that sort of stuff. I liked his idea of factions on a planet. But I could see people sort of, you know, getting OP rather quickly and it would just be a massacre. So I said to him, well, how about this as a caveat to your idea? With Light No Fire and the excitement for Light No Fire being so high, how about we make it Light No Fire orientated? We call it Light No Sky or something similar to that, a mixture of the different titles. And we make it so you can only use stone and wood and you can only get things maybe from the traders that land and it's a slow build to the massacre. And until we get the massacre going and the PvP events going, maybe we have a hub zone that people have to travel to, have all the, our factions equally spaced out, and get a third person involved, Ricey. And then we can all go to the hub area and you have to have PvP on them. You know? And it's evolved from that. It's kind of moved on a little bit from that. We've widened that a little bit because we can see there's a bit of an appetite for this um, PvP element amongst the players. The competitive side, which No Man's Sky doesn't really got unless you build something like this. There's all sorts of variants you guys at home could be doing right now. You might see what we're doing and saying, you know what, that's a bloody good idea. But if I was doing it, I'd do X, Y and Z. Fine, get your own event going. It's freaking awesome. I'm really liking using No Man's Sky as a sandbox, as a platform for your ideas. The only thing is, I don't think Hello Games has given us enough toggles and enough switches to make it canon. So we've got Word documents floating about, we've got lists appearing on our community tabs, we've got stuff that's it's forever evolving at the moment because it's in its inf infancy. It's still, you know, it's still a sandboxy idea. But it'd be nice if there was a load of toggles so you can actually set your own game mode. You know like how you can share a bite beat out with somebody. It'd be nice if you could share those game rules in game, all those toggles all set, a custom game mode that you've designed that everybody adheres to. So it only restricts your base building to maybe the wood and the stone. You can cut out the metal, you know. Maybe you can make it so you can't actually make your ship fly out of the atmosphere it's actually planetary locked or something or maybe you can make it so it doesn't even take off it, you can call it in but you can't take it off so you can use it as a mobile camp but they need a load of toggles i'm talking like a massive ream of, of toggles to make these custom game modes and maybe you actually build the actual game mode in a machine a little bit like the bite beat where you've got different lines and different plugins that you can stick in if this equals that then that can't happen you know that sort of stuff a very modular game building menu 
that you almost build like a bike beat on tracks and lines and stuff and then you share it with another player they load it in even if they have to do it up at you know that console that's inside the nexus maybe they load up the game mode inside of there outside of an expedition and boom you get thrown into this actual environment that's been set up by the actual creators of that game mode I think that really help out the likes of, say, like the, the Survivor series that Beeble and Jason and Zane and all that do. But not only them, it would help us for our Like No Sky. We could actually dial that in. And maybe it might encourage more people to do similar sorts of things and similar sorts of ideas that suit their sort of community in their niche. It could really be something special. I really do hope that that's something that Hello Games looks at and sees how people are playing No Man's Sky as a sandbox and run with it. They really could do something with this. I honestly do think that there's merit to this idea. Especially if they are to put down tools on No Man's Sky at some stage and move over to Light No Fire. Putting the, the actual controls over to the community and having the community grow No Man's Sky and keep it alive I think is the only real way that they're going to be able to do it. Anyway, you can see I'm just sitting there waiting for people to turn things into me when it comes to Sack, Venom and Relics. At some point though, on my lunch break, I'm planning to play for an hour. I'm going to go visit a couple of Relic sites myself, get a few extra treasures myself, see if I can find some Sack Venom out in the wild myself. So yeah, I'm going to do a, a little hour jaunt a little bit later on. Um, I've got another couple of hours yet before I get to that. Still on my morning brew. Hey girls, this is the Captain Steve's brew. It's lovely. Picked from the Him Himalayans. Yes. By Space Midgets. They're not really midgets. I don't know what they are. They're just little yellow pygmy guys. Anyway, it says over on... Um, yeah, I'm lying. I don't know how it's actually made, but it's lovely. If you go over to Cherazina.com and take a look at it, it actually tells you how it's made, and it does mention Himalayas. That bit's, that, bit's, that bit's true. I just don't know who goes about going up the Himalayas to find it. I don't even think there's tea bushes on the Himalayas, is there? I don't know. I'm not very good with geography. I'm not very good with anything, to be fair, apart from playing No Man's Sky. And then it is only good. I'm not an expert. I'm not amazing. Cheers, people. Yeah, until next time. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Well, how do the chums? As you can see, I'm inside of No Man's Sky, I guess. Well, Light No Sky. Yes, yeah, a sort of rendition of Light No Fire inside of No Man's Sky. Got myself a lovely Captain's Brew on the back. Lovely, lovely. Now, this morning, before I get too into things, before I start my working day, I'm going to be jumping into No Man's Sky, or Light No Sky, and hatching a couple of eggs. And then I'm going to be picking up a relic site or two, hopefully, people. So let's jump on over into game and let's do my little morning jaunt. Now, I try to do these each morning. Um, I haven't fired up Discord today on purpose because that sort of eats my morning away if I do. There's a lot of admin that goes into running this event. There is. OK, right. So I can hatch one of each of these eggs. So I've got a, a bird that I can hatch there. I've got a bee key that I can hatch there. Now, I did have a dragon, and that's also ready to hatch. I'm going to hatch the dragon first. Let's hatch the dragon. Let's have a look at him, then. Let's have a, let's do a little quick test run of said dragon as well. Oh, let's, um, let's gently pat him. Give him a little treat. Let's take to the skies. Let's have a little fly on this guy. Let's see how high he flies. So he's going up quite high. And, yeah, I can see past him. I can see below him. I think this is a lot better than the previous entry, the previous bird. And, yes, he's, he's actually gone really high. That's actually really quite cool. All right, OK, well, let's dismount from this creature. Now, that, that's that's still a slight concern. You have to hit your jetpack right at the, la the last moment and not break your legs. Right, eh? Well, that's pretty cool. Let's despawn him and let's see if he does despawn as well. So he should be gone now. I'm just looking around. And look, look, he's still there. Now, apparently, Miyogi says it, if you just hit on them or something, select them or whatever, they're supposed to vanish. I don't know how you make them vanish, Miyogi, but he, he's still very much there, to be fair. Um, yeah. Do you mean, like, scan there or something? I don't know. But he's, he's still in the air, anyway. Okay, right, so he doesn't despawn, which could be an issue for some. 
Right, okay, well, let's uh, let's uh, hatch the next one then. So we're going to hatch a beaky. Let's have a look at a beaky, shall we? Gently pat, give him a pellet. Let's ride this one. Okay, well, that one's got freaking gorgeous wings. I like the green wings, that's pretty cool. The only trouble with this one is, one, it doesn't seem to... Oh, it's going higher, a little bit higher. It doesn't fly too high, and I'm struggling to see past it, to see the terrain. You know what I mean? It's. I would prefer to have a smaller bird if it doesn't fly high. So that one, I would probably use it, but I'm not too sure if I'd use it as much as the others, you know? There we go. So there's a bee key as well. But at least you could probably spot the sack venom easier on that one. And dismounting from that one is a lot easier. I think it was slightly faster. Let's see if that one despawns. Let's go into here. Let's, um, boom. Oh, uh, yeah, that one did despawn, I think. I think he's gone. Yeah, that one, that one actually despawned as well. Brilliant. But you can see my first one, the dragon, is still in the air. Which is quite cool, because... If a lot of people have got these, it would make it look like the planet has actually got wild dragons, which pretty epic. Okay, right. Next one, then. So let's, uh, let's uh, hatch another egg. So we've done the beaky. We've done the dragon. So this is just the general bird, isn't it? So I've got one that I can hatch right now. So let's hatch him. Aha, this looks a little bit smaller. Ah, I'm liking the look of this one. He looks like a proper pigeon. Let's take to the skies. Let's see how... Okay, this one seems to fly a little faster. A little higher. And this one I can actually see past everything. This one's going to be good for doing little base tours. I am going to do base tours over this weekend, people. Of the bases that are inside of my faction's perimeter. So, oh yeah, I like this one. This one's going to be my casual day-to-day -day flyer. I mean, I don't know whether this one's going to be able to fly over the oceans. I'd imagine that giant dragon that we flew at the start can fly over the oceans. And I've still got Miyogi's massive giant bird, which definitely does fly over the oceans. So this one actually flies quite high too. Look, you know, that's quite a long drop for me there. Sweet. Well, that was that one's quite cool. That one's my... I think that's going to be my main bird now, people. Okay, so what else have I got? So that's I've got one of each of those that I can give away today, which is great. Now I've brought over the eggs from my actual main save, but I've got a good 20 minutes for those to hatch. And then down here I've got my mounts, which um, again, I've actually, I've actually already got one of these, so I'll show you them. I'll show you the mount. So this is the mount. I mean, he's quite small at the moment. I need to sort of, you know, get him ready to lay eggs. He's too small at the moment to lay eggs. So, yeah, but he's, he's a little donkey, and uh, I'll be giving out those as well to people. It's quite cool, I guess. Nice. And I'm probably going to use him to go around and, and just trek this planet, for now, anyway. Oh, and um, I've got one other pet that Miyogi gave me, which is an Ewok. Look at this guy. He's freaking cute as a... Eh. Look at him. Look at him. Hello there, mate. Heck yes he is. Look at him. He's freaking gorgeous. So he he could actually come with me, to be fair, couldn't he? If I'm going on foot. Ah, am I going on foot, though? I don't know. Let's find out how far the relic site is away, because here's my relic map. Okay, boom. Let's see what we've got, people. Ah, it looks like another one of my birds didn't despawn. Yeah, it looks like two of my birds are still out, for whatever reason. Okay, cool. Right, so we're heading over that way. We're going to this ancient ruin. It's four hours away. I will be taking one of my birds. Heck yes, I will. Um, the other birds that I've got, the ones that are another, what, 20-odd minutes to hatch, these are all from my legacy save. These are all old pets that Miyogi done me for my legacy save. I will be hatching those later and showcasing those towards the end. So stick around for that. So right hope. So if I'm heading out now, I need to change my uh, my um, game settings. Let's go to difficulty. We're going to be putting that into survival mode. Yes. And on networking, I am going to be changing that to anyone with PvP. 
This is where I could die, people. Okay, right, so let's uh, let's get my favouritest bird, which is the new bird that Miyogi just gave to moi. Which is going to be this little kitty, I guess. Let's ride. Let's go, my little birdie, my bird bird. Okay, uh, where's the thing I just marked? There it is over there. So we head into the ancient ruin. I'll be sure to hit record. If anything interesting happens, on said way there. Or if I come across any sack venom, which I'm keeping my eye peepers peeled for. Okay, chums, now if I do fly over any little mini structures like this one, I am sort of jumping off my birdie man bird bird, and I'm going down and hitting up one of the actual save columns at one of these structures to get navigational data. Because the navigational data you can swap up at the actual station for, you know, map charts and stuff. I mean, I can buy some with nanites if I really want to, so let's hit this up. Boom. Create a little save. And then just above me up here, you'll see in a moment, I get a navigational data. Any second now, there we go. Now, I don't know whether this is a secured facility. If it is, I'm not going to break into it. But uh, let's have a look, see. No, nope, we can go straight in. This was cool. All right, so there might be something worth having inside of here. Okay. Might be some navigational data in this cube, per se. Yes, we got another navigational data. Oh, hello, mate. What are you up to? Hello there, chum. Okay, brilliant. I don't understand a word, mate. Well, I understand a couple, not much. Cool. I will give you some ferrite dust. There you go. Have some ferrite dust. Oh, cool. And he gave me a word back in... Oh, thank you very much. All right, okay, well, they've got this transmitter. I might as well hit it up. It might get me another site that's got navigational data. I might not go there this episode, but I'll go there at some point. Okay, right, some maths this early in the morning. Okay. Well, 1, 2, 6, 24. So 6 times 4 is 24. So it'd be... Is it going to be 8 times 120? Mm, I'm not sure. I'm just going to go for 620. This is too early in the morning for this sort of math, isn't it? Okay. Dang it! All right, well, I got that wrong. Cool. It was probably the top option, wasn't it? Seven something. Yeah, probably was. Okay, right. Anyway, we're done here. So lovely jubbly. Usually around that little save tower, though, is some more things that I could have took advantage of, to be honest. Is there any other little boxes around here that I could have nabbed? No, there wasn't. Okay, fine. All right, cool. That's a... Oh, I was looking for my ship. Of course, I didn't fly her in the ship. I'm flying on a freaking dragon, aren't I? Or a bird. Right, okay, so let's uh, call in my bird then. Um, you. Oh, yeah, i got to do that again. Oh, yeah. So it's so easy to just get on them when you first summon them. Otherwise, trying to get them out the sky is... Oh, look, there's a load of sack venom right there. Those little pink balls, that's sack venom. Cool, yeah. And there's a damaged machinery. Cool, we found a load of sack venom, people. Right, oh, we know what people out there in the view of us. When I say view, well, people out there in the view of us, more so my um, my esteemed colleagues, my my chums. I'm putting down a red beacon here. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't bring a load of oxygen with me. I left it in my ship, didn't I? And you know what I, else I didn't do? Uh oh. You see, this is this is the bad bit. Um, they send sentinels after you people when you pick up the sack venom. Ah! Run away! Run away! Run away! Oh my god! Oh my god! Help! The sentinels are going to get me. Phew. Okay, right. Just keep digging. Keep digging till my shield comes back. Holy mackerel. Okay, right. Hopefully those sentinels will lose sight of me in a moment, people. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? I was going to take on the sentinels for a while, but you know what? I don't think that's a very clever idea. Okay, right. There we go. 
But I do want to get some more of that sack venom, if I can. It's not like I've got a cloaking device. I'm going to have a little bit of my tea. Then we're going to go back at that. We're going to go get a bit more sack venom. I think the sack venom's hitbox is massive. I think I got spiked by the sack venom at the same time as being shot in the face by a sentinel. I nearly freaking died. Oh my days, people. I think I found out why I nearly died. Um, a load of my tech is broken. Holy fudge. How did that all get broken? What the... F Seriously, how did that get broken? Oh, for fudge's sake. Okay, right. Well, I've got a lot of fixing to do. I need some ferrite dust now. I left everything in my ship. I don't think my ship... I didn't fuel it before I set off from base. So, yeah, look. I can't call it. Dang it! And I put the launch thruster fuel inside of the ship. I don't want to use a nav data to call the ship in, if I can help it. But that's where all my stuff is. Because... Dang it! Right, oh, we got this. That's good. Did I bring a refiner with me? I better have. I think I have. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Well, looks like we're back to basics on this little trek, people. Uh, where's that rusted freaking metal? Give me my rusted metal. Oh, there you go. Rusted metal. Doom. And into there. You know what I didn't check as well before I set off? I didn't have a look to see who's nearby. Okay, so these guys are both on my um, faction anyway. They're both part of my faction, so that's all cool. I should be I should be all right for now. If Professor Cynical was on, or any of the Cynical crew, I'd be a little bit nervous right now, people. I really would. Okay, because they'll come for me. I know they would. All right, so let's go over here. Let's... Ow! Fudge off! Dang it! How did that hit me? It wasn't ready to explode. What the fudge is there? Oh, there's... There's a grabber plant there. There's a freaking grabber plant among... You freaking... Oh, I used my bloody... Ah! I used my terrain manipulator, didn't I? That's how I got broken. It was by that freaking hitbox of that bloody plant. Oh, and it's broken this again now. Fudge iron hack. Ah, oh, dang it. Okay, right. Hurry up. Can't be standing in a freaking storm waiting for this. Okay, right. Um... Yeah, I, I know. Right, uh, let's take the living slime. Uh-oh. Yeah, I, I maybe I should go back to base and go get my bits out of the ship and refuel it. Because this is insane. Let me in the ground. Okay, well, why is it not stabilising? Go back up. Hazard protection, go back up. You know you want to. Oh, this is insanely bad. I think I need to fly back to base, but I don't want to lose the position of this sack venom. Maybe I need to go back and get my ship and get my basics. I need a load of oxygen, because I've pretty much not got any oxygen. Oh dear, this has gone badly, hasn't it? Bad start. Okay, Jums, well it just said that the storm is clearing. I'm just going to give it a couple more seconds before I run out of my little hidey hole. And go to my refiner and grab the frickin's... Ferrite dust. Refix this. Refix this. Oh my days. I can't believe that that blinking plant with a hitbox of like six yards freaking just took out my shields. Um, not fun. Not fun at all. Yeah. My, um, I, I haven't got no sodium on me. I'm going to have to fly back to base, people, because I'm, I'm not going to last long. But I do want to grab some of that sack venom. Um, it's, it's a tricky one. Well, I hope, I've got the marker on it now, haven't I? So hopefully I'll be able to come straight back here. And I could put out a beacon as well. Yeah, let's put a beacon out too. Okay, so put a beacon out. You just go into scan mode and press the square button. Chica pow. So I've got a beacon here now as well. Let's run over to this. There you go. My hazard protection is going back up now. Lovely. We've got our debris. So let's go fix that. Okay, now I need to get some oxygen... Where's that other pumpy plant? Make sure I've got my... Not the terrain manipulator. My runic lens. Okay, right. Let's interact with this damaged machinery. Let's see what we get. Oh, it's already been had, has it? Okay. Fine. What's inside these boxes, then? Aha! I got an ion battery. Brilliant. Well, I need the ion battery to fix that, but wiring looms I can only get at the station, so I'm going to have to fly all the way up to the station to get that fixed. That sucks. Okay, right. We've got that fixed. We've got that fixed. If there's some 
sodium nearby. Hey, actually, I've got this battery now, which is good. Ah, look, there's a whole load of oxygen right there on the hill. Let's go get all that oxygen. And you know what? I might not have to go back to base. I might be able to just survive this, people. But then, saying that, if Professor Cynical's crew comes along... I need to craft some more of that, just in case. Let's go pick this up, then. Lovely, lovely oxygen. Yeah, there's a good, there's a good enough patch here to keep me going, people. Uh, I say that. There's, there was three plants. Okay. Now, there is a pumpy plant near here as well. I did see it. But there's this, also a sentinel robot flying around. Okay, right. Well, where was that lovely good sack venom? It's got three stars as an icon. There was a whole load of it, wasn't there? There it is, right there. Okay, people. Let's see if we can't get the stuff. Okay, this could be fun. Now, amongst this might have been one of those horrible plants. No, there's not. But Sack Venom has got the same sort of hit radius, and that's probably what took out my life support. Okay, we've got another one. Can we get a couple more? Okay, let's leg it. Let's get into the ground before the Sentinels have a chance to shoot me this time. Okay. That should do the trick. I'm slightly down. They shouldn't be able to see me. I hope. Hopefully they won't fly into this cave. Hopefully they're just deactivating a moment or two. Hooey! This is like nail-biting stuff. Getting sack venoms. How many sack venoms do I have? I have nine. That's quite good towards my whole collective total. I'm doing my bit for my crew. I guess I am. Okay, right. They're deactivated. Now, they have increased the hitbox of where you can pick things up. If I could sneakily pick these sack venoms up through the ground, that would be even better, wouldn't it? The only trouble is, is once the sentinels are here, they're here. So as soon as I pick up the next sack venom, they're going to go freaking mental. Look, he's right above the sack venom now. These sack venoms still put out their spores if you get close. Yes, they freaking do! Even after you've collected them, they're still bloody dangerous. Okay, right. So there's one there, there's one there. Let's grab those two. And let's get back in the hole. Run, Steve, run! Cool. Alright, I think you've got the idea of what I'm up to now. I'm just going to do this a few more times until I've got... Well, actually, I think I've got all that sack venom now. I've got ten of them. That'll freaking do. All right, I've got enough sack venom there. I've marked it for all my little cohorts. And you know what, little cohorts? Let me give you the exact coordinates, just in case my beacon doesn't show up. There they are on screen right now. So that's plus 13.10... Minus 150.55, and it's near to that structure on the hill that you saw me at earlier. Okay, people, I think that's enough for Sack Venom right now. I think I should just head to the relic site and get my relic. Okay, right. Now, we have got the ion battery. I am in two minds of keeping the ion battery, though. Just in case, I need it. Um, let's have a look around. I might just gather some more basic materials. There's some more oxygen over this way. I might go get that oxygen, get a little bit of sodium. Just for going off on this little mini ex expedition, people. I'm going to get a few little preservatives. Well, luckily, chums, if you do scan the plants on this planet, they're going to give you carbon and oxygen as and when you shoot them. So there you go, I'm getting loads of oxygen just by shooting the plants on this planet. There's a little extra tip there for my crew. Just got to be careful what you do around these sentinels though, people. Let's grab some more sodium. Lovely. Now, I was quite lucky with this multi-tool. It already had an advanced mine laser in it or something, so I can get myself a load of advanced bits. I've just got some sodium nitrate. Oh, watch out for that. Oh, yeah, it's fine. I'm going to grab that. Okay, right. Now to continue my flight over to the ruins. So let's uh, let's call him my old bird. 
Lovely jubbly. Uh, bird. Bird. Let's go, bird. Oh, I have no treats to give him. All right, well, I'll craft some when I get on his back. I don't. I can't feed him while I'm actually riding him, but I'll, ride, I'll, I'll feed him when we get to the destination, people. So here we go. Let's make some pellets for him. There we go. Let's fly like the wind. Let's see if we can see any more. I don't know whether I would stop for Sack Venom right now, people, because those Sentinels are pretty gittish, and I haven't got all, all the resources that I want. I'm already pushing my limits of survival to the max! Heck yeah, some freaking Rambo in it, people. Anyway, if anything interesting happens, I'll be sure to let you know. Okay, John, so I thought I'd just stop off here for a second. Um, mainly because I saw that there's an opening in the ground, a fissure. I might be able to get a bit of cobalt while I'm here. And I hit up a save, get another navigational data in a second. Lovely. Now, I have noticed my other birds are ready to hatch. I said I'd leave it to the end to showcase them, but, you know, I, I'm going to do it now because the bird that I've got flies extremely slowly. So I figured, let's just hatch these. Chickaboom! Hello there, mate. Give him some pellets. Now this guy, this guy is pretty darn quick. Look at him. He's far quicker. He's smaller. He flows low, lower to the ground. But that's the sort of thing that I want right now. A little bit more speed and power. Oh no. Just hurt myself getting off of him. Right, okay. Have I got runic lens selected? I have. There you go. I'm going to get the dehydrogen. Oh, sentinels, leave me alone. I'm just getting some bloody friggins, you know, cobalt. Nobody likes cobalt, apart from travellers. Right, here we go. I'll get some cobalt from here. Hopefully the sentinel's not going to follow me into this cave. And I'm going to get a load of cobalt. Okay, so that's the first creature that I've just demoed, and he's awesome. I will be showing you the others in a moment. I just need to get some cobalt and I need to craft myself some life support gel and other stuff. You can see here I'm getting dehydrogen jelly. Well, dehydrogen. I'm going to turn it into dehydrogen jelly in a moment, people. There's reason for that. Yeah. I'm going to make myself some life support gel. I'm going to make myself some ion batteries. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay. There's a little poisonous git there. I'm going to get rid of him as well. There we go. There's loads of hazardous flora there. There's even, there's even more of it. Look, there's loads of them. Jesus. Loads of hazardous flora there. That could have killed me if I wasn't careful. Okay. What's that? I don't know what that is. Okay, it's part of the scenery. Okay. I don't think we can do much with cave marrow, but sorry, we'll get some cave marrow as well then. Right out. Ah, another hazardous flora right there. And another one. And another one. There was three on top of each other. Now, if I was on a hazardous flora mission, that would never have happened. You know what I mean? Yep, stop investigating. There's nothing to see here. Nothing to see. Nothing to see. Okay, right. So, let's see if I can now craft some bits and bobs, shall we, people? So, I can craft one of those. Is that it? Okay, well then I can do one of those if I wanted to. Or I could do life support gel. Yeah. Okay, what about the iron battery? How many can I do of them? I can do, I can do quite a few of them. Alright, well we get, we'll have ten of them then, please. Thank you. Now I do want to do some more of these, but to craft those I need dehydrogen jelly. Which means I need the blue crystals. And as you can see, we've got a, a freaking sentinel flying around here, which isn't great. Anyway, back to hatching eggs. So let's hatch this one, shall we? Let's have a look at this guy. So he looks really small. He is very small. I think this one is going to do the um, the, the uh, dive bombing. But he's quite fast. Doesn't fly high. And yeah, he does the sort of... the well, uh, Slightly does the dive bombing. But not as bad as my first mount. No. Yeah, he's actually okay. Oh no, he does, he does, he does the dive bombing. So he does the dive bombing. But look how fast he is. I don't want to go too far away from that safe point. And that uh, nice little galactic trade terminal. He's also hard to steer. He's good for a straight line, is that one. And he's super quick. Okay, so let's get back to that trade terminal, people. I want to see what's for sale. Right, so we're back here, people. Let's hit this up, then. Chikapow! Let's see what we can purchase, Kate. 
So buying in here, exosuit upgrade chart. Oh, nice. I can't afford it, but it was nice to see it in there. Quantum computer as well. I oh, got star silk for sale in here. Pretty nice. Decrypted user data. Okay, what can I sell? I can sell you my living slime. There you go, you can have that. And I don't really want to sell much else, to be fair. I think I, I keep the rest. Yeah, I keep the rest. Okay, right. Lovely jubbly. Oh, we can sell the marrow bulb, I suppose. I don't think I can use the marrow bulb for much at this stage. Nah, I don't really overly need the units, though. Okay, right. So what's inside these little red boxes? I've already, I've already half-inched these red boxes. It looks like I have. What's on the damage? Is there any more rusted metal? There is. Lovely. We'll have that, then. What I'm going to get gifted. Ah, got a life support gel. So I've now got three of them. I've got three of them. So I think I'm good to go. Let's hatch another egg. So this is Captain Steve's dragon. He's pretty darn awesome, isn't he? Let's give him a treat. Let's give him a bit of a ride. So this is kind of like a mid-range size one. And he flies sort of fairly okay. Not as fast as the little guy. But yeah, his turn circle's a bit better. He flies a little higher. He's quite cool, is that dragon? Okay. So we've got him. The idea is, if I can get all these up to the age where they can lay their own eggs, I can stop messing about with my saves, because you saw the palaver that I had the other day. If you didn't watch episode 9, holy fudge. Okay, right, so let's hatch this one as well then. Aha. I think this is my going to be my main guy. I, I quite like this dude. Here we are. Yeah, this guy flies fairly quick. He flies fairly high, and uh, his stamina's pretty darn good. Um, anyway, let's jump off of him, and I'll just show you all their stats, people, inside of my pet lineup now. Right, I'm just going to hit another save quickly on here. Righto, so I've got all these eggs that I can give away. I've got six eggs I can give away today. Um, they, they're all going to hatch, hopefully, within the next three hours or so. And I'm going to gift into these to people that come to my base and drop off sack venom and also drop off trinkets. Holy fudge! Did you see that, people? I got attacked by bloody pirates! Little gits! Okay, well, I am at a point of, like, you know, a decent, a decent area. You know, I... I've managed to get underground, and I'm also at a little mini campsite. Holy mackerel! So you know what? I've saved here, but they're not going to go away. Normally you'd have to get into your ship and shoot them down. But you can see there, my shield is going back up. So I've managed to get myself under cover. I've got myself out of the way. And because my shield is still freaking damaged, and I don't want these to freaking die again... I'm just going to reload. I'm going to reload my save just to get rid of those pirates. There we go. Oh, that's my starting day now, and I've finished my morning tea. I've got carried away, people. You know what? This is probably a good time for me to actually shut down, go make myself another cup of tea, and uh, pick pick back up on my lunch break, which is going to be a little way into today. Well, not my lunch break. My, maybe my first tea break. I could do another 20 minutes and get myself to that relic site. If nothing interesting happens... I'll see you at that relic site, basically, people. Because I need to get a wiggle on. You want me um, to shoot you? Right. Yeah. Basically, okay. if I get the settings right... Yeah. ...and get it taken and do the PvP, yeah. I'm hoping that I can give you those settings... Right. ...and make you the last man standing. So if there's only two of us left, I would expect yeah. you to cut me down. Oh, no, as, no, no. As... It, 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 it's, it's just one the last man standing for a faction. So, you know, if you you and me are the last people, we win, basically. Ah, right. So it's the last faction that's got a member left. And then, you know, ah. so if it was just me and you, you would be like, my hero, my champion. Again, okay, that'd be cool. <laughs> I just, I wanted to make sure because... Uh... I don't, I don't suppose you've got any wiring looms on you, have you? Um, give me a second. I'll see what I can um, find. Would you like a, um, a, a mount, like a horse? It looks like the one out of the Light No Fire trailer. Oh, yeah, I would love one of those. Sweet. Well, there you go. There you go. Have one of those, then. Um, no, give me a second. Cool. I'll give you the egg. Thank uh, you. I'm looking, I'm looking through... I've got a, a whole load of junk. 
I've got 17 wiring looms, if there's any use to you. Uh, yeah, I could do with a few wiring looms, yeah, just uh, just in case things get damaged. I've got a damaged piece of tech at the moment. I need just a wiring loom, and that, that can get it fixed then, so that'd be awesome. Oh, oh nice there one. There you go. Thank you very I much. Some, I was killing some sentinels earlier, so if that helps. Oh, okay. You, you got any, what, shards um, of glass or something then? Yeah, I, I got those out of shards of glass. Sweet. So hopefully that might. Nice one. Yeah, that's going to help me with my. That's that's really helped. That's helped loads for my um, for my life support. That's brilliant. Hopefully this will help. Oh, I put that in the wrong one. I went to Starship. No, the anomaly. Yeah. It's Friday. Oh, okay. No, there's ever uh, in the rules. Yeah. It doesn't say you can't go and do the mission. But I would rather be a hundred percent. Um, I don't think we've even discussed that one for weekend mission running, getting some quick silver. It might be an idea. I'd have to run it past Cynical and uh, Ricey, see how they feel about it. It just means that people will be using their ships and stuff. So I, I know you use your ship here, but you probably hit join game and join me, didn't you? And just flew down from the main title screen, yeah? I did actually, yeah. yes. Um... Yeah. Nice one. Well, thank you very much, buddy. That's that's awesome. Nice one. Oh, you, you, you're very welcome. As I said, God. I'm trying to do things right and get things right. So that's why I was thinking on the last man standing, if we can actually get settings yeah. perfect um, to increase basically oh, yeah. our outcome yeah. than anybody else, it, it would be ideal. That would be ideal, yeah. Um I'm slowly getting there. I mean, to be fair, I, I, I hope that we win the quest. The whole getting the treasure, the getting the sack venom. I just got a load of sack venom today. I put down a beacon, um, a red oh, beacon oh, just over excellent. yonder hill. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I'm just, was it near the south? I think so. I put a beacon down on it as well at the moment. Where is the beacon? It is... Oh, my beacon's vanished. This game is so janky. Yeah. But anyway... Uh, um... I'll, I'll find it somewhere because, as I said, I got lucky yesterday, so Sweet. maybe you found the ones that I've got. Was there Come six on. of them there? Uh, no, there was like 12. Ah, see, I only got six. Yeah, I managed to pick up 11 of them, um, but then the Sentinels were getting the better of me. They broke my tech, which you've just helped me repair. But yeah, that was, yeah. That was a pain in the neck, hiding yeah. in the ground. It's going to be an interesting episode, that one, when I put that live. I had to run away from those this morning when I was getting the album perils. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does add that extra layer of danger, doesn't it? It's, it's a fun way of playing. But yeah, I don't really mind if we if I don't win the last man standing. I hope somebody from my faction wins. I don't think I'm pulled up enough to win. I don't know. Um, you may be. Um, if I get more stuff for a multi yeah. yeah, if you find anything inside the damage tech, I mean, my multi tool is not bad at the moment. Its damage potential is 25047.9, so it's quite good on damage potential. Well, that is good. Um, I, I take it you're actually just using a bolt caster on it. No. Um, so when I claimed this wand, it already had two S class freaking neutron cannons installed in it. It's going to vaporize people. So. I've, 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 yeah. I'm going to be a glass a, cannon. That's how much 16 and a half of the one I've got. Okay. I've just got the neutron cannons. Cool. Well, um, but like I said, I can't mm -hmm. use it, so won't. Yeah, <laughs> I know, it sucks um, a bit. I'm going to be a glass cannon. I'm just going to try and take out as many people as I can and just hope that somebody in my faction is the last man standing. Anyway, I need to press on and get to this relic site and go get a treasure. Then I've got to fly all back to my base. It's going to take me hours of the day to do. Mental. <laughs> but thanks well, for those I'm other done. charts. Well, people, I've arrived at Cated at a relic site. It's not the relic site. There's another relic site just over yonder hill. Over there, look. I've got another 41 minutes to get, well, 44 minutes to get to that one. But yeah, just come across this one by sheer chance. Awesome. Let's see what we get, people. I'll just get all the keys and then I'll reconvene just as I open the chest, peeps. Well, here we go, chums. Let's open up the chest. Boom. Pow. Chicka done. Oh, my days! 
We just got ourselves a golden one, people. Let's have a look, see. Oh, it's worth 1.6 million. I guess I got lucky, lucky. I guess I did. Right, well, now we're just going to fly over to the other relic, which is over this way. Chikapow. And let's get my bird. Coolio. Uh, this guy. Let's ride! Take us to the skies, my pretty. Yes. Right, another 44 minutes this way. But as you can see there, look, it's not 44 minutes at all. You can see that time just plummeting as I fly across the sky. Well, jumps. I've just come across another relic site on my way to the relic site. Yeah, look, 19 minutes that way, and I've got another one right here. This is going to give me the echoes of the past, though, if I hit the right option this time. And hopefully I get another treasure location. All good. Yes, yeah, so it's over here. It's up Knowledge Stone. Hit this up. This is where you don't want to hammer the buttons and go through too fast. Okay. Cool. And there we go. And I want to select that one. There. Sweet. Hopefully that's going to find me another relic site and I can go dig up even more treasure. However, I'm running out of space because of all these eggs I've got on my person. And the bits and bobs that I got gifted earlier. So, 19... Oh. Has it highlighted the same one again? Or has it given me a separate one? I think it's locked onto the same one that I was already heading to, people. Oh, well. It is what it is. Cool. Let's get my bird. And let's continue flying. Okay, chums, well, I'm still coming across buildings. There's a minor settlement here. We can go check out the multi-tool. Let's have a look-see. Recharge my own life support. I should use oxygen for now. Sweet. Well, let's go hit up this and get the um, navigational datas. Shkaboom. Navigational data. Lovely. And over this way. On this landing pad, there's a few bits and bobs that I want over here as well. Rusted metal, lovely. Nanites in there. I want to get a relic. And we've got a storm, so I might as well shelter in here until the storm ends. We've got ourselves a multi tool. Let's have a look at it. It's a C class, it's got a fair few slots. It hasn't got an advanced mining laser in it, but it has got a bolt caster. Quite nice. So, yeah, not too bad. It's miles away from our actual um, factional area, so I don't think it's worth really sharing the coordinates for this one. Got some nav data, pretty nice. Grab this off the wall. Might as well open these. There's usually a little mini vendor in here, isn't there, tucked into the wall, but I'm not... Oh, there he is. I went straight past him. Hello there, mate. What have you got for sale? Let's have a look, see. Let's see if he's selling nav data. He's got wiring looms. I got gifted some earlier, so that was quite handy. Oh, exosuit upgrade chart as well. Very handy to have. So it might be worth giving you guys the coordinates for this. You might want to come further afield. So I will I will give the coordinates for it. So here we go. Let's just take me off the screen for a second. Yeah. There you go. There's the coordinates right there to my crew. I guess. And uh, we're back. Pow. Right. Well, I guess I'm heading over. That's where I need to go then. I'll just grab that plant. Might as well. Lovely. Let me out. Cool. Well, we're going to continue flying that way. Seven more minutes. But we might come across more nav data on the way. You know what? If I do, I'll just collect it. You don't have to see me collect it, do you? Right, well, I've arrived, located at the actual relic site that I had earmarked all that time ago. Got to get the keys and same drill. I reconvene once I'm about to open the chest. I guess. Well, here we go, people. Going to access the old chest. Here we go. Chicka pow, chicka boom, and done. Sweet. Oh, okay. Cursed documents. Hmm. Okay. Well, we got those. 
And now my inventory is completely full. I am glad I got that though. That's awesome. And the fact that I managed to get some lovely sack venom on the way here too. Definitely doing my part for my team. Awesome. Right, well, now I've got the journey back to my base. Which, that's not it. How far away is my base? Will it be where my ship is? Because, you know, my ship is still parked at my base. Brew crew, four hours all the way over there. Oh my days. That's a trek and a half. But at least I've got my bird. So, yeah, let's, 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 choose, choose, let's choose a different bird, I think. I go for one that is fast. I go for... Pink. This guy. No, this guy. Sweet. Let's go. Back to base. I'll see you when I get back to base, people. Chums, I'm flying back over to my actual hub. It's nice once you actually see, you know, all the buildings coming into sight from your faction. I am home. Here I am. Awesome. Let's, uh, let's touch on down on the surface. Let's run on in. And I need to put all my things inside my vault. I can swap back to normal mode now that I'm actually back inside of my faction. Let's go hit up my vault. Sweet. And let's get all this stuff transferred over. That. And those. I guess. And that. And that. We've got some real awesome items now. So these are my two main items. I've got that one that's worth 1.5. That is worth one six. Hopefully we've done enough people to you know, beat the other factions. I think it's just the highest value that we're going for and then the total amount of Sack Venom. So we've got 40 so far. If you have got Sack Venom, make sure you get it turned in. If you've got anything higher value than these, make sure they come over to me. Anything that's less than that, I don't know whether we're going to be doing a full calculation of it all added together or whether we're just going for the total, the, the best find you know i think it's going to be the best find so technically if you have got anything that's not as good as these two items you may as well sell it for units and the old station you know so there we go people i mean all this sort of stuff i could always re-gift this to people when we do the next quest or something because rewards i don't know but yeah i've got a few bits that i've got left over i've got some eggs that i can give out to people so anybody that is turning stuff in if you're quick Hopefully I'll be able to give you a pet of sorts. I've got four flyers and then I've got two rideable mounts as well. So yeah, drop on by. If you haven't got charts, I've got six more charts. So I might use those myself over the weekend though, to be honest. And go and get a load more relics. See if I can beat these. Very cool. Anyway, that's everything I've got for you this, this morning, people. I will be sitting here though, offline. Well, not offline, but online for any of my... Um, cohorts and my crew the brew crew to turn in items to me people so you gotta just pop into the old cram remote and uh keep an eye out for people coming to visit so if you do come and drop stuff off i will give you a pet egg if i've got one okay peeps Whew, that was that was a fun morning anyway people thank you for watching goodbye goodbye and goodbye again well chums it's the final day of turning and as you can see here, I'm with Spotted Badger right now. And Spotted Badger has given me loads of stuff. Look at all this freaking sack venom. Okay, well, they've, they've been busy with the quest. Albion pearls I don't need. Yes, try not to give me things I don't need. Because um, I don't want you to fill up my inventory with this sort of stuff. I give those back to Spotted Badger. No, thank you. I don't need them. They're not part of the quest. They're not part of the quest. Thank you. Cool, yeah. I would invite him to my group, but it says there that he's busy at the moment, so I can't really interact with him. Look. No, stop giving me Albion pearls. Okay, I'll give them back to him in a moment, because that's just going to fill me up. I don't want to just ditch them. Ah, oh, he's giving me loads. Now, I could sell them, but there's no Galactic Trade Terminals anywhere near me. Oh, he's giving me a companion egg as well. There we go. I'll invite him to group now. Hopefully he'll be able to hear me in a moment. So if I go into options, network, and if I change that text-to-speech, voice chat enabled, hopefully he'll be able to hear me. Hello there, Spotted Badger! Spotted Badger, thank you very much for handing in so much freaking stuff. Awesome job, mate. 
I do not need the Albion Pearls. Do you want them back so you can sell them and get yourself a load of units? Because at the moment they're just going to take up space on me when people are handing stuff in. Uh, well, yeah, okay then. Okay, here you go, buddy. I'll give those back to you. I see Captain Cynical lost all his base and all his goodies. Yeah, that was a fun time, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> uh, whoever got him had the same visage as what I've got on at the moment, so I think it might have been somebody from our crew, but they haven't put anything on Discord to claim that it was their kill. And um, it does look a, did look a bit suspicious, because there was a ship landed behind the person that killed Cynical, and of course, as you know, you shouldn't be flying ships. So I think it was a bit of a sneaky assassination, to be honest. Uh, well, all's fair in love and war. <laughs> I'm fairly sure there's going to be a couple of people that stretch the rules to their um, advantage. But, um, yeah, I'm trying my best to keep to the rules. I mean, I have kept to the rules totally, 100%. Um, yeah. There you are. I put all these sack venoms in. Oh, my God. You, you've got loads of sack venoms. And you've got these in the <laughs> wild by take, finding them, yeah? That's all I've been picking up, actually. Yeah. Well, I can see you've got a couple of treasures as well. That's awesome. Yeah. And you just gave me a creature egg, which is Tiamat. Is that a dragon, then? I have no idea what it is. I, it just appeared in my inventory. I thought, you can have that. <laughs> cool. Well, have you, you, you can pass it on to somebody. Have you got a winged flying creature? Oh, yes, yes. You have, OK. You gave, you, I think I was the first one for you to give to. Cool. Awesome. Is it ready to lay an egg? Uh, not yet, I don't think. No, none of mine are either. I've got two eggs, the one you just gave me and one other. Um, but yeah. I've I'm, got... Yeah, I've got loads of stuff in my inventory. I don't know whether you want any of it. You got uh, gold? No, the only things I really need is some shield modules or movement modules. Um, I'm slightly underpowered when it comes to shields. Well, that's about all I need. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't need any item, other items then. No, no, I'm okay for anything else. It's just uh, tech, really. Um, yeah. Oh. I've only got two boosted slots uncovered inside of my tech as well, which, um, yeah, I'm fairly sure I'm a bit of a glass cannon at the moment. I, I think I could take a couple of people out, but I don't think it's going to take much for them to take me out, which would be a real shame. Well, that that big long stick of yours, you should be able to take out a few people. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping so. It's got the uh, neutron cannon in there, so I'm pretty uh, adept with that one. So, On uh, my other saves, I've got uh, a similar one to that. Cool. Um, and it'll take out anything, basically. <laughs> Lovely. Well, what I'm thinking Good of doing time. is on Monday is I'm going to be... Yeah. We've got to have PvP on the whole time on Monday and be in survival mode. But yeah. I'm going to try and form, like, little mini pos posses, like little mini hunting or defence groups. And, uh, yeah, yeah so if, if you want to join us on that, then... I mean... It would be, it would be helpful if everybody painted red. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yep. Um, we're, we're because gonna... I've got no idea who's who at the moment. No. I keep, yeah. I keep coming across somebody in a silver um, mm. who keeps popping up now and again. But ominous ominous really guy, is. yeah, ominous something. He's really cool. That's uh, it. Yeah, he's yeah. a Scottish chap. He's actually really good. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's on our team. But all I'm doing is looking at the nearby bases and going by the players that I see there, but it doesn't always list the actual oh. persons that own I mean, the you, base. You're, you're... Your base, I've been online since about 8 o'clock this morning, hmm. and your base has been, just been totally disappeared altogether. Until I logged in. Nothing there at all. Yeah. But yeah. This, 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 is, now, this is what I'm worried about when it comes to light no fire. And oh. you know, Hello Game saying everybody's going to play together on the one planet, like we're doing right now. As you know, yeah. This experiment was half to do with that as well, you know, just to sort of test bed stuff. And... There are little quirks just like that, Mr. Badger, that, that do have me slightly concerned. I was a little bit, <laughs> let's say, concerned, annoyed, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. that the, you know, these they seem to make the rules up as you go along. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a sort of a test game. Well, fair's fair, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, we've all been guinea pigs on this, you know. Um, Sadly, it's been an evolve. I think, mean, 
Cynical kind of got a little bit excited with the idea, jumped in, got Ricey on board, and um, Rice has been a godsend in trying to help us sort of like narrow down the rules and things like that. Otherwise, it would I just mean, be what... complete chaos if it was me and Cynical. What you three have got is a bloody good idea. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully by the time it comes around to its second iteration. Well, what we're thinking yeah. is wait till the No Man's Sky update comes out, which should be yeah. either tail end of this month, mid next month. Yeah. Do let everybody have the excitement of that, and then after it dips again, and we're seeing a bit of a lull, is do this yeah. again, do it again. We were going to do it on other planets in this system, but I'm thinking maybe we should just look for another really nice lush planet, maybe one that's even got flying creatures on it already, yeah. like beetles or butterflies, yeah. and um, go from there. Um, yeah, let's we'll see. Anyway, <laughs> nice to speak to you. You too, um, Mr. Badger. Yeah. And I'll, I'll see you Monday, probably. Cool, cool. Well, I've, I've done a little recording. Do you mind being in a video? No, not, no, not at all. Sweet. Lovely. All this battle-hardened talk and talking of concerns and things, it's going to make a lovely video, I think. Right. Cool. I'll all see right, you mate. later, then. Enjoy the rest Bye. of your weekend, and then it will be carnage as of tomorrow. I can guarantee it. Yep. <laughs> see you later. See you later, mate. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, chums. Well, we've got E Slick that's just arrived at my base. At the moment, I can't invite him to my actual group because he's too busy giving me stuff. I'm getting loads of stuff from E Slick. Nice one. I do not need semiconductor stuff. I don't need a quad servo. E Slick, stop. Freaking stop, mate. I'm going to be binning half this stuff because today is the day of turning. I don't need stuff I haven't asked for. Oh, my days. My crew is awesome. They're giving me things that they think might be helpful to me. I don't know why they're giving me all this stuff. Okay, let's see if we can get get, get over to him. Is Lick, are you going to are you going to accept the invitation? Oh yes, yep. you have. Hello there, buddy. Can you yeah, hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. I can. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, I just came over to turn in my daily uh my daily haul. Cool. Well, you have been doing this daily. You've given me quite a lot of stuff so far. This is pretty cool. Uh, but a lot of this I don't need. And at the moment, it's just going to sort of weigh me down. I've got nowhere to really put it. And with turn-in day, okay. I'm going to need the storage. Do you want some of this back, like the hardened frame and the quad servos? Yeah, whatever whatever you don't need, come on, give it on back. Sweet. Nice. That's a cool accent. Where are you from? Iowa. Sweet. US. Very cool. What's it like there today? You uh, missing out on the sunshine uh... for this? Well, right now it's uh, early in the morning, seven o'clock, but it's supposed to be nice and eighty degrees today. Oh, wow! Nice and warm, yeah. Yeah, Ivy's in the garden doing some gardening at the moment. It's a beautiful day here as well. But I'm just nice, saying. nice. Yeah, it, 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 you guys have put so much effort into this event. You know, if I have to sacrifice a weekend, it's it's what you got to do, isn't it? It's good fun though. I uh, saw so you oh, got yeah. a, you got a flying creature. I just saw it fly past. Was that one that I've given you, or, or Miyogi? Yep, Miyogi gave me one last night. I'm still waiting on it to, uh, to to hatch it. But yeah, that's that's one of the ones you gave me. The flying mount that I came in on. Cool. Awesome. And I appreciate it. I surely do. I've only got Helps two two eggs on me. I was hoping to have more to give out to people that turn stuff in today. But it's good to see you've already got one. Uh, yeah. Cool. That's all right, cause yeah, my buddy he's about to join in here in a little bit. He just uh, seen that I was playing this, and he's like, well, "So what's the rules?" I said, "Well, look up uh, Captain Steve and Professor Cynical. They have the rules on their uh, stream there, and cool. yeah, come on down and start building, buddy." So he should be popping in here in a few minutes. Sweet. I mean, he's going to be greatly underpowered. But what I'm thinking is on Monday tomorrow, when we are to start this war, is perhaps form little groups. Hopefully you can join my group, but if you can't join my group, if it's already full, just I would suggest trying to get people in a group. Strength in numbers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've noticed. I've seen uh, Professor Cynical. He's on He's on planet right now, and he's on the hunt, I hear. He's yeah. been killed like... Uh, like two of our members and like three of the of the empire's members. Yeah, he wants to sort of like um, call our numbers before the actual event. He's being a bit of an assassin. I mean, me and Ricey and him have all got this wand, which is slightly overpowered anyway. I think that's a little bit uh -huh. it's a little bit naughty what he's doing, but I think all it's doing is sort of um, it's adding a bit of excitement to it, a little bit of danger. 
But right now, yeah. you know, if you hand in stuff in and you're in our territory, you can stay in normal mode. You can turn PvP off. So let him try. You know, can't kill someone that's right. immortal. You know. Right. <laughs> yeah, so. I've seen his on his uh, recent video. He got killed. Yeah. So he had to he had to delete his whole whole base. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it might have been one of our team that got him because you know you've got the same visage as me. And I'd imagine other yeah. people that are part of the brew crew have also gone for this visage. And it was a, it was a guy with this visage that had a blue face. I don't know him. He hasn't oh. been in here to drop anything off. But what I would say no. is he arrived in a spaceship. He landed right by Cynical and then murdercated him, which is a bit naughty. You know, that that's against the rules. Right, right. But at the same time... That is a bit naughty. I, I've noticed that Cynical has got max shield and I have no idea how he's meant to achieve that. So, you know... Well, um, I have been coming across the, the 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 pilot vendor that lands next to your base. Yeah, and I've gotten a couple of mods out of uh, you know a couple a couple of technology from him and stuff. So my want my my multi tool ain't too shabby right now. As far as shield though, I haven't found any uh, shield mods yet. Well, I was lucky. The first vendor I come across sold me one one, so I've got one X class shield module, but that's all I've got. I'm hoping to see oh. the trade vendor land today, but um, sometimes when he does, he lands on my ship, and then I can't interact with him. I keep getting in and out of my ship, and I'm, by the time I've moved my ship, he's already taken off. Oh, yeah, yeah that's kind of uh, that kind of sucks. <laughs> it kind of does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh oh, hold on. I see Professor Cynical is only eight hours away now. He was thirteen hours away. So he's on his way here, is he? He looks like he's getting closer to to our kingdom over here. Well, you've handed your stuff in, so you know that's that's all good. I, I'm in I'm in normal mode right now, and I've got my PVP off because it's the last day of turning. Really, he he shouldn't be going. He should be doing what we're doing right now: is standing in his base and taking everything that his crew has got. Right. I, he he lost everything, so he should be collecting stuff instead of trying to kill people. Exactly. But anyway, just stick PvP off, stay in normal mode. Today is the last day of the quest, quest one. So we're not doing battle officially until tomorrow, which is a bit a bit annoying if he does manage to kill some of my actual army before the day is out, which is bang out of order right. in my opinion. But that, if that's how he wants to play, that's how he wants to play. Well, if he comes a knocking over here, I'm going to put him down. Oh, I hope you freaking do. Yep, I'll be doing some air grabs if you do, mate, and a little dance. Yep. Right on. Cool. Well, um, I, I've, I've done, been doing little recordings of people that have visited today. Do you mind if I use this bit of footage inside of the video? No, go ahead. Sweet. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for turning in. Thank you very much for all your participation in this event. But hopefully I'll see you again in the next few days before we meet our demise or win. We're going to win. I hope We're so. We're going to take it all. Brick heck, yes. Yeah, that's the attitude, isn't it? Yeah. Nice one, soldier. Yes, sir. Salute to Mondo. That's right. <laughs> cool. All right. Get out there. Nice one. Thank you, buddy. See you later. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. I am enjoying this, people. I am enjoying meeting the members of the Brew Crew, firing them up with a little bit of a morale pep talk. Heck yeah. And um, getting all my stuff turned in. I mean, Eastlick has been handing me stuff on a day to day basis, as you heard there. And um, yeah. I would say my crew has done a fantastic uh, job. Cool. He was just on a video call with me on um, on, on Facebook, but yeah, he's, he's uh, gonna he's well, gonna head over in game in a second. He'll be here in a moment, hopefully. Oh, hopefully, and I say thank you for um, his his wonderful gifts yesterday. Superb stuff. Sweet, awesome. Well, hopefully, he'll be oh, able well, to come over and help me out in a bit as well. Well, I've got some gear for you if use you want my to. Dragon, hold on. Yeah. Let me just use my dragon. I'll come to you. Um, I mean, Cynical can't kill me anyway because I'm, I'm in the right game mode for today because people are handing stuff in. I just say I came to you to get stuff. Right, here we go. So, uh, call in my pigeon. Yeah. Um, so, where's Cynical now? I've lost sight of him. You'll be milling around somewhere. Give me a second. There is an upstairs to this place, by the way. I can see Pinion. Pinion's down by my base right now. I better get back down there, really, and go see him but yeah thank you for all this stuff mate awesome one one quick thing just before you um pop off yeah i want you to check this out because um 
I really do want you to be the last man standing. Go on, yeah? Yes, I do. You're the leader of my faction. And as such, you should claim the honour. So, do you follow me through here? Yeah. And to this little puppy. Zoom. Hey, okay. Steve. Whoa. Oh, hello, he's sleeping. to pop in. Uh, just to give you a heads up, Professor Cynical is headed your way. He just tried to attack me. I was in, I turned my PvP off, but he is headed your direction. Okay. All right. All right. Would, you, would, would you like to, uh, would you like me to join up on you and uh, destroy this man? We could do. We could all just team up and gank him, I suppose, couldn't we? We could try. I mean, if the, if he does kill me, I can respawn, but you guys can't. He's taken advantage massively of the situation. I'm not, I'm not too worried about um, whether I get to respawn <laughs> or not. I don't know if he like, feels the same, but he's more than welcome to come here. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, well shall yeah, we get battle right ready? Above you. I he guess. Should be right above you. He's shall we right head on out? Oh. Yeah, so, he's like right happy. above you, Professor. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, he's actually looking for us, which is sweet as anything. I did try to um, group chat with him to, uh, to to invite him over to see, okay. to see well, if he wanted to play a little. But I will. I will. I will turn my multiplayer. I'll turn my PvP on then. So. Um, Let's do this. I'll, I'll put it into survive. Oh, I better put it in survival mode as well. Here we go. Just right, so he knows that we can see him. There we PvP, are. PvP, anyone. So I've got that on, on put marker, anyone. And okay. I've got it in survival mode. All right, well, let's go get him. All right. Okay. All right, I'm headed your direction. Whoa! <laughs> You're off already. Give me a second, young money. I catch up. Okay, okay. Let's get him. Where is Hi, he? let's have him. Where is he? It can only come in one entrance. Mm -hmm. now, I can't see I him see... at the moment. Yeah. He can only come in one way. Shall I invite Which him is... to group? You can try, see if he joins. Okay, here we go. Let's um let's have a look. See networking. Uh, View nearby players list. Invite to group. There we are. Let's uh, let's see what he says. Ah, um, I'm gonna be second. Where are those bloody doors? Well, Did how do seen... there, Mister Cynical? You sneaky sausage. I see that you've made it over to the O7 Brew Crew. Hey, Cynical, what are you doing? Hopefully, he can hear us. I don't know whether he's got his mic to hand, but hopefully, he can see the chat and stuff. So. <laughs> If you wanted to declare war early, Mr. Cynical, um, I think it would only be fair that if you do take me out, I don't respawn. And I think if I take you out, you don't respawn. You know, apart from maybe to get screenshots of our treasure and loot, uh, if you've come all this way. Yeah. Oh, he's entered Zeppi Zeppi. Is this your building? Oh, there he is. There he is. Come on then, Cynical old chap. Well, I can get him Come through on, the wall. Bring yourself. I can get him through the wall with this one. So I'll teach him. Where'd he go? Oh, I'm still hitting him through the wall. <laughs> Take that, cynical. Can I bring my big toy out to play? Did I get him? Is he dead? Yeah, it says dead. Anonymous yeah, he's combat dead. dead. Got him. Ha. Well, that's that's. Is he dead? Steve, you absolute legend! Is he dead? Or is he gone? Yes, he's dead. He respawned. <laughs> he respawned 13 hours away. He's back at his base. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got him. I didn't Steve even... Got him. You're a legend, mate. You're an absolute legend. legend. I shot him through Steve the wall. got him. <laughs> 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 Come on, <laughs> Bruce. Oh, dear. Bruce. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> Hey! That's how you do it. Heck That's yeah. How you do it. All right, well, well Steve, have yeah. a present for you if you check out the roof. Oh, sweet. I'm gonna get. Well, I'm surprised I got him with. Um, how are you doing? He's like. Oh, look, 905! Awesome. This would be a place, perfect place to do a little victory dance. Yes. <laughs> I have to say, my heartbeat went up a couple of notches then, lads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm joining in that, Poppy. Hey, what a day! <laughs> Absolute day! 
Awesome. We got him. That'd teach him to come all this way to yeah. stir up trouble, wouldn't it? <laughs> he, he can probably <laughs> still hear us. So, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, the only reason I could shoot through the walls is because I've got the neutron cannon. It's got a big blast radius. I didn't think it'd do too much damage. It was only hitting him for 600 damage each shot. So I'm surprised that only three shots was all I needed to take him out. Yeah. Oh, the neutron, so the neutron is a uh, there we are. beast. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Steve, you're a legend, mate. An absolute legend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anything he's got in that vault now, or anything he collected, it now has to get burnt. I don't know yeah, whether it does or doesn't. Gone. I think it's just the base that he has to rebuild, but he puts down the base computer by his base and reclaims all the bits of it. So. Well, that's it. I saw his YouTube earlier, and he has to destroy... All the treasure, everything yep. has uh -huh. to go. Oh, okay. Anything he's been given go. has now gone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. So well, whatever he got, whatever he got given between the first time that he died and just now is all gone. Well, I did change it into survival. I did exactly what I should have done before I engaged in combat. I mean, <laughs> to be honest, he should have waited for yeah, us to come was, out of the base, shouldn't he? I was at my watchtower just watching him. He kept getting closer and closer, and he came up to my base. He tried to kill me, and I was in. I had my. Uh, mm -hmm. I was at my base, so I had my PvP turned off because I was building and watching him. Yeah. And yeah, he came up and uh, tried to I kill to, me. Okay. I have to be honest, Steve. Yeah. As a leader. You're an absolute legend. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, thank guys. You. For all the work so, so, guys, on that demise of Cynical, we have come to an agreement with Ricey's approval that Cynical is allowed to respawn, but he's got to stick to his own region for the rest of today, and Handin is going to be peaceful without any worry of Cynical darkening our skies. And it, and it does, if it doesn't, doesn't stick to those stick rules, rules, and it kills it. Hello, Miyagi, so these pets that you're bringing into the verse, how are you yes, going about sir. doing it exactly? Right, well, what I'm using is, as uh, you actually know, as people may know or may not know, well, I, I would occur to have created, so that's a system No Man's Sky, the creature builder on the PC, which is freely available to everyone. You have to have a PC, you have to have the save editor, and you have to have, and then convert them over. Because you, you said to me, I may not have been the first creature builder uh, that three years ago, but I was one of the originals. Yeah. And what we did was use our spreadsheets to create creatures. Cool. And other people have said, well, we can do that with coding. Of course you can. It'll take you weeks. Yeah. If you want to do it for weeks, then do it, do it for weeks. I've had many skeptics. Well, the original creature builders, and I'll tell you this now, and you people can do it, are Wireless Dreams, ST, Throttle Jockey, mm -hmm. uh, one other gentleman that will remain nameless because he doesn't want to be named, and the other, the other person is Mercenary, who modified some of the pets that we did. Cool. And those are, the, those are the only people, and if it's a Miyogi pet, it defers to a lush biome, a grassy, verdant, tropical, or that ilk, you'll know it's a building of your pet because that pet will default to that. Very easy to hatch. Only on that. And Precisely in this event, because, yeah. Yeah, because majority of planets are verdant, grassy, temperate. There's normally one in every system. That's why I deferred rather than a volcanic one. Well, she'd yeah. be going around, or a dead world, you'd be going around for hours trying to find a uh, one. There is a certain logic in my madness. Nice one. And as far, you know, so. so so, yeah, right, ahead, so right now, you're actually calling in the pets, one by one. I am. Feeding yes. them with creature pellets. Yes. yes. Making sure they're happy so they would lay an egg, right? Yes. And yeah. And then, got to, yeah. I've, al I've already tested them on the... Because you have to test each one of them on my uh, console character before the, uh, whether they work or not. So you have to cool. test them with the... Because I did create other creatures, but they were crashing. I created a rabbit. I created a turkey. I created other things, but they kept crashing. No so idea. I can't risk them, you know. No. So I, I've got um, I've got one creature which is spectacular, which is called a skeleton rider, and no. that has five of the bone cats merged into one. Well, I have a message from Cynical. I'll stop recording. I'll play the message. Skeletons. One of those skeletons. Oh, skeletons. Yeah, yeah, of course. The skeletons. Sorry, I, mean, so I would you like one. Of, now. Please. You can have one now. 
I, I, I can't take it somewhere. to the next event with me. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can have it for this event if you want. It's ready. It's ready to go. I've it's done. Ready. I've done all the travelling I need to do, and I did the. Uh, uh, well, I didn't do the task. My God. Well, we remember a spawning said... tomorrow. You've got a chance tomorrow, so there is a silver lining to the respawning of Cynical. Oh. Well, why well, 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 am I spawning? I haven't. Tomorrow, when it's your tea break, you fancy going cynical hunting? Yeah, that sounds good to me. And then, when it's your lunch break, do you fancy going racing hunting? We can do, yeah, it can be fun. Yeah, tomorrow's like last person standing type stuff, and it's until there is pretty much the last person standing. If, if, the, if I'm in, say, a group with you, though, I don't really feel like I'm going to be killing you off to take the mantle what i'd probably say is well you know we'll take the win for the faction and i'd knight you or something and then call you sir poison elvis from this point onwards <laughs> yeah that sort of thing i don't know yeah so unfortunately i will not be around for that tomorrow i oh, go okay. back to work after holiday oh fair enough buddy but i will check in when i get off of uh work and uh it'll probably be about uh let's see That'll be around midnight your time. Oh, okay. Uh, well, hopefully so there's still some people about to murder Hopefully everything works out cake. good for you. Yeah. And s crack on. All right, mate. Well, it's been nice speaking to you, and uh, I'm glad you've enjoyed the event. And, uh, yeah, take yeah, it was, easy, sir. Uh, aside from a few bad actors, it's been a great, great event, and I'm glad you guys organized it, and I look forward to you guys organizing a few more of these. Heck yeah, it's been good. I, I definitely want to do it again. I've got talking to a lot of yes. people that I don't normally talk to, so it's been lovely for me as well. It's it has. Awesome. It's, it's actually, yeah, it's brought the community together because everybody plays. You go up on the anomaly at any given point, especially on the weekend missions, mm -hmm. and there's people up there doing missions, but not a lot of them other than yourself and your crew doing them together. And now you've got people on planet doing everything together and cooperating and building next to each other. Yeah. It's quite nice. Yeah, I mean, Hello Games have given us all these sandboxy tools. We might as well use them and role play it out a little bit. So yeah. absolutely. Okay. So brilliant job on you three. Well, thank you. I pass that message on to the other guys. In fact, I've just done a little recording of this. I'll slip it into one of my latest videos if you don't mind. I do not. Of course. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Have a good. You bet. Bye bye. Good day, sir. So bye, -bye. People, Yeah, Poison Elvis just dropped me off a couple of modules as well and a little bit of glass. So I've got that to give out to people. So if you do come along, I have got a shed load of eggs from Miyogi. I've got shed loads of bits from other members of my um, faction to give out. And as you can see here, I've upgraded some of my tech. Now, the weird thing is, is I put this thing in to recharge my shields. It says insufficient power. I tried to connect a wire to my furnace. It doesn't have a wire for it. So these things are completely redundant now. Now, if I go out here, if I just jump up and, well, if I, I don't know, if I get my energy bar to appear, hold on, let me just fly up and then just drop. Right, look, see, I've got all those pluses underneath my health bar, but I have no idea how I'm supposed to restore my freaking health now. To me, Poison Elvis just gave me the uranium I needed to freaking fill, to put that thing on the wall. I don't know. I know, sometimes this game's a little bit janky at times, isn't it? But it's fun as fudge. But now I need to work out how to recharge my shields. I don't know whether just logging in and logging back out again is going to do that. I'll give it a go. There we are. I've done that. Um, I better re-upload my base. So I've had people say my base is no longer appearing. So I'm just going to re-upload that. Upload. I'm going to go and make my video now, but I've had quite a few visitors, and I'm going to do a reload and see if I get my shields back. No, a reload still didn't give me my poxy shields back. So this is going to be a fun one, isn't it? I've got all these extra modules, and they don't seem to be doing toppy for me. Um, odd. Yeah, it's not like I can use this, like I just said, because it says insufficient power all the time. Hold on one second. If I just go into creative mode just for a split second... Because that should allow my base to have power. Now can I use the dang thing? Yes, I can. Has that now done it? Let me just have a look. Let me just go back into normal. I'm only just trying to avoid the issues with it. You know, I'm only at my base picking stuff up. I just want to see if that's fixed it. So if people are wondering how to get their shields back for tomorrow, at least this mu Oh, it's only given... It's given me one. It's given me one back, not all of them back. Okay. So let's uh, let's just go into creative again for a second. Ah, get back. 
Let's try again. Okay, that's gone up one notch. Maybe I have to wait for a while before I can interact with it again. Hmm, there we are. Let's try again. There we are. So if you have got one of these back at your base, you might want to... The only way that you can power the dang things is to go into creative mode by the looks of things, which is kind of outside of the rule remit. But if you've gone and built one of these, then you're going to want to use it for tomorrow's war, aren't you? So, I don't know. We've got to be in PvP as of tomorrow, though. So if you are to do this, maybe turn your networking off beforehand. Get your shields back up to full strength, people in my crew. Make sure you're ready for the oncoming war that's going to ensue. That's kind of annoying. Let's have a look see if my theory is correct. I'm going to have to go into normal mode to do myself some damage. It's a shame. There must be a way to show your energy bars without having to go and do that. But um, let's have a look. There we go. I've got max shields now. I'm happy. Awesome. Well, I'm going to slap this back into normal mode at the moment because I'm still waiting for people to hand stuff in. My PvP is with no one at the moment, just for handing. Handing is going very well. Um, yeah, I haven't got many hours left, though, that I can do this for. So if you do need to get over to me, get over to me as soon as possible. I mean, this is Sunday that I'm making this video. By the time you see this video, it's probably already over. Right, well, how do there, chums? I'm just going to be signing out now. I mean, I'm still sitting in my base. I'm going to be there all day for people to hand stuff in. But at least now we know that Cynical has been limited to where he can travel to. Yes, his travel to the 07 Brew Crew resulted in his untimely death, which is quite funny, to be fair, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, I actually have a recording to play you from Cynical on what he has to say about his untimely death. There we go. Let's hit play. play. Fair play, Mr. Captain of the Steve. It's probably just been a bit of lag then on both ends. Obviously, you've seen the clip. From my perspective, you're still in your freaking base. But, I mean, good shot with the with the cannon blast. I, I didn't even think of that. And, yeah, my, my thingy wasn't even on. Um, My, my, my voice thing wasn't actually on. I was only actually coming around to see what you guys were doing. Next thing you know, you all turned yourselves on to... Uh, survival and <laughs> started blasting. Obviously, I didn't know that we were going to have a fight. I was literally, I was generally just coming over because I seen you put a message saying that you was just waiting in your base and going to be like let people give items to you. So I was going to pop over. My idea was I was going to fill your inventory full of crap because I thought you was AFK. So then it would fill your inventory up so then you couldn't get any items. I was trying to be really sneaky. Really uh, sneaky. But yeah, it just turned out like, no worries, buddy. I'll take the L. Congratulations, sir. You assassinated me. Not a problem. Um, I'll respawn, obviously, so then we can just finish up the event, if you will. Obviously, tomorrow's PvP anyway. Um... So we can all have a fight properly tomorrow, and if you die, that's it, you're done. Um, but yeah, fair play, mate. Fair play. Well done. Got it. So there we go. I've also got a Battle Warrior Cry from Cynical, um, which I'll play in a moment. But um, yeah, one sec. So, chums, yeah, there's been a little bit of banter going backwards and forwards, and here's the next voice segment from the old Cynical. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, the Empire, like Captain said, you know, all you've done is really explore some territory. I mean, I'm not going to lie, your PvP is a bit crap, mate. I mean, how many of your Empire have I killed now? Quite a few, all documented. <laughs> a bit embarrassing, isn't it? And uh, the 07 Brew Crew having to, like, you know, isolate themselves so, so far away because they're scared of a little action. And you know what? Your PvP is still quite bad. Yeah, you've had to... You eventually, you know, killed me. But I mean, what? It took three of you and a neutron cannon to Just me, yes. finally get rid of me from, like, you know, stalking your area. And how many of yours have I killed now? Two, three, four? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you two. Oh, I don't know. I think we might win this PvP event. Love this, man. I love this. So much fun. Love the taunts. <laughs> so, what stirred that up is I sent a voice note over. Okay, so here's mine. Play. Play. What has the Empire done exactly? I haven't, I haven't seen any exploits of the, of the Empire yet. The Empire, shm Empire. <laughs> yeah, you want to be done? You claim the North Pole, the South Pole. You can, you can have them. Ah. <laughs> Sometimes I'm really enjoying this. It's great fun. 
we've actually um, captured sentinel pillars. We've got control over the sentinels over the planet. We can turn them off and on whenever we like. Yeah, so, but we, we haven't boasted about that. We had stuck flags all over them. You know, we, we've just done it because, because that's what the brew crew does. Um, and uh, Rice, you sent this over. Someone's been having fun. <laughs> well, at least Cynical's back in his box for a little bit, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah back happy on. to respawn when we do it. Uh, PvP gets switched on tomorrow. Um, watch out for the Empire. Yes. And that's why I said, well, what's the Empire actually done other than claiming the North Poles? And he came back with this. Sentinel pillars, we've had them for weeks. Had them for no weeks. Chance. No chance. It's it's so the event's only been going for, what, a week and a bit, so weeks is a little bit of an over-exaggeration. But this is all great, isn't it? It's like the banter you have before, like a wrestling match or a boxing match. I'm proper enjoying this. It's, it's added a new dimension of play to No Man's Sky. And I'm hoping if you haven't been included in this one or you didn't jump in because you didn't really know what it was about. One, probably a good thing, because we've been using the people that have joined this one as almost guinea pigs. And the rules have been rather fluid and they've kind of been a bit agile. They've evolved as we've gone along. And I think we've got it to a point now that when we do this a second time around, we can do it properly and there'll be less issues and less sort of like grey areas of, of what's what and, and so forth and so on. So yeah, stay tuned for future news of this event. This event's not over by a long chalk yet. We're going to be entering into PvP from Monday onwards. And um, I can imagine it's going to be fun. There's going to be a few more videos just like this one. And I like the camaraderie we're here. I like, I've, I've enjoyed talking to people that I wouldn't normally talk to out there inside of the verse. And hearing just how much I've enjoyed this event. It's really fired me up to do another one. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Salute them on though. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again. Well, how do the chums? Good morning to thee. Good morning. All right, okay. So, quest one of the Light No Sky Challenge. This is what Cynical and the Criola Kingdom managed to actually accomplish when it comes to the things that they managed to get over to Cynical. But you've got to keep in mind, Cynical did perish twice and had to lose everything that his crew had actually amassed inside of the quest. But I honestly don't think the quest side of things was Cynical's real focus. He was more into building fortresses, building up his defences, building up his offences. Did it work out for him? Well, you're going to find out in this episode, people, because today is the day of PvP, and I'm going to be jumping into PvP, and we're going to see how that goes for him. Heck yes. Well, I've already had news that he's already massacred some of my 07 brew crew. So anyway, that's everything that Cynical got inside. So plane. here is how the 07 brew crew did. If I just move myself up a little bit there, you can see we've got a shed load of relic treasures. We actually got the most relic treasures of any of the teams. But did we get the most valuable of treasure? Did we get quantity and not quality? We shall find out in a moment. I got all these sack venoms. I say I, our team got all these sack venoms. I got roughly about 30 sack venoms and I did get one of these. I think this one here was the one that I unearthed. But yes, the most valuable amongst these was this one here. I can't remember who passed me this one, but whoever did, fantastic work. And fantastic work to everybody that handed in any of these things inside of my crew. I know it wasn't easy handing stuff in because I had to be online. We're all in different time zones. You know, I was sitting idle every time I was working from home. So yeah, did try my best, but sadly we didn't get it. Maybe I need to set up a fixed time that actually works for all time zones or something next time we do this. I don't know. But scrolling down, so I had 149 sack venoms and the most valuable one was this one here at 2.1 2 million. 2.1 million is what we managed to get. I guess. And that was my highest value relic. You can see here, Cynical and Ricey are in here. This is our group chat. Anyway, I'll scroll on down. So here's Ricey. Ricey. Now Ricey had to use two vaults. Now there's a lot of stuff in here that technically I think he was given out to some of his crew, but they actually got less relics. But did they get better quality? I mean, they've got a lot of gold. Look, they've got three there, the massive chests. And the chests usually go for the highest sort of value. And he's got some jars there as well in gold too, but we shall see. So he's got quite a lot there. The sack venom is actually almost got twice as much as what we managed to gather in the 07 brew crew. So yeah, the sack venoms looks like Ricey had quite a lot near him. I mean, near to the old brew crew, we had a massive great big swathe of ocean and the land masses probably weren't as established as maybe over in 
the writer's neck of the woods. Who knows? But anyway, 07. Well done, you guys, for everything you managed to collect. Fuck yours. Lovely jubbly. And um, scrolling down a little bit further, you can see here, Rice's highest value item was 2.2 million. And that, again, was one of these sort of Gex sketches. Yeah, stained by tears. Okay, people. So, overall, Ricey won Quest 1. So, um, M Empire took Quest 1. So, let's see who wins the actual PvP. Will it be Cynical's Crayon Kingdom? Or will it be the 07 Brew Crew? Or will it be Empire? And that's that. Uh, jump on in and find out, people. Well, how do their chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I'm jumping into No Man's Sky. And today is the day of PvP. So I need to go into options, go into difficulty. Change this over to survival mode. And then I need to go into networking. Put it into PvP with anyone. And let's have a look around then, shall we? Let's see if we can find anybody on here. Some network. Uh, view nearby players list. Let's see who's online. Cynical is online. Holy fudge. Okay, right. He could probably be coming for me any time now. So let's have a look, see. Let's have a little gander outside. Now, he's already messaged to say that he's taken out some of the brew crew. Um, so that's fun. Oh, fudge. Okay, I found a hole. Hiya! I'm out of the hole. Now, I could do with finding some compondres. Um, how far away is this guy? 12 hours. Okay, so he's not anywhere close. Where is Cynical? Where is the little git bag? Let's have a look for him. Okay. Okay, we've got this guy over here. We might be able to join his party and hopefully take on the old Cynical. Righto. Let me see. Nearby player list. Bum, 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 bum. Junior by player list. Mikey the man child. Ah, can't invite. He's currently busy. He's going to have to be careful because Cynical's probably going to get him. Um, I can't see Cynical's player marker anywhere. Makes me slightly nervous. Don't know where he actually is. Hmm. Okay, well, if I can make it to Mikey anyway, strength in numbers. Fudge and heck, just got bit by a blinking plant. Don't want that to happen too many times. Heck no. All right, anyway, I reconvene if something interesting happens, people. But my head is on a swivel already. I'm in my battle vest. Heck yeah. One hour away now, so I'm getting very close. I've hit record again. So, people, Cynical has taken out pretty much the whole of the 07 Brew Crew. At least the uh, posse that I was trying to form. What about Eastlick? Have you killed Eastlick? Uh, yes, I think. Oh, for fudge's sake! Dang it! <laughs> We've got Dran on in the house. He's a ghost right now. He got murdered by Cynical early hours of the morning as well. Yeah, I'm just spectating. I won't interfere. Okay, Koki. Nice. Cynical's only one hour away now, but it's it's not in real life type time. I mean, I can see his worm is now heading down towards the ground. He's over there. He's only like... Yeah. Oh, for fudge sake, I keep getting bitten by bloody plants. This planet's riddled that, with them. So can, can you, you see how many uh, minutes I am aware now? Um, oh, Ominous is here. Okay, accept. Hello? How you doing? Doing I'm, good. I'm good, mate. Yeah, good. How how's your morning been? It's uh, it's been strange to be fair. I've heard that you know my whole crew has been murdered. I I don't know, mate. It must have been bad weather that got them. Probably something like that. Little kid. What the fudge? What Whoa. hit me for with extreme heat damage? Jesus. What the <laughs> fudge you, got me? You still alive over there? Yeah, what the fudge was that? What the, the flying fudge have you got, mate? <laughs> so 
somehow it done me massive damages. Like set me on Shit. fire or something. It set you on fire? What? Yeah. It said massive heat damage detected. Oh, extreme damage protection. Mm -hmm. No. Die. And again. No, you got me. You get back. Oh, no. Dang it. Darn. Cynical got me. I don't know how, but it looks like he's got a neutron cannon as well. Darn it. Okay. Oh, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. You got me. I got you. You got me. You got me as well. <laughs> we both killed each other. We both killed each other. <laughs> Holy fudge. Well, that's a draw. That's us both out. Fudge, the Empire wins then. For fudge's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just thinking that. Oh, God. No. I'm oh. right. I managed to win. Without win doing anything. Yesterday. Now the planet without yeah. even firing a single shot. Fudge and heck. Okay. Well, I don't feel so bad about my death now that you died at the same time. That, that's kind of cool. Dang it. But all my shields were there. That's weird. My energy bar started going down without my shields going down. Did, all right. Was... I was blasting you with... Let me have a look. Uh, the neutron cannon. Yeah. That's what I had. That's what I was hitting you with. It must have done the same with you. you, you did your shields stay as max reading? I think so. I'll have to look back over my footage, but yeah. That I mean, you bizarre. literally got one straight... Of, like, one full charge straight at me. And my shields, everything, well, my, my, my health just went straight down. I'm like, oh, my God. I couldn't take another one of those. And then you got another one off at me at the same time. I got one off at you, and that was it. We're both out. Both dead at the same time. That was insane. That was fun, though. That was freaking craziness. Okay. Right, well, I guess that's good news and bad news at the same freaking time. <laughs> oh, no. Man. All right, oh. well, fair play. That was a good match. Um, fair play, and... Dang you for killing half, well, virtually all my crew, to be fair. I don't know who's going to be left. But yeah, it's not us. We're out of the running, Cynical. Yeah, I, I think most of my, my group are, are out. I'll have to convey, but so far, it would seem that Ricey is uh, Champione. either in the lead or as one. I'll have to confer with my group. Yeah, all right. Well, at least I can use my ship now and go back to my old base and just make a save there. Yeah, might as well. Oh, fudge and heck. I haven't put any launch thruster fuel in it. Might as well go back into creative mode then. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, at least I got revenge for yesterday. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well done, you. And uh, I guess well done, me as well, for the revenge <laughs> of my crew that you just murdercated. That was fun. <sighs> but it's definitely added an extra dimension of play to No Man's Sky. I can't say. I mean,. For a lull, for a period oh, no. of time where we haven't got much to do, this has been freaking great. It has. It really has. I've really enjoyed this. Like, it's been such a, a unique and different way of playing Norman Sky, and I think it's really brought the community together more so, especially through these quiet periods. Heck yeah. Yeah, totally agree. So next time there's a quiet period, we'll find ourselves, I think, a planet this time that's got creatures on already, like, you know, some beetles or butterflies. And we'll probably start fresh new saves all over again isn't it yeah fresh new yeah. saves definitely yeah fresh new planet i know we're going to do these other two planets in this system to see who can claim all of it but um i'm wondering whether we should just go to a different system wipe the board because the thing is is people know now where this is so even if we do rule people out they all know where it is so yeah it's been compromised yeah oh yeah i'd invite dran on in so i can tell him what happened there you go all right. right. Hello, Dranon. Going... Oh, there we go. Guess what happened, okay. mate? It looks like you guys killed each other at the same time. Yes, that's exactly what happened. It was freaking insane. <laughs> so, Cynical got his revenge for yesterday. I got my revenge for him killing you and, you know, Ominous and all that. So, you know, I think Empire wins. What a cop out, though. It would have been nice if Ricey was online at the same time. Wouldn't it? That would have been freaking great. But, oh well. Yeah. So cynical's here at the moment. What are you doing the rest of your day, cynical? Ah, it's gonna be a lot of editing now for me. Just chopping up this entire story that's just happened, including <laughs> yesterday. I've got everything to get out today now. 
Cool. Yeah, same. Yeah, I've got to put in that, you know, Empire won the actual collection and quest, and me and you have just tied for joint last. Yeah. Great. No. <laughs> Well, I... It's no problem. You guys have permission to use me in your videos, my voice and stuff. Sweet. Not a problem. All right, Thank trying you. on. Well, at least um, you can spectate the rest of what's going on, I suppose. I suppose if we just tell people that are not involved just to stay in creative mode from here on in, and they can spectate if they want. Um, but that's pretty much it, isn't it? I suppose we know who's dead if they're in creative mode. Yep. Yeah. Sounds good, man. Yeah. Cool. That sounds about right. Lovely. Uh, so I guess we give it for the rest of the week and well, actually, we might as well just say that Empire's won well and then again somebody from your faction might rise up and kill everybody yet yeah, inside of Empire hey eh, cynical uh, possibly possibly I, I don't know I don't know I mean people are just joining and coming off and it's hard to keep track Can't I need to actually get like a day hi cynical if you can hear me <laughs> congratulations on this morning mate excellent game well played yeah that's ominous ominous go on yeah, he was my. Uh, he was going to be one of my like sheriffs. It was. I was hoping he would be with me. He had a secret weapon. Did you even get to use your yeah. secret weapon, Ominous? No, I didn't use it. I thought, and to be honest, I thought, in all fairness, hmm. I, I shouldn't use it at all. Um, yeah. Simple reason being, the rules clearly state hmm. survival mode PvP. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what your secret weapon was. I just heard that you had one. So, no, well, if it breaks the rules, then it's not really much of a secret weapon, I suppose. But, okay, well, Cynical is mowed us all down. However, Ominous, me and Cynical killed each other at the same time. Oh, quality yeah. stuff. <laughs> oh, so, um, so, basically, does that mean the Empire's won? It means that the only leader surviving is Ricey. That doesn't mean that he's going to stay surviving. I'm hoping one of the members of the Brew Crew is still about. Somebody that's slightly OP or something that can go and take out the Empire. And I guess Cynical has just got to hope the same for his crew now. Yeah, well, as I said this morning, yeah, congratulations, Cynical. Played a perfect game. Nah. For some reason, I can't hear Ominous, so I don't know um, if speaking or not. Unfortunately, yeah, I'm, I'm being blasted by pirates at the moment. Okay. <laughs> well, Ominous <laughs> just said a fantastic game there, Cynical, and um, he took it like a, a gent. He, he's saying, you know, congratulations on your win. No worries. Thank you, Ominous. Cool. Yeah, Professor Cynical can't hear you, Ominous, and I'm guessing you can't hear him. No, I can't, I can't hear anything um, Cynical saying. But yeah, it's, it's been a pleasure playing the game with you all in it, and it's been a pleasure playing against Cynical. 100% agree. Like, yep, and I would like thank you for teaching me all of those glitches. You're a legend. Oh yeah, he's, uh, Cynical, he said, thank you very much for your channel and all of your glitches. You're a freaking legend. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that, bud. Thank you. Sweet. I'm like some sort of medium communicating words from the grave. Then again, we're all in the grave now. <laughs> all the four yeah, of us yeah. are dead. <laughs> dead yeah, poet society. Dead people. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Dead poets. So, can I quote the line then, Captain, my captain? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Dead poet society. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Brilliant. Well done, you. All right, people. Well, I'm going to get editing this footage. Thank you very much for taking part in, in this event. We will be doing another one. We're going to wait until we're going to have the update, the No Man's Sky update, hopefully. And after that, we we come back with version two with all the rules all sort of like hard coded. Well, not hard coded, but better than they were this time. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good, man. I had absolutely. a lot of fun. Cool. All yeah. right, guys. Well, I'm going to leave yeah. group. I'm going to go and edit this video. If that's all right. Yeah, I'll be doing the same. Thanks, Cool, yeah, yeah. Yep. May I suggest a Star Wars themed one? No, we're going to do another Light No Fire one, but I'm thinking, well, we're thinking that maybe it might be easier if we actually align ourselves with the factions. So I might be Viking, Cynical might be Gek, Ricey might be Korvax. So at least we can tell each other apart from a mile away, you know? Well, guys. There we are, the No Man's Sky Light No Fire type crossover event has come to an end for me and also for Cynical. I mean, we can stay in creative mode and just view what's going on. But yeah, 
Ah, uh, me and Cynical took each other out. That was like proper pistols at dawn. Can't wait to see his footage back. Uh, I know that I gave it my all. Thank you. And although I'm not victorious in that battle against Cynical, I'm slightly gutted, but at the same time, it's the taking part that counts, isn't it, really? It just means that we've handed over perhaps an easy win to Empire. Yeah. Thank you. Until next time, salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again. Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves. Now, today, chums, this is just a bit of a roundup of how the Light No Sky Challenge actually went. So it has come to a finale of sorts. Anyway, I'm going to let you see the showdown between who was left, basically, Ricey, the Starship Emporium, the leader of Empire. Let's jump on over to a bit of footage, people. Well, how do that, people? Heart rate just skipped the beat. Wiggle Worm is going up against Ricey. I'm here to sort of watch the carnage. And here's Wiggle Worm. The Empire is about to hopefully take him down. So there's a bit of lag. <laughs> okay, I'm on the wrong island. <laughs> Okay, I can see two little dots going at it. This is like Dragon Ball that I'm watching from over here. Oh, oh I'm trying to choose my attack plan. Yeah, it's like Rice is taken to the air. Oh, I need to get in my ship to get over to there to see this one better. You're going to be doing voiceover, are you, Ricey? Yeah, probably. Yeah, he got me. He got you? Yeah. Is Wiggle Worm victorious? Oh, he is. Well, that's going to be a short video. Hold on. It says that Wiggle Worm <laughs> also died, I think. Oh, did I get him as well? I think so. I think both of you are gone. Oh, that was a one-on-one, -on -one, perhaps. Oh, my days. Yeah, on Wiggle, the sidebar. It says, Mercenary Wiggleworm died a oh, yeah, combat I got, death. I got him. Yes. And well, Ricey. We there we go. I, there we are. It's there. Oh. Yes. Okay. Oh. We're going to have to do a salute Mondo to the old um, oh, Wiggleworm. Okay. Well done, Wiggleworm. You got me. But then again, I got, in fact, you. your death is slightly before my death. So... <laughs> <laughs> One way to look at it, yeah. Uh, I, I saw your tactics though, Ricey. You was doing jump manoeuvres and all sorts of stuff. It was. He was, and I, I, he was digging up underneath, but I saw the ground starting to move, and I could hear his terrain manipulator. Sneaky. So ambushed him as he came up from underneath, and I think I got a, a one shot on him first before he finished me off. We, we exchanged shots, and yeah, our bush shields both went down at the same time. Wow. Okay, well, that Ooh. was quite an epic battle. I didn't quite capture all of it. Crunchy. I'm going to have to watch it from your side. Yes. But, nice one, Ricey. Well, that means that there's no faction leaders left. You're going to have to join me no. in the Jedi realm. Yeah. <laughs> I shall indeed. So there we have it, people. So, yeah, Ricey and Wiggleworm went down in the history books. And, uh, yeah, it looks like they both died at the same time. Which means there was no faction leaders left. Now, each of the factions did have their main players still out there, still doing battle, but we also had new players jumping into the actual event, so it could have gone on for freaking ever. Uh, we really need to lock this down and get the rules a bit better next time around to stop that from happening, or else we're going to get a forever war. So, yeah, some of my actual persons remaining was Ghostlight was still in the mix, yeah. And um, you know, Cynical still had some of his best fighters out there, and so did Ricey. So, but it was trying to get different time zones online at the same time, and that didn't quite go to fruition either. So anyway, what we thought might be easier is to do a little mini roll call and then also knight people. So I'm going to choose three people from my faction to actually knight. And so is Ricey, and so is Cynical, just so we can give out some rewards for this sort of thing. So, the 07 Brew Cruise Knights is Ghostlight. Congratulations, Ghostlight, I guess. We've also got Ominous Gaunt. Well done. 
and Eastleg. They're my three knights. I'll be knighting. So from here on in, you're going to be known as Sir. And also, you're going to get rewarded, yes, in some way, shape, or form that you can redeem. I'll get onto that in a sec. So the rewards will be claimable inside of Season 2. So if you do get given a knighthood, while you're in creative mode and you go to the actual station to pick up a few cosmetics for your base building, while you're in that creative sort of instance, you should be able to pick up the tech for a weapon of your choice. Either a scatter blaster, or you can go for a blaze javelin. They're the two weapons that the knights get to choose. We're also looking at putting out another award called the Grand Architect Award. So this goes to the person that's built the snazziest base that kind of meets the requirements of Light No Sky, or Light No Fire, whatever, inside of the instance. Now it wouldn't be fair for me to go around my own bases and judge because you know I've got members there, super members, backers and all that sort of stuff. So to try and make it more impartial, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to go and review one of either Rice's or Cynical's sort of areas and they're going to come and review mine. We're going to review each other's and we're going to choose the best builder amongst that other faction and whoever wins the Grand Architect Award for the first day, a full 24 hours, you're going to get to stay in creative mode and build an awesome wondrous base. Now each season we're going to be choosing different people tonight and a different architect. So as this progresses, there's going to be more knights, there's going to be more grand architects, and the event is going to slowly grow as, as so do we, you know, which is going to be pretty nice. We're going to also introduce a few things in season two that are a little bit different from season one. It's like it was very hard to tell the difference between each faction. So we're thinking next time around, I might be a Viking, and so anybody that joins my faction and we all dress in red and white and we'll probably pick a certain title or tag to have on our name you know like at the moment you can have the warden of glass or something like that we're going to choose tags like that so people can see as titles so as you actually hover over you can see what faction people are in even at distance so that should help too so we've got quite a lot of ideas that came from people that were actually in this as well as ideas that Ricey and Cynical and I had we're going to be splurging all that together to come up with a better remit for rules in Season 2. So, although Season 1 was chaos, it was bloody good fun. It really was! Had an epic time with you guys out there in the verse, and you really did make this event an event. So thank you! Big round of applause to everybody that took part. So yeah, anyway, there's a lot that we need to get in, in into the actual rules and established and all that sort of shenanigans it's going to take us a long time to agree with everything that we need to put into this but we are hoping that there's going to be a no man's sky update either a tail end of may to mid june hopefully we're going to see an update and if we do hopefully that's going to keep the community quite happy quite excited and doing something and then as soon as that sort of like dies down a bit and we start to see numbers start to drop that's when we're going to do season two so we've got a little bit of a break to get everything in order if you have got any ideas, hit up either myself, Cynical or Ricey. We'll be all ears, heck yes. Listen to your ideas with our ears and hopefully get them into the actual rules. So there we go, people. Until next time, no, oh, actually, there's one other thing you could be doing if you really want to do something to try and help us. We're trying to look for a really nice, lush planet that has hardly any storms, limited sentinel sort of ferocity. Still want a bit of a challenge there, but doesn't matter overly but we would like to find a planet that has decent flying pets so that's you know you've got the farting fish but they tend to drop when you start riding them the cuttle type weird looking elephant fish that fly that you can ride the butterfly type creatures or even the beetles yes so if you do come across a really nice lush or interesting planet with any of those flying creatures on again hit up one of your faction leaders, hit up Cynical, Ricey or myself with those coordinates and hopefully you might even pick your planet to go on. It needs to be in Euclid though because we need to be starting in a creative new save once this actually kicks off as well peeps. So yeah there you go there's something that you could be doing if you really want to do something if you want to give yourself a little mini challenge and get involved in another way do that. Thank you guys. Till next time people thank you for watching Salute Mondo and a massive great big Congratulations to Empire, yeah, yeah, and then congratulations to everybody that took part anyway, you know, it, this one was, this one was a test run, 
So yeah, Ricey won the test one and the Empire. I'm just downplaying it because I'm a bit jealous that I didn't win. But there we go, people. Till next time. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again. Well, how do there, chums? As I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I'm jumping into No Man's Sky over onto our group sort of event that we called Light No Fire, and I'm going to be doing some base tours. And um, I'm jumping over to I think Cynical's area of space and uh, taking a look around and seeing which base I think is the best inside of this Crayola Kingdom. Yeah, and so then Cynical can award. That person with the Grand Architect Award. The reason that we're going to be doing tours on each other's sections is to sort of like remove any animosity between who's the best build, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, well, let's jump on over into game, shall we? Okay, jumps. So here I am. I'm, I'm in my normal save because I did build a hub base here in my normal save. And I'm just going to use my shifty ship to fly to all these different places. So I need to find Cynical's hub zone area. So that's the 07 Brew Crew over there. So I don't want to go to my own area. Heck no. Right, so over there we've got Husband Vidal Hovel. What the fudge is that when it's at home? Now, we didn't ask people to put, like, a prefix in there. Light No Sky uh, is, is R.I.P. dead now. Okay. Now, I'm not seeing many base markers. Um, so this could be a little bit difficult. Light No Sky attempt. Yeah, I'm not seeing much going on here, people. Right, hold on. There's a teleporter up there. Let's see if somebody's conveniently named their base, like Creola Kingdom, so I can at least find the bases. Or else this might be extremely difficult to do. Okay, here we go. Into here. And if I hit other bases, this should be all the light no sky type ones. Brew Crew. There we go. Brew Crew. EMP. So that's Empire. That's uh, that's uh, that's Rice's area. I'm looking for somebody inside of the uh, Crayola Kingdom. I'm not seeing any. Not seeing any there. They've not rendered in, have they? Golden City. That looks freaking awesome. That does. Fable Pilgrim. 07 Brew Crew. It only seems that the 07 Brew Crew and Empire were the only ones that put anything inside of their freaking titles. So I'm a little bit stuck, to be honest. I don't think I'm going to be able to review any of Cynical's ones. Apart from Cynical's base, which I saw, which was like a giant freaking castle. Yeah, first chapter, he was in my team. Pretty much all of these are bro Brew Crew. I recognise them from Brew Crew. Okay, um, I'm a little bit stuck, people. Well, chums, I've tried swapping game modes and now I'm flying up to the actual station. So I was in creative mode when I first arrived. I've now swapped it into normal mode. And I'm going to go check the portal terminus. It shouldn't make a difference, the game mode. Sometimes going up to the station can force render bases. So that's why I'm trying the station. So if I go to other bases, let's have a look if we see any new ones. Okay, crash pad, that's that's new, but I don't know whether that's in this system. That's pretty cool, I love that. That's really clever. Yeah, like that one? Okay, cool. We've got spa resort. Yeah, this is this system. Safe haven. Hmm. Shop for free. Terra Gigantus. Very nice. Brew crew, Golden Citadel, Eastlix Base, Work in Progress. Watch your outpost. Griffox Games. Unicronos Combined Mountain Fortress 2. I'd... No, I'm not seeing any of the Crayola Kingdom's bases inside of this. And I'm going to struggle to do a tour. I am. Uh, I am definitely going to struggle to do a tour. You know what? I think we might have to just sort of... Um, Maybe say, well, season one was a bit of a write-off when it comes to the Grand Architect reward. I mean, I know those that built awesome bases in my own brew crew area, but it might be unfair for me to bestow a title onto the Grand Architect. 
for somebody inside of my own area, you know? And uh, I think Ricey and Cynical feel the same way. But if they also have the same issue of not being able to see bases rendering, I mean, we, we know there's, there's loads of bases here, freaking loads of them. The only thing I can think of doing is to quit out to mode select and go back in with the actual one that I did here, which was the Light Nose Fire Brew Crew, this one here. Uh, yeah, I'll see if that's any good. Okay, right, well, I've arrived at Cated at my own base. Now, just so I can get around easy, I'll stick in a blaze teleporter. I'll stick it right there for now. I have budget and go there. And I'm just going to connect it up to the power supply that I've got sitting out there. Okay, right. Let's set up this base terminus then. Let's uh, let's see if, what bases appear now. Other bases. Okay, I'm seeing oh, Daniel Hipley. Okay, cool. I don't know what faction Hipley was in. Ah, Santos Rest, that's 07 Brew Crew. Captain Loco, don't recognise Captain Loco, but he could have been Brew Crew. Who knows? No one's actually put any sort of markers on here. MB, Light No Sky. I don't know who MB is either. Anarchy, Sting Noir. AV Empire, there's the Empire base there. Fire Lily. Castle Anthrax, that sounds like something that would be over in the um, Coriola Kingdom, doesn't it? Broken Skull Tavern on the hill, nice. 07 Brew Crew, Constriction Camp Delta, I like the look of that, that's pretty cool, by Mickey Head. The Empire, I mean, that, that's obvious, so that's the Empire, freaking hack. Brew Crew, okay, Light No Sky Portal. Dragon Breeding Emporium by Miyogi. I'm seeing a lot more on this save, so this has worked. Okay, I'm not seeing any that are marked as being Creole Kingdom. Grump of the Hill. Great Stone Shore. You see, if I can just find one that's Creole Kingdom, it will put me in that area. Grey Gargoyle. All the Watchtowers. Well, there's the Empire. Britannia, I know that's the Empire, PSB. Public Beach with Horrors. CK Reigns Gateway, Broken Brittle. They look the same, look. Isn't that weird? We've got Spectators Rock, Brew Crew, Tribase, Scar... Well, it looks like only me and Ricey have been labelling ours. Um... Construction Terror, James MC, K Meldwell, 07 Dragon Tower, cool. Brew Crew, Brew Crew, all of Brew Crew, Crash Pad, Brew Crew, Temple Resort, Swamp Plans by Burger Lips. Yeah, this is um, not easy. Unless. Cynical asked his guys to dismantle all of his bases. Who freaking knows? Well, what I could do is I could go over to one that I know for sure is Empire. Because I know all of my own ones. So if I end up in Empire, then the area that I fly to, then I, I know by freaking default that it's probably not Empire. It's going to be, you know, Cynical's. So I'm going to have to do it by elimination. So here we go. We'll go to Good Guys Free who's over in the Empire. Let's just walk there. Zoom. OK, well, I've arrived, Kated, and I can see quite a lot of bases over here that are like six hours away, eight hours away. So I would imagine all of those ones over there might be the brew crew, uh, not the brew crew, be cynicals. Because we've got these over here. Great, that's 11 hours away. Well, maybe not then. Oh, yeah, we've got Combined Fortress at 13 hours away. Brew View, that's 30. That's the Brew Crew over there. That's Brew Crew. Okay, that says AV. That's, that's Brew Crew. Yep, that's all Brew Crew over there. So that's Brew Crew over that way. What well, the fudge is over there then? Canaries West. Ah! 
There we go. Criola Kingdom. CK. Okay, we're heading to a CK Criola Kingdom. We've found one, people. We've found one. Right, I'll see you over in the Criola Kingdom. Oh, hold on. What the fudge? Oh, it looks like freaking good guys has gone and stuck a base saying Empire <laughs> in the Criola Kingdom. You sneaky git. But that didn't make it easy for me. Okay, right. So here we go. This is our first Criola Kingdom base, I think. I hope. Um, it might not be. But look at this. I mean, we were supposed to be building in keeping with Light No Sky. And I'm seeing biodomes with a shed load of Nip Nip. Look at that. And loads of Sack Venom. Daniel Hipley built this, I guess. And that's a no-no. He's got Sack Venom there. Well, Cynical didn't do too well in the collecting missions, but looks like he had that sitting right under his frickin' nostrils all this time. Right, well, we've got Canary's Rest over this way. I'm, I'm not even going to rate Daniel Hipley's, because Daniel Hipley broke all the rules known to man. Okay, let's head on over this way, then. Yeah, this is definitely Cynical's um, area. I saw this base in use. It's got loads of underground tunnels and all sorts of stuff. I really quite like this one. I've already been in this base. I've already gone round it, I believe. Yeah. Very cool. I think maybe... Did I, did I already do this, this video? It's just that people have been hitting me up saying, Captain Steve, when are you going to do the base tours? Maybe I already have. Because I, I remember going round this and saying, yeah, this is quite cool. This is quite nice. But I don't think everything is rendering in. Ah, maybe I cut it short. Maybe I was waiting till after the event. I'm just having serious deja vu right now, people. But anyway, this is Canary's Rest or Canary's Kingdom or whatever it is. But it's very cool, isn't it? I like this one. That's quite a satisfying look to the outer exterior. And yes, I think that's quite in keeping with the light, no sky sort of remit. And I like this little um, atrium that they've got here with some plants growing inside. And it's it's also like star bulbs. That's okay. That's fine. Yeah, very nice. I think that one's quite cool. So, so far, that's my favourite base. Even though I've only looked around like two. And Daniel Hipley's disqualified. Right, okay. Um, what's over here then? Okay. Uh, that's only... I thought Todd MC was on my site. Dang you, Todd MC! All right, let's go on. Let's go on over here then, and let's go and have a look at Todd's base. I'll be there in a sec. Right. Well, this planet has no trees normally, and look at all these trees that have been placed outside of here. Extra bonus points for putting in freaking trees. Heck yes, nice. I like that. Okay, we've got a little fire thing going on here. Holy mackerel! This is cool, isn't it? Okay, got a staircase going up here. Very awesome. Okay, and a staircase going down here too. Todd MC, dead now. Yeah, it's got a galactic trade terminal hidden under there. Sneaky little rabbit. Let's head on up here then. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's pretty darn sneaky, isn't it? Pretty nice. As far as bases go, that's, that's all right, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Right, so Todd MC, very nice. I like your flaming skulls, mate. Freaking lovely. Heck yeah, it's just like some kind of King Kong. Right, oh, so there's Daniel here, please. That one over there was Canary's Rest by Bupti. And this one's by James. Okay, what's this over here? That's only 700 years. I'd imagine that's still created a kingdom. I'm going to need my ship to get up there. How the fudge did you build so high? Oh, look, there's another base just there, actually. What's that one? Construction Camp Delta. Let's go and have a look at the old Construction Camp by Mickey Head. Holy fudge, mate. It looked like a freaking greenhouse as I was approaching. But now that I'm here, this is... Mahusid base. Okay, we've got a landing pad. Lightner Sky Challenge. Ow! Something freaking bit me. Okay. Let's head in. 
Okay, this is weird. Okay. It looks like it's still under construction or something. There's a site-to-site -site teleporter in here. It says it's got no power. Hmm. Oddity. All right, well, maybe I can't see it in its full... Oh, hold on, let's, let's charge it up. Right, there we go. Now let's see where we go. Oh, fudge, I'm underneath the ground. Ah! And then I got ported out. Okay, I don't know what's going on there, but I don't really want to risk doing that again. Light No Sky Challenge. Let, let, let's, let's try it once more, just in case there's something awesome in there. I do like the look of this. I mean, it's got a very Japanese type look about. Where's the site teleporter gone? It's frick. Oh, there it is. Okay. Right. Let's just stand. Ah, oh, dang it! I can't stay under the ground. It doesn't like it. All right, fine. Okay, that's that's that base then. Now let's go into camera mode. Let's have a quick look at it. I like the roof. Really do. That's that's quite cool. It's got a Japanesey type look to it, hasn't it? I do like all the um the scaffolding outside and what's going on there. It looks like it's something that's under development that you're not really supposed to see. Oh look, there's a staircase going down there anyway. Something sneaky going on in there, isn't there? Something sneaky. Dunno what. But yeah. Interesting. I don't think I got to see it in all of its glory, though. Right. Okay. I was going to call my ship in, but I can't see the console to do it. Okay. Well, we need to get up there somehow. Let's go and have a look at that one. So, let's call in my old shippity ship. Boom. I'm going to fly on over. It's probably not got a landing pad. Well, my jetpack's not tough enough to get to the top of that. So I don't know how we're going to see it. If if there's no landing pad there, I might be a little bit scuppered. Where's it bloody gone? Okay. I've lost it. Oh, there it is. Zoom. Am I going to be able to land here? This looks pretty darn snaz. Yeah, let me land. Ah! I can't land. And I don't think my jetpack's good enough to get me up here, so I've got to hope that it lands me somewhere on here. Go on, land, you know you want to. There we go, we landed right on the peak of there. Right, here we go. Okay, is that there's a big storm, so maybe it might be able to get there, up there with my jetpack. It's highly unlikely, though. Oh, we're there. I think the storm helped. Oh, there is a staircase, though. Look, there's a little staircase here. So who did this one? Elan Paul. Elan Paul. All right. We we'll head on in. Oh, you got a little flaming rock going on there. Lovely little barbecue. Very nice. Very cool placement. Very clever. Very apt indeed. And very in keeping with the sort of the theme of light no sky, I guess. Is that a door? It is. Okay. That's pretty nice. It's cosy, isn't it? I love all this pathways that you've done in a, a really cool style. -y. There's a good chance I'm going to fall through it because, you know, that's the type of guy I am. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. Is there any other bases in close proximity? Mm -mm. A thousand views that way. Is that still Cynical's territory? Really? Okay, we'll head over there then. We'll have a look. And see whose base that is. Oh, I think this is Good Guys Freeze base. And I think they're part of Empire. And I think they just put up a big placard saying Empire, didn't they? So I think he raided this area. So I don't think that's a true base. What's this little marker here? That's the one I was just at. Okay. Right, so what have we got over here? Two hours away. That can't be Cynical's area still. One area. Uh, one hour. Five hours. See, I'm in a ship right now, so it, it should. Eleven minutes. I don't really know what's going on. We need to actually set 
a better sort of setup, don't we? Because I think this is Cynical's area here. And of course, I, I've been to all of these now. Yeah, six hours away. That that can't be it. I think I've I think I've gone and looked at all the ones that I think are in Cynical's area, and I'm just going to have to apologise if not. Because I think all those over there are Empire. I think. We're going to have to come up with some sort of better way of labelling our bases because it's not simple. Look, oh, oh hold on. Mm. Yeah, it's not simple, is it? There's one more down here. CK Reigns Getaway. Let's go to this one. Let's have a quick look at, look at this. Oh, this is nice, like a little biscuit barrel. What's that one over there, anyway? Ten minutes that way? Don't know. Right, we'll land here then. Right out. Oh, this is quite cool. Don't know whether the top of the biscuit barrel's rendered in completely. But this one is Rain Man seven 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 nine 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 nine. Him or her? I mean, it says man in the title, but you, you never know these days, do you? Right, there's no lights. There's no. There's some lights, but there's not a lot of lights, is there? Right, let's go into camera mode. Let's put the sun in the sky. There you go. Big freaking light. Okay. Still freaking dark. Okay. Can't see much going on in there. Let's have a look at this little biscuit barrel on the outside. It looks like there is a walkway through to the biscuit barrel. And then a staircase going up that takes you to the roof. So it's like a little lookout. Okay. Let's um let's go through then. Let's see if we can work out. Oh, God. This is totally dark. I can't see my hand in front of my face. Okay. Um. We're just going to fly up. Okay, I think I'm halfway. You need lights. You need freaking lights. Okay, head on up here. If I had lights and a few extra points, because I'd be able to bloody see. But yeah, that's that's all right. That's not bad, is it? That's okay. Yeah, that's 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 pretty cool actually. Nice little lookout, little defensive structure, I suppose. But yeah, I've got a feeling that there's a lot of other bases that haven't rendered in, or perhaps you know. Cynical's team spread their wings a little bit and didn't actually all build in the same area. Don't know, don't know, but I think it's going to have to go to that Canary base. I think the Canary base just pips it for me, people. Close second was probably that one up on that big sort of hill that had the gnarly floors that I was worried I was going to fall through. But yeah, pretty darn sweet. I was going to see if I could just spot the one that I was on about. Uh, it's somewhere over here, isn't it? That's Daniel Hipley's base. It's this one that I like the most. This one here. Canary's Rest. CK. This, guy, this one here. I think this is actually a lady that owns this base. I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, that base there is, is the one that I'm going to say is my favourite amongst the Criolla Kingdom. So, uh, if Cynical agrees... Uh, I would say this one deserves Grand Architect for Cynical's area. So if I just go into camera mode, put the sun in the sky. This base here, if you own this base, I'm declaring you as the Criolla Kingdom's Grand Architect. There you go. Okay, peeps, you can see that I tried my best to tour as many bases as I could inside of the Criolla Kingdom. Well, it looks like maybe one more is just rent. No, 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 that's the one I looked at. Had the really cool roof. But yeah, it's it's a bit of a weird one. Um, we're going to have to come up with better naming conventions in series season two. There's a lot that we've learned that we're going to do better in season two. So sorry, people. And also, you know, base rendering and uh, loading. As you can see from my very initial video and part of this video, there was no bases showing up at all. I nearly gave up. So different saves, you see different things. Work that one out. Freaking weird. Anyway, people, that that's that's me pretty much done. 
I'm going to be ending off. Well, we are looking for a planet to do season two on. I've got a video coming up soon of me doing my own initial hunt. I found a couple of candidates. I've screwed them over to cynical and also ricey. We have yet to found something that we've gone. Actually, yes, this ticks all the boxes. We've we've found things that tick some boxes, like it might have the flying fauna, but then it's got mushrooms all over the planet. Or it hasn't got any of the flying fauna, but it's got trees, it's got an awesome landscape, and it's an interesting planet. We need to find something that's a medley of the two. Oh, and then Ominous Gaunt found a really cool planet, but it's that big that all the waypoints are too spread out. So it's very hard to get from places, even on flying creatures. It was taking me, what, 14 hours to get from one waypoint to another because the planet was too large. So there's quite a lot that we need to actually go through and go, yeah, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Oh, and then I found a perfect planet. All the waypoints were lovely. Had aggressive sentinels. Oosh! Really? No. Even had one flying fauna, but it had aggressive sentinels. Insane. So yeah, the hunt continues. If you do find a candidate, try and DM either myself, Ricey, or Cynical. And I'm saying DMers, don't put it on some social media, don't put it on the Discord. Because if we do choose to use it, that means the portal code's out there for everyone, doesn't it? You know? And we're going to be doing that MS Teams form this time to sort of cut out a, f a few people that trolled the event that might be lurking inside of our Discords. Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I'm looking for a lush planet, and I'm using my um, good old freighter and this little table here to find planets. You can see here, there's no lush planets inside the system. So why am I trying to find a lush planet? Well, I'm trying to find a decent planet for light no sky when we start doing season two. So... I'm going to share with you my top tips for finding an awesome planet. So I'm just going to go into here, go into my catalogue, then go into plants. And I'm also going to select the star bulb. Right, now I'm just going to go to the galactic map. And it should point me to the nearest system that has got star bulb or star bramble. So there's this system right here. There we go. And we're going to head there. You can see there it's not very high in technology. The conflict seems to be a level two. Let's check it out. It's got a star bramble world, though. Right, eh? well, I've arrived, decoded inside of said system. Let's go and hit on up that table. Let's go in to go and scan everything. Boom. And, well, we've got a solarium planet there. So I guess this is the star bramble planet. No, that's, uh, that's not. Okay, well, which one is? Frost crystal. There we go. There's this one. Hmm salvageable scrap on there as well tropical planet it does say high sentinel activity but i think we're going to be okay now all i do is i look at the creatures here and what i'm looking for is more than it having two flying species so hopefully it's going to have one that you can mount and fly from the word go so that one it's got one flyer there most are underground or underwater and it's got two other flyers it's got two flyers there and it's got one flying there i've just got to hope that one of those is maybe a beetle or one of those lovely butterflies let's go and have a look at the planet people all right let's go let's go okay now we're flying down to this planet and it's it's not a massive planet it has got quite a lot of water on it so even if it has got flying creatures they might drown trying to fly us over swathe of ocean Let's hope it's got a decent Okay, well, creature. something that this planet hasn't got is trees. It's a little bit like the one Cynical found last time, but far more redder. Um, well, I might as well put boots on the ground and we'll see if it's got a flying creature. But I would really like to come across a planet that has trees this time along. Let's just see if my theory of spotting more than three creatures that are flying rings true. So I'll just scan the flyers just to get those off the radar. So we've got one flying creature there. Okay. What have we got down there? Oh, that looks like it might be flying. Ah, they're, on, they're, they're ground dwellers, aren't they, these ones? That are sort of like bobbing up and down out of the ground. Yeah, you can't ride those. So what else have we got? Now, it is going to try and find the star bramble on the sweep scanner. We'll get that scanned anyway, just to get it off the radar. 
Hmm. Okay. It's got these weird ball creatures everywhere as well. I don't think it has got beetles, but I could be wrong. Oh, look, there's another flyer up there. So that's two down. That's two of the flying species marked off the list. It has got some unusual fauna, though. Right, I'm going to get rid of that on my log. Just abandon the search for a moment. Let's see if we can find another creature. So there's something just over here, over yonder hill. We we'll see well, if the third flyer isn't making itself known. It's not popping up. It's not appearing. Um, so it's not in abundance anyway. And this planet, because it hasn't got trees, I I'm going to rule this one out anyhow. You know? Oh, well. Well, we'll head back up to the freighter. So that's pretty much how I'm doing my search okay, for so a now planet. I just jump to a random system, but away from that lush planet that I just found... And then that way, if there's no lush planets in this system, I can use that same technique again that I just used momentarily ago to hunt for star bulb. You don't want to do it too close to the one that you've already been to. Oh, there we go. We've got we've got one just by sheer chance this time. So let's hit that. This has got 10 fauna. OK, so we've got a couple of ground. We've got only one flying that flies at night and the rest are underwater or underground. I don't think that's going to be a very good candidate. All right, OK. Well, I'll show you what else I look for on the galactic map as I'm hunting. So we go. Go into here. Now, I'm looking for another one that might have Star Bramble, so I'm just going into free roam. And I'm also looking for ones that have got very low on conflict because I don't really want pirates to be shooting us all the time while we're out on planet surface. So I'm going for one that's quite relaxed, like that one. Now you can see there, that one says no water, okay? And it's got quite a lot of planets. And they're all quite small in size. Now we don't technically have to have water. If we don't have water, then there's not so much need for flying creatures. We could just have ground mounts. Okay, well let's go up to the little table, because if it's got some decent ground mounts that are quite fast, that, that'd be fine. We don't have to have flyers. Okay, right, so we've got this one over here, that's oh, Solarium. Frost Crystal, Frost Crystal, Solarium, and Cactus Flesh. Okay, there's no, there's none in there that are Star Brambles. So if I just go back into here, go into Plants, hit that up, it should take me to a neighbouring system that does have Star Bramble. Okay, here we go. And just a short stone throw away. Okay, there we go. And this is a this is only level one as well, and it does have water, and it does have a star bracky plant. Pecky, let's uh, head on over here then. Let's go and hit this up. Scan. Ooh, look at that! Oh, it's a fungal world. I thought it was going to be um, a lovely purple lush then, but we do have a green paradise planet there. Very nice, and frost crystal, frost crystal. And a pillared planet. Let's have a look at this green one then. Eight creatures. And it's got two flyers on there. Both in the daytime. But the rest are ground creatures. Now a lot of a lot of planets that have got only two flyers. They're usually flyers in the air. They're not usually the lovely majestic beetles. Mm, I'll go and have a look. But Actually, I'm not Chums, I, I, I fought against it. it it's definitely. I don't think it is going to have to. Oh, we're going to. We go. The reason look. why I said I'd go look at this planet when I'm pretty confident it's not going to have beetles or butterflies or any flying creatures is I don't think it's got any water. So if it's got luscious trees all over it, which it looks like it has, as long as it's got some interesting ground fauna. It could be a reasonable candidate. Oh, it's, it's got bubbles. It's a bubble lush. All right. And it's got quite nice landscape. It's not too mountainous, but it's hilly. Okay. It's got... It's, it's ticking a few boxes. Yeah, ticking a few boxes, isn't it? All right. Let's um, have a little look around then. Let's just, let's just put boots on the ground, shall we, people? See what we've got on this planet. I'm liking the bubbles. Yeah, it's quite nice. I'm just going to go into the old log and uh, disable my search again. Let's have a little look around. 
Okay, creatures, creatures, creatures. I'm fairly sure that the two flying varieties are going to be up in the sky. I don't think they're going to be ones that I can tame and mount. Okay, there's something flying quite fast that way. Oh, th there we go. I bet you that's species one. And species two. Oh, please be a beetle. I mean, I don't think it is. We've got this guy, a little ground mount there. Doesn't look all that interesting. It looks like there's something darting around over this way. And it was going far too fast to be a beetle. And far too fast to be anything else other than an airborne fauna. Oh, it has got striders. So it's got these guys on. These striders are quite cool. Is that the other type of bird that just flew past like super quick? Did I just get it? Let's have a look. Did I accidentally scan the bird instead? Yeah, we've got the two flyers. The flyers are actually located. There's nothing overly interested in here. I mean, there's these guys that are quite cool. But yeah, it would be nice to have a decent sort of level of fauna. I mean, the striders are cool. And, you know, people can claim their Twitch rewards. And me, Cynical and Ricey can always bring birds onto this planet anyway. So I suppose having flyers isn't a massive must. And this is quite nice as far as, you know, lush planets go. Yeah, it's it's a candidate, isn't it? It's a candidate. But I, I, I don't know. I'll have to pass it over to Ricey and Cynical to see what they think. All right, cool. I'll get the coordinates and send well, them to Well, chums, you. I've come across something a little bit cool. I've got one lush moon there. I've got one lush planet there and another lush planet there. So there's three planets in one system. Let's have a quick look, see. Let's see if any one of them has got candidates for flyers. This one's got two flyers on. Mm, no, I think those are just going to be airborne ones like the last planet we just looked at. This one over here is a lovely little moon. Hasn't got any water. It's got two flyers there. The rest are all ground-based by the looks of things. But again, if there's no water, it doesn't overly matter too much. Purple grass. This one looks more Earth-like. 14 creatures. Rare. It's got a flyer there. What's in the next page like? It's got another flyer, but then the rest are underwater. I'm fairly sure that's not going to be a candidate either. The only one that I'm really interested in looking at here will probably be the little purple one over there. But at the same time, I bet it's not an interesting looking planet when you put boots on the ground. I think I'll just carry on looking because it would be nice to either have a flyer. It'd be nice if it did have water. It'd be nice if it was medium sized rather than a moon come to think of it. But we're keeping okay, so chums. Well, I've come across a red planet that doesn't appear to have any water, but it's got four species of flyer. Four species of flying creature. There's no ground mounts there. But, you know, hopefully people have got some ground mounts inside of their eggs and things like that. I'm just going to go and have a look at it. It's piqued my interest. We're going to go and have yeah, a look at it. We're heading through the atmosphere. Let's just hope that this one isn't just covered in mushrooms. It has actually got some interesting landscape. Oh, it's mushrooms. I found a planet just like this earlier. And it did have beetles. And it did have the uh, wormy sort of moth creatures. So it had two species of flyer, but again, it was a shroom-like world like this one. And the ground was more pinky. I like the terrain on this one more. It's got all these sort of like black canyons on it. I quite like this. Okay, right, let's, uh, let's scan some of these creatures then. So we've got that type of airborne fauna. What other kind of airborne fauna do we have? Aha! Oh, they're little dragonfly ones. I'm not going to be riding them anytime soon. Ah. More weird dragonfly type creatures. Okay, yeah. I don't think this is going to have any I can ride. No, the other one's in the air. There it is there. Scan that. I think I've completed the set for this planet, haven't I? I've done all four of them. Yeah, oh well, we've got some free nanites on that one, people. But that's... That's that one. All right, well, back to the freighter I go, and the search continues. See you in a bit. 
Well, uh, chums, well, we haven't found what we're looking for this episode, have we? But it's, it's search continues, people. Heck yes. Good fun, this. Anyway, until next time, peeps. I'm good. Salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.